Join me, Adam Faith, on the end of the century show, everything that was and is the 60s. Starts tonight at 10.25 on ITV. Now the Sugdens celebrate their reunion with a blazing row at Emmerdale. You've got your young man to thank for that. Quite the hero, from what I've been told. Can I see him? Well, your dad is still unconscious. Unconscious? Yeah, he's, uh, he's in a coma. I've got to go to him. Uh, one thing at a time, love. Let's just get you checked over before we start rushing around worrying about anyone else. He'll be fine. He'll be fine, won't he? And we'll see what the doctor says, but I think you'll be up and about in no time. Then you can go and see your dad. You might even be able to go home today. That's terrible. Emily. What am I going to do, Butch? What about the farm? I've never been on my own before. Never. OK, so it's still on, then. What? Um, the wedding. Daft or what? <laughs> and what about you, then, Cathy? What, Betty? Well, have you put your mind to what you're going to wear? As a matter of fact, in about half an hour, I'm going into Hotton to do just that. Oh, well, would you like me to come with you? Uh, you know, uh, give you the benefit of my sartorial advice. Thanks, Betty. It's really sweet of oh, you. Oh, get but, me um, back. But Laura's already agreed to come and help me out. Laura. All right. Oh, hi, Cathy. Oh, right on cue. Listen, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to cancel. It's a bit of a crisis at work. Oh. I'll catch you later, OK? I've got a dash. Well, my offer still stands. I'm not proud. Thanks, Betty, but uh, I'll be fine. Honestly. Tomorrow's manifest. So, Southampton should be good for a while. You'll need to be on your best behaviour. Oh, yeah. One of the directors is coming with you. All right. I hope you don't mind me raising this, Chris, but are you going to be able to get in and out of the cab, you know, we are, um... What are you talking about? Uh, Chris isn't going to be going with you, Frankie. Sorry. No way. Is there a problem? Was this your idea? Look, all she wants to do is get a taste of what it's really like. You know, on the open road, on an overnight trip. What's this sexual harassment? Hey, that is a disgraceful accusation. You have no reason to believe that Zoe's motives are anything other than purely professional. Isn't that right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, and the rest. Graham, hi. Hi. Do you want to come in? Uh, no, no, I, um, I wanted to ask a special favour of you. Really? What are you doing this morning? Uh, nothing in particular. <laughs> what is this? Well, I had arranged for Laura to come and help me choose a dress for the wedding, but, um... But? But she can't make it, so I wondered whether you fancy coming along? I know it seems a bit, you know, but you did such fantastic things for Rachel. A dress, a hair. You've got a really good eye and I'd really appreciate your advice. Graham? I'm, I'm sorry, Cathy. I'm going to have to be off for the next couple of days. Can you cover for me? You are? Well, I don't know. I mean, you could have given me a bit more notice. Well, I only knew myself last night. It's haulage business. And I thought that wasn't going to interfere with the practice. This is important. I won't make a habit of it, I promise. What's all this about? 
I beg your pardon? Peace. You trying to worm your way into my... You know what I'm talking about. Do I? Okay, so why have you booked yourself in for an overnight with me to Southampton? It looks a bit fishy to me. If I remember rightly, it was you who suggested that I learned a bit about tracking before I started messing with the business. I'm just taking your advice. I'm sorry, did I misunderstand you? So long as you keep your hands to yourself. Fine. <clears throat> You've made your feelings very clear. And I can reassure you that I have no intention of putting my hands anywhere that they are not wanted. Good. Well, that's clear. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Paddy, is there something you wanted to say? Wind changes, you'll stay like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Well, I was the one with all the worries. Having a party? Oh, no, Sarah's back today, so I better restock the shelves. Oh, make it look as though you've been managing okay without her. Yeah, yeah. Something like that, yeah. I was hoping I'd catch you before you left. Look, I'm sorry for asking you just now. That's about as tactless as a person can be. It's all right, really. I was just being pathetic. It just took me by surprise. Yeah, I know. Anyway, look, I'm up for it. Um, like when? Now. Fantastic. Champagne and gossip will put my house tonight. Champagne and gossip? Keep me away. 7.30 suit you? I'll be there. Great. I've got to dash because uh, Alan is waiting for me. <laughs> for he's a jolly good fellow. For, for he's a jolly, jolly good, good fellow. fellow. For he's a jolly good, good fellow. And so say all of us. <laughs> there you go, Butch. It's on the house. <laughs> Thanks, Biff. All right, mate. Hey. <clears throat> Listen, Sorry. Butch. Uh, <laughs> You and me, we've, well, we've had our differences, but <clears throat> this thing you did, you know, risking your life to save Emily and her dad, I, what can I say? I'm, I'm proud to be your cousin. Thanks, Marlon. Hey, that really means a lot, mate. No problem. Enjoy. Cheers. Hiya, oh, Betty. Oh, can you ever forgive me? What for? To think I thought that you could ever hurt that girl. I suppose that's what comes of listening to Big Windsor. Oh, it don't matter, Betty. None of that stuff matters. The only thing that matters to me is that Emily's OK. Mm. Mm. Hello. Can I help you at all? No, thanks. We're fine. Thanks. Are you sure you're all right about this? Yeah, it's fun. I know how hard it is for you. I kicked myself when I asked you earlier. I must have dreamed about doing this with Rachel. We'd both been helping her, you know. I just see it. The three of us having a, a good time, a real giggle. Sometimes I can... I can still hear her laughing like... like she's still with us. What's the matter? Graham? I can't make up my mind. This one, or this one. <laughs> hey, you had a nice time. Brilliant. Oh, that's great. Run along inside, Victoria. Go on, then. Mom. Go on, toilet. Hi, Jack. It's great to have you back. Really missed you. Yeah, I'm sure. Look, I'll just finish up here and I'll make a brew. There's some stuff I need to say. Yeah, uh, there's something I want to say first. I've been feeling really bad about the boys missing their school trip. Yeah, me too. 
So I rang Annie in Spain and she said she'd be glad to have them for a few weeks. Great. When? Uh, tonight, I'm afraid. I couldn't get any other flights. No, that's all right by me. Well, I'll just pop in, ring the school, tell them they'll be missing the last couple of days of term. Oh, wait, Sarah. Um, Robert and Andy, they're not at school today. And I've already wrong to say they're sick. Well, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. They're fine. Where are they? In the top field. Working? Yeah. Jack! How's it look? Hmm. Pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good. Well, if you want my honest opinion... Oh, which I'm obviously going to get. The colour's a bit... How can I put it? Conventional. Uh, what colour would Sir suggest? Gold. Gold? You want it to be special, don't you? This, in gold, you'll be dazzling. You'll be unforgettable. You are outrageous. I'm right, though. Yeah, but don't you think gold sort of bowl for church? Oh, she's a man of the world. He'll cope. OK. OK, OK, gold it is. <laughs> Ow, I got stuck. Oh, where? <laughs> oh, just... No, no, it's just the hook. Oh, thanks. <laughs> there. Is that better? You look very, very beautiful. I'll get changed. So, you're not superstitious then? Pardon? Some men think it's unlucky to see the bride's dress before the big day. No, not me. I want my wife to look perfect. <laughs> I don't think that'll be very difficult. She's a very attractive young lady. I know. <laughs> you're very lucky. It's what makes this job worthwhile. Seeing couples like you, so happy and so in love. Yes. She's definitely the woman for me. If you want a car that's tough and durable, with reinforced safety cell and side impact protection system, Try the Citroen Saxo from only six nine nine five. And that's not all. Sound deadening. And an acoustically engineered floor to reduce engine noise. The Citroen Saxo, available from just six nine nine five. From Tetley. Drawstring tea bags. All the flavour of Tetley with no drips and no mess. That's better. That's Tetley. Summerfield's price check has great offers every week, like half price seedless white grapes. Didn't we get a bigger bunch? No. My father, he wouldn't take anything for diarrhoea until I told him about my chewable Imodium Plus. Just one dose works in harmony with your body to bring relief from diarrhoea quickly and gently. Now worrying about diarrhoea isn't the problem. Waiting for me is. Imodium Plus, fast, gentle diarrhoea relief. Carex hand wash with Dermacleanse is brilliant for two reasons. Firstly, its antibacterial agents remove germs most ordinary soaps can't. And secondly, it has moisturizers which help protect and care for my skin. So, use Carex hand wash and your hands will feel fresh, clean, and really careful. If you care about your skin, always handle with Carex. 
A poem about Vimto by Purple Ronnie. Pour it all over your body and spread yourself out on the bed. Then lie back and slowly start drifting to somewhere fantastic instead. Ronnie! <laughs> Put a Vimto smile on your face. If you want a Carlos Cup and Jurabo, try the Citroen Saxo. Available with two years free insurance. It's the ideal safety package. We have to go. Your flight's at five. What more? You've only just got back. I thought you'd be pleased. I thought you wanted a holiday. I do, but what about you? Well, I've just had one. I'll miss you. Oh, Robert. I'll miss you, too. You and Dad are splitting up, are you? No, no. You know, things haven't been easy recently, and, well, this is the only chance you're going to get of a proper summer break, and it'll give your Dad and I a chance to sort things out. What about the farm? Should we stay here and help Jack? That's enough, Andy. Now, go up to your room, see if you can find the other one of these. Oh, oh my God. Hello, Eric. <sighs> you scared the living daylights out of me. You are open. Yes, uh, of course, sir. Uh, how can I help you? Do you still have the ring? <sighs> ring? Rachel's ring. Have you sold it? Uh, uh, uh no, I haven't. Oh, that's marvellous news. Can I have it back, please? Don't see why not. It's still yours. Technically. Thank you. Who's the, um... Who's the lucky girl, eh? Pardon? Someone else fallen for your charms? What are you talking about? Sorry, that was, uh, <coughs> tactless of me. Yes, it was. I said, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm really glad you haven't told this. It means everything to me. Emily! What? What are you doing here? Poppy. I'm not sure. Well, how else are you going to get home? Don't know. Taxi? Have you got any money? Right then. Thanks. So, how's your dad? Still unconscious. I'm sorry. I really am. What am I going to do? There's the farm and my job. I lose that. And how am I going to visit my dad if I haven't got a job and the farm falls to bits? I haven't got any money. And my dad will wake up. And he'll get ill again because everything will be in a mess. And it'll all be my fault. Shush, shush. <laughs> Emily, it's going to be all right. How would you know? Because I've worked it out. <laughs> How? Stella's given me some time off. I'm going to work your dad's farm for him. And I'll drop you to work in the morning, then I'll pick you up again in the evening and take you to the hospital so you can see your dad. It's all worked out. No. What do you mean, no? You can't. He wouldn't like it. He won't even know. He finds out everything. Emily, he's in a coma. He can't hurt you now, and he can't help you neither. He can't look after you now, but I can. And I will. I want that more than anything in the world. Come on, then. Let's get going. 
Right. Boys, get off, OK? Yeah, fine. Well, there's some stew in the oven and some potatoes to bake. Won't be long. Cooking a meal is not going to stop me being angry about what you've done. Well, what else was I supposed to do? I thought we agreed the farm wouldn't interfere with the boys' education. Well, that's all very well for you to say. But who was it who went off and left me to run the place single-handed, eh? Well, you should have got a labourer in. And pay him with what? Oh, get real, Sarah, but this is far from going under. I'm just trying to keep us afloat. And sometimes that means making hard choices. Well, next time you've got hard choices to make, try consulting me first. Hiya. Yeah. Hello. Uh, this is uh, Pete Collins. He's one of the drivers up at Tate Haulage. Uh-huh. And uh, he's our new lodger. I see. Well, it's nice to meet you, Pete. Actually, I'm going to go and have a drink. If you want to talk to me, you know where I'll be. I'll see you later. Maybe. I thought it'd be romantic, moving into the country. Hunky men in sight, Jodhpurs. But where are they? I mean, there's not a Jodhpur in sight. Where's the talent? That's what I want to know. Oh, I don't know. You seem to be getting on pretty well with Alan Turner. Hey, don't be horrible, you. Alan's a lovely man. But he's not exactly Mr. Sex, though, is he? No, but... Oh, he's like a really nice uncle. I feel really safe with him. I bet you do. <laughs> <coughs> oh, no. Excuse me. <coughs> Pass us the bubbly. No, I think, <coughs> actually, I should make some coffee. No, it's early yet. But seriously, Stell, <clears throat> you want to be careful of that Alan Turner. Why? Well, he's like the rest of them after your money. Hey, no, you can say what you like about Alan, right? But the one thing he isn't is a gold digger. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. It was only about a year or so ago he lost all his money on some dodgy investments. Every penny. Gone. He's broke. Why do you think he wants to sell the pub? Because... He's not been well, you know. He wants to just retire. Exactly. Exactly nothing. No, he, he's a good friend. Look, he's not a greedy man, Stella. He's just a snob. And he thinks your money can buy him a bit of class. A bit of credibility with the la de da set. <sighs> We've just been out to lunch a few times. There's nothing more to it. Well... You have been warned. I need to Come on, lads, part it down. I don't know. Do you know, sometimes they're like a pair of big kids. <laughs> Still, I suppose you're used to it. What? Well, I mean, you've already got one kid here at home. I suppose another one wouldn't make much difference. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you all right, Cathy? Yeah, sorry, Betty, I was miles away. Oh, well, did you manage to get yourself a nice dress for the wedding? Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. I thought you'd be pleased. It's not like we don't need the money. But getting a lodger without consulting me first. Well, you weren't there. I spoke to you every day on the phone. You didn't say anything. Give me a break, Sarah. Anyway, you're right. We do need the money. Oh, thank you. Now, can we just draw a line under it? I don't like arguing with you like this. Me neither. I mean, we've got to try and deal with these things together. Supermarket, the meal. 
It were only a service station. I've never eaten in a service station before. It were great. <laughs> Come on, I'll make you for bed. No, no. It's all right. What? Well, I'll stop out here. I thought you were going to look after me. I am. I don't want to get into any more trouble. So I'd rather do it like this. That nurse were right. What? This morning, that nurse, she said you were a hero. Oh. She's right. You are a hero. You're my hero. Hi, Rachel. I went to see Eric Pollard today. Got the ring back. Pretty, isn't it? The thing is, I, I've been feeling really bad about it, just sitting there in his shop. I mean, what a waste. And I had been thinking that you ought to have it after all, but... Well, I hate to do this, but I've actually decided that someone else should have it. I know I bought it for you, but, well, you didn't want it, did you? No. Stop. I promised myself I wouldn't lose my temper. She is your best friend, after all. She'll love it. I know she will. We return to Emmerdale tomorrow at 7. Next tonight, Jack Duckworth's health continues to give cause for concern in Coronation Street. Mr. Moore. It's all their fault. They're saying I'm dealing and I'm not. I'm arresting you for possession of a Class A drug. Give him a break. He's trying to sort his life out. What about his family? Is that what you want for your daughter, Mr. Moore? A load of drug addicts coming round. I am not dealing. The Bill. Thursday at 9, ITV. Crisis on the roads, chaos on transport, and the worst is yet to come. Welcome to Gridlock Britain. How do we deal with one of the biggest problems of the 21st century? Real life problems, radical solutions. That's on tonight with Trevor McDonald, Thursday at 10. Through the medium of household paint, Gillian Spook will now illustrate her bliss at Iceland's latest deals. <laughs> I'm wiggling. <laughs> Buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. Get two for the price of one. <laughs> Focus Do It All are selling off nearly one million rolls of clearance wallpaper for just two ninety nine a roll. Oh, and borders for just ninety nine p. And there's twenty five percent off all other wall coverings and borders. Darling, I think we're going to need a bigger trolley. Focus do it all. Great choice, great value, great sale. Do women always have to spend hours taking their makeup off? And <laughs> not with new soft facial cleansing wipes from Nivea Visage. They remove eye makeup, cleanse and tone in just one easy step. Could anything feel softer on your skin? Well, maybe. New convenient soft facial cleansing wipes from Nivea Visage. Don't waste hundreds of pounds on expensive carpet. Simply buy two small pieces, attach them to the bottom of your feet, and get that quality carpet feel throughout your home. This money-saving tip was brought to you by McDonald's, where the bacon McDouble with cheese is back at only £1.39.
Ever since I was a little girl, I imagined starring in a movie. Some gorgeous icon like James Dean running his fingers through my hair in a world of fantasy. So now I'm in the movies, and the reality is I have to have hair that my heroes love to touch, caress, and kiss. That's why I use head and shoulders all the time. Make sure my hair is touchable. Dandruff? I don't think about it. What I think about is my next love scene. Head and shoulders. Don't let dandruff get in your way. At Freeport, you can save 50% on designer fashions and famous names every single day. Come to Freeport Talk and break free from high prices. Charmaine Bin is back again to celebrate this month's Lek Fridge Freezer deals at Iceland. Do your thing, girl. Save 70 pounds on this Lek Freezer and get 10 pounds worth of food free. Save 70 pounds on this Lek Fridge Freezer and get 20 pounds worth of food free. Or save 100 pounds on this Lek and get 30 pounds worth of food free. They stand or fall together. A brother and sister accused of murder. I'm putting my faith in you, Mr. Kavanagh. The victims, their own parents. She'd do whatever he asked her to. A trial that will push those involved to their limits. You have lied to this court, haven't you? And leave her alone! Sit down. He's bullying her! You hate them, don't well, you? Could you blame me if I did? But for Kavanagh, his work may be the least of his concerns. Call an ambulance. I'm her son. I had a right to know. Kavanagh QC, Friday at 9. On ITV2, highlights of the Prince's Trust Party in the Park concert. Here on Central ITV, it's time for Steve McDonald to face the music. <laughs> Coronation Street is sponsored by Cadbury's Time Out Chunky. <laughs> So how are you feeling? Fizz a fiddle. Well, you didn't look too clever last night. Was it a real heart attack? Look, you can keep your voice down. No, just a touch of angina, that's all. Well, you looked in agony to me. No, no, no. Put the puffs on me, do, Dad. Right as rain. I thought you were going to die. Well, you're wrong, because I'm here, full of life. Well, I think you should tell Vera what happened. I've told you, lad, it was no big deal. So then why keep it a secret from your wife? Because she takes everything out of proportion, son. And besides that, she's got nothing on her plate. Speaking of which... <laughs> there you go. Here's your porridge. It's made with water. No sugar, salt or milk. Mm. Am I supposed to eat that or I'm in the cracks in the wall with it? Look, doctor said it's good for you in your condition. Not the way you do it, Vi. <laughs> oh, now, this is a liberty. Just look at oh, that there. The eggs are all crispy, just round edges, just how I like it. <laughs> Me too. Letter from Nick's solicitor. Leanne signed the papers. Oh, well, you better get yourself round there, then, haven't you? Sign that check. Let's see if you're still planning on giving away two grand of our money. If you mean do I intend to keep my word, then yes, I do. Well, why? You've got what you want. I'd let Leanne whistle for her money. Are you saying I should double-cross her? Stoop to her level? I don't think any of us are in a position to take the moral high ground. Do you? Except you. Yeah, well, I'm the only one talking any sense, and no one wants to listen. Oh! And you think it's sensible to tell Leanne it was a trick, dear, that I've no intention of signing the cheque? She'd be round here and put the windows through. Well, it'd be a damn sight cheaper. You know, I think I will go straight round there. The sooner she gets her money and this whole business is over and done with, the better. Morning, girls. I'm back. Have you missed me? Oh, yeah. Couldn't sleep last night for thinking about you. Well, I'm back now, so get on to your machines. I'm just going to finish this, okay. all right? Did you really miss me? Did you miss me? Pop round tonight, I'll show you how much. Mm -hmm. Right, come on. If you want me out the way, I don't mind. All right. Only here to sign the cheque and I'll be off. I think she's been sleeping with it under her pillow. Here we are. Thought maybe you'd come round to say there was going to be more delays. I'm just as desperate to get this over with as you, Liam. The 
There you are. Thanks. Don't spend it all at once. Right, I'll be off. See you, Natalie. Yeah. Bye, Gail. I've got 2,000 quid! <laughs> well, don't just stare at it. Go and put it in the bank before we open. There you go. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Bye. I'm hopeless at choosing the cards. I wondered why you've been stood there half an hour. Sorry. What's the occasion? Me, um, grandma's birthday. So, flowers and verse rather than smutty and jokey? Yeah, probably best. <laughs> well, I got some nice ones in the other day. Let's have a look. When is it? Well, <clears throat> to tell you the truth, I'm not looking for a card. I came in here to talk to you. But every time I get you on your own, I come some walks in. Here goes. Why you coming out of me one night? You what? Pictures or a pub, meal out. <laughs> you mean you've been hanging around here all this time to ask me out? Yeah, look, it's fine. It don't matter if you don't. I'd, um, I'd love to come out with you, Tommy. When? You would. Um, Friday night. Uh, what's got into you? You don't strike me as a shy type. Yeah, I'm supposed to have all the patter, aren't I? It's just a big act. Comes to asking women out to turn into a bit of a wreck. But I'll see you Friday. Yeah. Only <laughs> there, son. <laughs> really jumped out my skin. What are you playing at? The <laughs> look on your face. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> uh, do you want to uh, give us hand with these bags, sir? Rather heavy. Oh, nice. Nice. Anyway, where have you been? Thought you were due back early this morning. Oh, that's a problem with the crossing weather. When we eventually uh, did get going, it was like being on the Big Dipper. Good morning. Hi, Vera. Been on holiday? Yeah, it's been away for a few days. Very nice. Bring back plenty of duty free, did you? <laughs> Just uh, a few bits and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess who just came in and asked me out. The new ice cream rep. Cyril? Mm. Oh, do me a favour, he's about 70. Hey, well, he looks well off it. <laughs> I know who it is. That other rep from Jackson's. Geoffrey Hillier? Oh, give over, he's gay. Well, he keeps giving you the glad eye. <laughs> How do you know he's gay? Cos he told me. Oh. <laughs> well, I give up then. Who? Danny. You know, Danny from the market. Danny that Sally's been knocking about with. Ah, well, you obviously thought what I thought, but we're wrong. They're just good mates, apparently. I see. Well, he's hardly going to ask me to go out with him if he's got a thing going with Sally, is he? Well, he wouldn't be the first... <sighs> oh, Egg. I didn't mean... Oh, no, no. No, you're right. Eee, you can't be too careful, can you? I didn't mean... No. There might just be more to this than meets the eye, Rita. Oh, you were all excited. I feel as if I put a dampener on it now. No, no, you're dead right. I've got to handle this very carefully. Leanne? What's this? Flowers. Well, what are you giving them to me for? To say I'm sorry. I overreacted. But they're from your shop, aren't they? Does it matter? Well, one, you didn't have to pay for them. And two, they look like they're about to die. Oh, come on, Leanne. I've been miserable since we fell out. You chucked me. I must have been mad. I'm really sorry. You're only acting for me money, aren't you? Have you not even had a day for seeing the specialist yet? Oh, they said it could be months. I think they do it on purpose, you know. Hoping folk will pop the clogs, you know, and save them a bob or two. But it's such a big area. That's why you're having to wait. Hey, it's times like this when you wish you could win the lottery. I mean, you'd soon get an appointment if you threw enough money at them. Do you mean they give you priority if you go private? Oh, I don't think they do, Judy. Money talks, Vera. And if you give them enough, you'd soon get an appointment for your Jack. <laughs> what? An old day. <laughs> Asking if you brought back plenty of duty free. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, mate. 
what's this? Dad, this is late. All right. I asked you a question, son. We're uh, just doing a bit of business. Not in my house, you're not. <laughs> what do you think this place is? It's all right, we've nearly finished. Yeah, I'll help yourself to some scotch. I don't want some scotch. Look, it's bad enough you breaking the law, son, without dinner in my house. You, get out of here. Go on. Hold on a minute. Keep your head on. I've told you. You've got 30 seconds to get rid of him, otherwise I will, and I'll call the police. What, is he joking? No, he's not. Yeah, of course he is. No, I'm not joking. 25. What is this? This is me, putting my foot down once and for all. You get my drift? 20 seconds. Look, I'm not having this. I'm getting off before I smack him. Oh, shut your face and get out. Listen, Lee, um, look, I swear, if he weren't your dad... All right, see you later. At Safeway, we're dedicated to permanently cutting the cost of raising a family. Mmm, good. I'm all for that. So with Price Cut 99, we're cutting our prices on the things your family love. Yeah, I've been doing a few cuts of my own. <laughs> Safeway Price Cut 99. Permanently low prices. You? <laughs> and again, Oscar, come on. Yes. Big breath. Big breath. Big breath. It's lighting up again. Good boy. Throw it in cans. <gasps> Next, please. Ah, I'll come back tomorrow! I'm the double pop! Uh, no, no, no. Now, stop this. We all try to put things off, but this is your health, you crazy mustache person. So let's just get on with it. Open wide. Uh, let's make a start with these. Shredded wheat bite size. No additives, no preservatives, just 100% whole wheat. And aren't they just the cutest little fellas? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Take your time. He's all taken care of. Shredded wheat bite size. Made for life. Right guard double protection doesn't just keep you dry, it keeps you feeling fresh from the shower all day. What happens when the force of Star Wars Episode One meets the irresistible taste of Walkers? Find out in the Walker Star Wars Can You Resist game inside packs of Walkers crisps and snacks. You could win a million pounds or one of millions of Jar Jar tongue toys by scratching off the panels on the Star Wars game card. Can you resist the chance to win a million pounds with walkers? Are you at your best every morning? A busy lifestyle can make things difficult. Actimel from Danone contains El Casse Immunitas, a unique live culture. It's full of natural goodness. To make it a naturally good way to begin your day. Every morning, new Actimel. Natural goodness from the inside. From Danone. Feeding time! Keep on running. Flash poser. Can't resist three for twos. Love boots. At Safeway, all pasta sauces are cut by 20%. Mm, another Italian masterpiece. Price cut 99. Permanently low prices. <sighs> you know what? I got up to go to Bob. And I found Jack on the stairs, gasping for air. So what did you do? Well, he told me to run and get his spray. I wanted to tell Vera, but he wouldn't let me. You know what? He made me promise not to tell her. Why is he doing that? I don't know. I suppose he don't want to upset her. Well, keeping it to himself ain't going to do him any good, is it? Well, that's what I thought. That's why I wanted to tell Vera. But if I tell Vera, then I'll be letting Jack down, won't I? If you ask me, you'll be doing him a favour. You think so? Yeah. Vera! Vera, have 
got a minute? What was all that about? How many times have I told you, Stephen, I will not have you breaking the law in my house? I'm turning it in. I'm only selling a cheap bit of backy. Once, you said. Once, you said to me, Stephen. Once and once only, your very words. I couldn't make enough money doing it once. Oh, I see. So you're going to do this once a week, is that it? I've told you. I'm only doing this to make enough money to pay off me debt. Pay off your... Look, why don't you show some interest in your building business, eh? I have. There's nothing about. Rubbish. I took three phone calls when you were away, son. Well, that's more phone calls than I've had in weeks. Well, how in the name of God would you know that? You're never here. Well, what did you say to him, then? I told them the truth. I hadn't got a bloody clue where you were. Well, I need to sort my mobile phone out then, get international calls. Need to sort his mobile phone. Look, Stephen, how can you hope to run a professional business on a professional basis when you keep flying off to Belgium every five minutes? Or are you going to become a full-time smuggler? I've told you, I'm only doing this until I get myself sorted and then I'll stop. Oh, cut yourself on. You're not going to stop, not now you've had a taste for it. And do you know what really gets me? I was one of the people who set you up in this goddamn business. You think I might have known better, wouldn't you? Well, I don't know why you're making such a big deal out of it. I really don't. Because it's against the law. So? So? So eventually you're going to get caught and end up back in the big house. That's why. Well, I don't think either of those are very likely, do you? Oh, well, you wouldn't, would you? Because you're buck stupid. Well, let me tell you something, son. Unless you pack this racket in right now and start showing some interest in your own personal business, then you can get out and go and live somewhere else. What? Fine! If you want to be a full-time smuggler, that's great. Sticking out. Fine by me. Only don't do it from my house. You okay? Yes, Vera, my little swamp duck. How did I know it was you? God, it's flaming all was you. Right, where are you? In the garage. Well, that's why I missed you, because I'm in the Rovers. Right, I'll see. She could be off. Tropical oasis set on a six-mile stretch of the white sandy beach. Oh, where's this? Barbados. Oh, sounds lovely. You're not going to blow all that money on a holiday, are you? No. But it's just nice to know I can have one. <laughs> It's a good job you're ill, or else I'd swing for you. Why? What have I done now? Why didn't you tell me he'd had an attack during the night? Oh, that's why you're at the garage, right. What has he said, then? You should have told me straight away. I didn't want to worry of it. Well, I'm going to worry all the more now, aren't I, knowing you're keeping secrets from me? It was only a little twinge. Well, that's a lie. He said you were in a right state. He's exaggerating. Now, listen. You so much as nick yourself shaving, you tell me, do you? I hear, uh, loud and clear. Yes. And we're not waiting for the hospital to contact you, cos you're going private. Why? Have you had a big win on the bingo? I don't need a big win. We've got 30 grand in the bank. Yes, and I am not wasting it on summer I'd get for free. Look, how can it be a waste if it saves your life? What happens if I die during the op? Don't be so morbid. Oh, no, it can happen. People die when the flaming tonsils out. Never mind being sawn in half. Look, the doctor said it. I know what the doctor said, but if something does happen, I don't want you left penniless. But now it's going to happen. There is always a chance something will go wrong, Vera. Look, it won't. Anyway, they're bound to do a good job out there, seeing as you're paying for it. I don't think it works that way, V. I've just opened my wardrobe. I've never seen anything like it. I just tidied it up a bit. You've ironed every shirt I own. I like ironing. Anyway, I was bored. Well, as long as you don't think I expect you to do it. Well, I'd soon stop if you did. <laughs> well, then, as you've been such a good girl, I think you should have a little reward. Oh, aye. What's that, then? Flowers? Chocolates? Close your eyes and I'll show you. You're not getting kinky on me, are you? <laughs> Go on, close your eyes. Right. There you go, open them. What is it? Open it and find out. Oh, Mike. Oh, I was hoping you'd be in here. How are you? I'm just on my way home, actually. Oh, no, just have another one with me. It's, um... Something I want to talk to you about. Go on, then I'll have half a lager. And uh, same for me, please, Leanne. Right. 
If I ask a straight question, will you give me a straight answer? Yeah. What's the state of play with you and Danny? We're just friends. Good friends. Good friends. Yeah, that's what he says as well. He's been talking to you about me and him. Oh, no, 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 not particularly. No, it, it just popped out. Why do you want to know, anyway? Because he's asked me out. Has he? Hmm? I had to come in to say I'm sorry, but I had to say something. Ah, uh, well, I suppose you meant what you Pugsley. The only thing is that uh, Vera's upset and she wants me to go private now. Oh, does she? Well, you'd be desperate and you got the cash. If I could think of some way of raising the money, I'd do it. Mm. That's it now. How do you learn about selling your body? Selling your body? You get yourself down the canal, show a bit of leg jet. For medical science. Oh, I see, right. Uh, well, this do still take bodies, don't they, for spare parts? Oh, well, scrap. What? Oh, come on, Jack. You're not exactly in tip top condition, are you? Hey, I am A1, me, apart from the male ticket. Oh, yeah, what about your eyesight? Well, not exactly brilliant, no. Hmm? Teeth? I thought it was internal organs they were after. All right, what about your liver then? Kidneys is good. Kidneys? Well, I'm sure Fred Elliott will take them off your hands. All right, but, but what about me brain? I'd get a few bob for that one, huh? Well, you just frazzled it on you with that mobile phone. And they could do something with his feet. Huh? Feet? Yeah, they, if they could bottle the smell, they could use it for stripping paint, you killing flies. You are a cheeky little person, <laughs> you are. Hey, who are you in here with? Keep your wig on. I just wanted to work with Jack. That's out. Out. Go on, out. Out. Go on. <laughs> Hang on, Natalie. Looks like you need some time in the sun. Where are you thinking of going? Me? Huh? Nowhere. Long to Leanne. If I thought you were interested in him, I'd sooner back off than have you and me fall out. You damn thing. Why should I mind? <laughs> Are you sure? Do you want it in writing? <laughs> well, I'm glad you feel that way, cos I don't half fancy him. Yeah, he's a nice-looking lad, isn't he? Oh, I think he's sex on legs. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Hey, been my first proper date since Ian. So, how how did he ask you out? Did he um, did you ring you up or what? No, no, he just came into the shop. <laughs> he was waiting around for ages, and even then he was dead nervous. Oh, sweet. But you, right. I've made some uh, spag ball. If you fancy it. Aye, if there's enough, aye. I've, uh, been thinking about what you said. All right. And you're right. If I keep on doing these bucky runs, I'm, uh, more than likely gonna end up in the nick. Well, I'm glad you're beginning to see some sense, Stephen. And if you keep going through customs, you know, customs, uh, Gonna get to know your face and anyway. I I sure they do, I I've got to get rid of the stuff I've got though, because I can't afford not to. No, 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 I understand that absolutely. Yeah. And then the same. No more Belgium. Unless you fancy muscle and chips there. Is that their specialities and muscles and chips? Yeah. Um it's scams, you know? Any scheme to make a bit of money and I'm straight. Straight in there, you know? Oh, well, I shouldn't worry your head. You and plenty others. Yeah, we're not anymore. I'm uh, gonna knuckle down. Well, unfortunately, it's the only way, son. Did, uh, you mean what you said about the, uh, people phoning for work there? What did I? Did they leave a number? Certainly, I are all written down by the telephone pad. Now would probably be a good time, wouldn't it, with it being tea time and everything? Hi. Keep an eye on that. Oh, sure. Lee, stay. Listen, I'm sorry about this afternoon, mate. He had an accident last year. He's gone a bit la-la, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
No, 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 of course I still want to work with you, mate. We're just going to have to be a little bit more careful, yeah? You late back? Oh, I went for a pint. I'll put some tea on. Hey, I've had a brilliant idea. Why don't we all go to Disneyland? Can we? How much have you had to drink? Two pints. Can we really go to Disneyland? First I've heard of it. <laughs> What's brought this up? Well, if we can afford to send Leanne to the Caribbean. Oh, well, I think maybe we should go away on holiday ourselves. What are you talking about? That's what she's planning to spend our money on. Oh, I see. Take the notice, love. He's just making a daft joke. What? No, I'm not. Martin, would you like to come into the kitchen and talk about this? <laughs> I'm quite comfortable where I am, thanks very much. Martin! You actually went and bought this yourself? Yeah. Had a couple of hours to spare, so I went shopping. How did you know my size? I'm in the rag trade. I know how to size a woman up. Oh, it's perfect. Mike, it's gorgeous. This must have cost you a fortune. Well, it's about time you had some good clubber. Are you ashamed of being seen out with me? No, but you can't afford designer gear on what I pay you. Well, as long as you don't think I expect a present every time you go away. If you did, I'd soon stop. Anyway, you want to take advantage while you can. If Alma gets her own way, I won't be able to afford expensive presents. There. Now you can look. What do you think? Uh, something missing. What do you mean? Just hang on a second. Right, now then. Turn round. That's it. Now then. There you go. Move your hair a bit. That's it, lovely. There. Oh, now that is perfect. <laughs> you know... I really am a lucky guy. Oh, no, Mike. It's me that's the lucky one. Look, I know we don't see eye to eye about this, but please, can we keep the kids out of it? Well, it's the kids that'll be losing out, and it's not fair. Oh, and you think it's fair, do you, to get their hopes up? Gail, I'm serious. We were obviously loaded, aren't we? From the way you're chucking our money around. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Shall I tell you what bugs me about this? More than anything, more than the money. It's the way that you can make a decision, and that's it! We talked it through. Gail, we're supposed to make decisions together, aren't we? That's what couples do. You made your decision way before you said a word to me. Yeah, well, you didn't feel the need to consult me, did you, when you chucked in your job at the hospital? Oh, that was completely different. Listen, Martin. I did what I felt I had to do. End of story. OK. All right. Servers can play that game. Nation Street is sponsored by Cadbury's Time Out Chunky. <laughs> If you can't quite get a grip on what you want to do with your house, or are just curious to see what other people have been getting up to, whether it's adapting, improving, collecting, enlarging, or radically changing interiors, exteriors, or even the complete function of the houses, look no further. I just look back. I never look forward. There's a magic way of making just a litre of paint go a long, long way. Drop into Our House, Thursdays at 7.30 on ITV. Every time you go for a drive, there could be somebody like this around the next corner. Zach has ridden off five cars and had over 40 crashes. Beware bad drivers. The uh, occupants start throwing electrical items uh, into my path. And then discover what happens when you get too close to the eye of the storm. Many people in Sarno were dying. As time went on, I just kept on praying and praying and praying. Beware bad drivers and eye of the storm, Thursday on ITV. An evil megalomaniac and his steel-toothed sidekick Jaws prove formidable adversaries for our hero next tonight.
I don't even know what I'm doing here. I wanted to lie in. Tough. We've got to get moving on these shad stones. We're right in. And what are we going to do? We're going to go down to Addison Jad and get a bag of aggregates. And how are we going to carry that? My watch slow. What are you two doing up? We were going to ask you for the lift. Where to? Addison Jad. It's only down the road you idle get. Yeah, we need to pick up some stones, you know, to sell the shad stones. Hey, forget it. I'll go on, right? We can't carry a load of stones. We'll go around to Vinnie Max to help him fit a new rear shocker to the cab. Well, we'll wait, wait. <sighs> no way. I've got enough fat wasters hammering me suspension as it is without you two carting stones. What do we do, then? Two wheels I'll have to do. You know, she still hasn't bothered to send me a postcard. I should probably ring. Yeah, but why hasn't she done it by now? It's not on. What's not on? I still haven't heard from Strain. Oh, Nick hasn't been since the first night. Are you going into work? No. Yeah, it's also work from home today. I'm waiting for a phone call off Ross. He's back over in Brussels. So what are you used to up to? Fitting shells in Barbrook Historium, but we can't get in till 9 o'clock. Yeah, Hello? All right, Mike. Yeah, yeah, fine. All right, then we'll get down as soon as we can. Yeah. Which, Mike, it's just opened up a bar brookie, so you can get down there when you're ready. Hey, Jake, why don't you um, get along and I can uh, have a quick word with your dad? All right, yeah, sound. See you later. Bye, love. So, what did you want? You. You coming back to bed? I can't, can I? I'm waiting on a call over the roof court. We won't ring this early. Catch me the toast in as soon as you like. Miss Jackie, in the office? She's out. Oh, we're supposed to be running a business here and I can't get hold of her at all, Susanna. I mean, what is the point of having mobile phones if they're switched off all the time? Just being round to Susanna, she's not even out of bed yet. Well, she's on holiday, isn't she? She's what? Well, that was still me. Look, just tell Jackie I'm back and I need to know what's going on. Forgotten about me? Leave that to Lisa. Well, Emily could come back. No, she won't. Well, Jason's forgotten his flask. He could come back. Flask at when he's working in a bar. You tell me you're worried about Jesse catching us next. No. Remember that time the last of us? <laughs> it just doesn't seem right. No one have got all that work to do. <laughs> I don't know. Last time you dragged me in here during the day, you said it was more exciting. If it's Ross, tell him I'm out and I'll phone him back. Oh. Hello? Who was it? Don't know, it was a bad line. Probably Ross's mobile packing up. We're supposed to be getting them changed. It might have been a call over the roof court. Look, if it makes you feel better, unplug the phone, forget about the quote and forget about Ross. All right. Well, what are you waiting for, Shadwick? Get your kiss off. Is your mat in? No. Do you know he owes me money? What's that got to do with me? You sure he isn't in? Listen, are you calling me a liar or what? Look, when you see him, just tell him that I haven't forgot where he owes me, OK? Don't tell me what to do. If you've got a problem, see our mat. Are you going to stand here gorping all day or what? I'm sorry, I'm just not in the mood. What is it? Look, Greg, just try and relax. I can't. What's up? I don't know. It's... It's what? Oh, my God, am I that repulsive? No. Well, what is it then? Tell me. Listen, it work? Is it something to do with money? 
live it is, you know, I've checked the accounts and everything. Can't you see? I'm not some bloody performing monkey. How many times have you made excuses to me? How many times haven't you been in the mood? If I did the same thing that you've been doing to me, you'd have something to say, wouldn't you? Truella's been looking for you. Oh, back of a business course, is she? What she wants? Well, she's got her knickers in the Swiss because Susanna's gone on holiday. It's cheeky, mate. She just got back from Spain herself. Yeah, and she's a bit cheesed off so she couldn't get hold of you. She's off on one. Do you know if she's seeing anyone at the moment? Pfft. So give me the time of day now she's the ace businesswoman, right? No, I'm not, and it's just that some fella's been calling the office for her. That's someone called Ian. Jack, message from Nate. He couldn't get you on your Moby. He's tied up at the office in town, so you can start without him, whatever that means. I'm mm, supposed to have a last-minute scuba diving lesson. Oh, listen, Jack, can you have a word with me dad about this diving stuff? I'm sick of him going on about how dangerous it is. I don't know why you're bothering. It's no problem. Dad and Nathan are both experts. Well, just talk to me, Dad. He's worried about you. I'm more worried about what to wear. I've bought stuff, but I just don't know what to pack. The Red Seagulls, I haven't got a clue. Well, shark repellent might be a start. Ha, oh, oh. ha. More to reckon, Casey, think it'd be like the Seychelles where you went. Well, I don't know. Depends on the nightlife. Well, that will be boozing, won't he? And you'll be able to get a drink out there, will you? I don't know. Well, if you do, watch out. They might give you a public flogging. <sighs> just shut it, will you? Then Nate will have to swap you for a herd of camels. I'm going. Hey, never mind that. You swap him for a camel. Wouldn't be as bad as him at taking the hump. <laughs> Thought you had work to do. Do you want some tea? No, I'm going into work for a couple of hours. Oh, look, I'm sorry about before. <sighs> you haven't been like this since we're at Murrah, Nicky. I'm sorry. I mean, is there something worrying you? Oh, Nick. No, it's not. I'm not worried. Oh, babe, what is it? I said what I felt before. Well, you've changed. Not the fella you used to be. I'll be back at dinner time. Hopefully, you'll be in a better mood. Yeah, see ya. That'll be Ross. Hello, Greg Shadwick. Oh, hello, Mr. Layton. Did you manage to look at that quote? It's all right, I can talk now. I'm fine. I've got something for you. It's a surprise. Well, you just have to wait till you get by. So go on, then. Tell me everything you've been up to. All right. All right, we'll catch you. You need wood to make shells, mate. Good point. Hey, do you want a coffee? Yeah, yeah. Strong and black will do me, mate. Is it Katrina still in Cyprus? Yeah, she still hasn't phoned me. I'd be worried about that if I was you, mate. Especially if she's knocking around like this. Them Cypria fellas are gonna be like flies round. Where'd you get that? Finders keepers, one of the customers left it. Just give us it, will you? I never realised how fit she is. A bikini. Oh. Must be mental letting her go away on her own. Them beach boy gigolos will think Crimbo's come early. Oh, just give us it, will you, Mike? Don't you mind the posing for all them pervy gardeners and DIY men? I didn't know it was this kind of stuff. And what else don't you know? Hey, I wish we could see his face when he sees what we've done. What a pimp, hey? Putting pictures of his girlfriend in shed brooches. I'm gonna stick one through every letterbox on this close. I'll teach you to trash my house. Bend this with you, and if you get any more, get shut. She's taking you for a mug over this, you know, Jase. And you being a good lad and all. Can you had it on the plate with that gorgeous school teacher and you knocked her back? Because <sighs> me and Katrina got engaged. And then she pulls a stunt like this. Well, it's not on. to do with me, mate. Are you sure about that? Yeah, cross me ass. Not every fella's got a pin-up girlfriend, have they? Did you see anyone sticking knees up? Not me, Jace. Only just got it. Yeah, well, you and your mate thought it was funny when you wrapped me chips up in one, didn't you? Yeah, but they're not down to me. No way. Uh, just as well have got my own coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where'd you get that? There's a promotion down at the cash and carry. Almost makes you want to buy a shed. God almighty! 
have to spend hours taking their makeup off. And not with new soft facial cleansing wipes from Nivea Visage. They remove eye makeup, cleanse and tone in just one easy step. Could anything feel softer on your skin? Well, maybe. New convenient soft facial cleansing wipes from Nivea Visage. What happens when the force of Star Wars Episode One meets the irresistible taste of walkers? Find out in the Walker Star Wars Can You Resist game inside packs of Walker's crisps and snacks. You could win a million pounds or one of millions of Jar Jar tongue toys by scratching off the panels on the Star Wars game card. Can you resist the chance to win a million pounds with Walker's? Take one fresh and tender kiss And one stolen night of bliss Frank! One girl, one boy So where is he? Some grief, some joy Memories are Come on, get out of the car Get out of the car Don't Put him on! We're running this marathon together, father and son. Dad, it's Sunday. The Peugeot 306. It's a family thing. Carex hand wash with Dermacleanse is brilliant for two reasons. Firstly, its antibacterial agents remove germs most ordinary soaps can't. And secondly, it has moisturizers which help protect and care for my skin. So, use Care-X hand wash and your hands will feel fresh, clean, and really cared for. If you care about your skin, always handle with Care-X. These are great! I can't believe they actually came out. Yeah, they could have been a real disaster. Ah, honeymoon. It rained. It was romantic. It rained. It was exotic. It rained. Come on. With Kodak Gold Ultra, you never miss a moment. It's the film that works in all conditions. We had some sun. Yeah, the day we left. Come rain or shine, this film gets great results almost every time. Kodak Gold Ultra, film for all conditions. Red Sea, I am absolutely terrified. Why well, I was watching you, you look like a real pro to me. Yeah, well, that's because of those sharks or giant octopuses in here. Andy's struggling to get the dirty laundry ready for the van coming. If you've got nothing better to do, I'm on my way. Hey, and drive carefully next time. Remember, my daughter lives in that close as well as you. So, you met my new recruit then. <sighs> Nearly ran me over this morning when I was looking for Susanna. I mean, what is she playing at going on holiday? Things are hotting up. I know. And what are you doing playing the frogman? I'm up to my eyes, Jackie. I have tried and tried to get you on the mobile. I'm sorry, but it was switched off. Our well, communication is the essence of modern business practice. Nobody told me Susanna was taken off to Italy. Yeah, and I'm off to Jordan on Friday. You what? I'm going scuba diving with Nathan and his mates. Well, things are getting busier and busier. Yeah, so now's the time to get holidays out of the way. Does um, they not mention that sort of stuff on your business course? No. But I learnt one thing, though. That if I'd have done this course 12 months ago, there's no way you'd have owned 50% of this place. Oh, yeah? Oh, don't worry. The deal's done. It's a compliment, really. You're a natural. So you won't be packing me off on any courses there? <laughs> no need to. So, is there anything else I should know before you go? Yeah, I took Nikki shadow when she starts and she gets back from my holidays. Well, do you think she's up to it? Oh, she's a bright girl and she looks good, yeah. And I think she needs a break after what she's been through, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. 
so. It's all down to you for the next week or two. Do you think you can manage? That suits me. Hey, do you want me to keep an eye on Bob Ruhi as well? Um, no thanks. I think I'm well covered there. Anyway, aren't you going to want to spend some time with Ian? Ian? Yeah, the Ian who's been ringing up and asking for you. Um, no, oh, that's history. It's just a fling while I was away on the course. No time for any of that now I'm back. Right. Look here, why don't you take a couple of days off? You must have loads of packing and shopping to do. <laughs> I don't think so. You know me, work till a bit at end. Oh, well, just thought it off her. Oh, yeah, and that Bob Ruthie offer still stands. It'll be fine. I'll leave you to it then. Catch you later. Almost half eleven. I've had nobody through that door yet. What if that talk that Jerome heard about people boycotting the place was true? Maybe it is just talk. <sighs> well, but I'd be. Just wish we heard something either way. I'll tell you what, if the boycotting starts, we're finished. Well, maybe I said too much. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to see him. Yeah, I don't know. If you've got nothing better to do, get this place mopped and scrubbed, will you? I've just done it. It's spotless. Don't do it again. I'm not paying you to stand around and wait until we get prosecuted. And change that apron. It's filthy. There you go. Cheers. Hiya. She's not back yet. I know that. Is everything OK? Yeah, why shouldn't it be? Well, with Susanna away and your jackpot to go, I just thought I'd keep an eye on this place as well. Yeah, but Rachel's the assistant manager, that's here. Yeah, but Rachel's pregnant. She's not been so good, has she? Yeah, but... I know, I just thought keeping tabs on this place would make it easier for her. Look, me and Rachel can manage just fine. What's going on in there? Jason's putting up some new shells. Look, just give us 20 minutes to nip home and get changed, and then I'll buy you some lunch. Thanks, but I've just phoned Jackie and we're having a sauce for a farewell lunch before she goes on holiday. All right. Hey. Oh, see you later, eh? Yeah, OK. What's up with them? Are you giving them the bomb rush? Oh, things are a bit off at the moment. Why? Jack! I'll tell you over lunch. What are you doing, letting Lindsay keep an eye on this place for? She's already in there hassling Jason about the new shelves. God, can you believe it? I told her that this place was covered. Yeah, well, I don't want to poke her nose in. Well, tell her then. You tell her you'll be the licensee soon. Well, maybe it'll be name above the door. Well, that's what I've been thinking. Rachel needs time off with the baby, and legally it'll be neater all around if you have the license. Oh, nice one. Oh, now's your chance. It'll take you my fortnight the way he's shaping up. Uh, Mike wants a word. Leave everything to me, will you, Lindsay? Just go back and run your club, eh? Yeah, but I said I'd keep an eye on this place as well. Yeah, and I told you it was sources. Mike's running this place. And we don't need any help, all right? Sit yourself. She comes back again, I'll bar it. <laughs> Why, the power's gone to his head, or has he? So, are we gonna take our order then? Yeah, take a seat and I'll get one of my staff to come over. I don't need to be so touchy. What are you doing, Ashlyn, then? Just a misunderstanding. Look, Dad, it's dinner time. We might as well go home. I've left me flash dead anyway. Oh, I've got a nip into town. Uh, when you go to Chippy? <laughs> you heard the rumours about that place? Yeah, it's true, right. I'm going home. Oh, we can get something to eat here. No need to rush back to the closest Susanna's away, eh? What's that supposed to mean? These new ones aren't the same quality, the crap. What difference does it make? We want to sell quality. We've always asked the pimp where he gets his from. <laughs> Jason Shedwick. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing behind me back, are you? Oh, I'm back in business and all, eh? Hoping that old melt on me, because he's a badger week. We haven't even got back online yet. No computer. I can give a toss about all that. I just want me 300 notes and I'm out of it. We haven't got it. Once we're back online, you can have your money straight away. No way, I want it now. Look, Jay, we just haven't got it. If you look, if I have to, I'll knock it out of you. Now give me my money. He hasn't got it. You messed me about enough over this soft Now let's have it. Just stay away from here, you. But he owes me. They're trying to stiff me and it's not on. How much do you owe him? 300 quid. I backed all this Jewett stuff. Is that right? Yeah, but he won't give us time. You've had long enough. You're trying to screw me. Look, just give him a bit longer. No way, I need the money. Right. Well, here's 50 quid to buy him some more time. 50? Take it or leave it. You can get the rest off them later. Well? Right, now get lost. I'm not letting this go, you two. And you owe me 50 quid. So you better get out there and start earning some money. I can't till we get the Druid business up and running. Get yourself a proper job. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere selling that garbage. I mean, why can't you go back to stacking shelves? What is wrong with you? Why can't you just grow up? What's wrong with them all of a sudden? Used to be a laugh. 
Ah, he's, he hasn't got a clue about business. He's only done rubbish jobs. We'll get a computer and he'll get his money and sold your own. We've tried to get hold of one, we can't. Well, I'm not giving up. We've got to get a computer because I know we can make it with this Druid gear. So what do you want to know about paternity rights for? I'm just wondered. Then wouldn't it be better to ask someone like Nathan? He is a solicitor. <sighs> Probably charge me. You know? I hope you enjoyed that. Next week it'll be rice and sheep's eyeballs. <sighs> just beat it, will you? You're not pregnant, are you? No. Are you sure? Of course I am. Then what's all this paternity stuff about? I was told this in confidence. You won't tell anyone, will you? We're mates, aren't we? Trying. He's got a three-year-old daughter. What? And he's only just told you. It's not quite like that. He's not long found out about her. Dump him. Put it, Casey, just dump him. Get shot before you get involved. I don't know what to do. Fresh off your feet, are you? Well, it is Wednesday. We're never usually busy then. This Still an hour to go, so give yourself some back. Words out of the punches are staying away. If that more character doesn't do me, then lack of custom as well. But Ron Dixon is laughing up his sleeve. Give a toss about Ron Dixon. All I'm bothered about is the hundreds of customers that come in here every week, at least used to come in. I could lose everything I worked for, and it'll all be down to you. hotel room on my own. I just... Well, I couldn't wait to get back and... Maybe you miss all that closeness. Are you ill or anything? Is there something you're not telling me? No, am I? Because I want you to tell me if there is. But there's nothing wrong with me. Maybe we could spend some time together this afternoon. Where's our Jason? I said he was coming over for his dinner, but I don't know where he's got to. Back and back off to work. We spent some time together. Day to relax. Have you seen these? Some clowns got hold of a load of them and stuck them all up over Manor Park. They're everywhere. What are they, love? What are they? Katrina half-naked, that's what they are. That modelling job, she never said it was going to be like this. Half-naked advertising garden sheds. She's made a show of me. Oh, there's no need to get obsessed over these. This? This isn't modelling. It's like, it's like girly mag stuff. And now half the neighbourhood knows about it. What are you going to think, eh? Did she tell you she was going to do this? What do you think Hello? I'm like this for, mother? The good of me health? Hi, Nick. She's made a fool out of me. Have a good time. So, Nicky, do you want to talk to her? I'll talk to her. Put Katrina on, Nicky. What do you mean, not here? Well, where is she, then? I said, where is she, Nicky? Windsurfing. Who with? Who's Sven? Right, you tell her I want to talk to her. I want her on this phone tonight. Oh, for God's sake, Jason. Oh, and you can also tell her that I know all about her so-called modelling and that she's made a right dickhead out of me. I in love. You having a good time? Yeah, oh, no, it's all right. No, I'm taking no notice of him. Come on, you. Just calm down. Let's get back to work. Hey, hang on a sec. You having any dinner? No, love, we'll get something later. He got her pregnant when she was only 16. Oh, my God. He was only that age himself. Just pack him in, Casey. But I knew him and liked him before he even saw this baby. I'm only saying the things you said to me when I was trying to have Max's baby. Don't get involved. It's changed everything. I was going along with the flow, having a good time. I like him. Then get out before it's more than just liking him. He says he's got new feelings for the mother. 
I think I believe him. He really wound up about this baby. He's only seen it the once, but he wants to see it again. And what if he starts all sorts of legal stuff trying to get access to that kid? You'll get sucked in. Oh, God, he's here. Hiya. Uh, uh, sorry to butt into your lunch. I was just wondering if you'd like to come for a Chinese or something. You know, tonight after work. I don't know. Well, it'd give us a chance to talk. I would, but my boss is going away and I've got loads of stuff to tie up before he goes. Then I said I'll Jackie pack. Yeah, I'm hopeless at packing. I need to sort me out. Maybe tomorrow then? I'll ring you. Yeah, see you later. See ya. If you'll take my advice, don't ring him. It doesn't seem fair. I might be overreacting. In a few weeks' time, he might have forgotten all about this baby stuff and we'll be OK again. And what if he doesn't? Do you want to get involved with someone who's got to be unhappy all the time thinking about the baby he can't have? It'll drag you down as well. Stay with him and your life will be in misery. We should never found out about her. It's not worth it, Casey. Write this off to experience and dump him. Is this us finished then, or what? It's one of the slowest lunch times we've ever had, didn't we? Bet you'd be glad to see the back of me for a few weeks, won't you? What are you two doing? Working out how to become millionaires. <laughs> Mr Moore's on the prowl. I'm not exactly the girl I once was, am I? I can't stop thinking about you. Can a vegan picnic satisfy the hardcore carnivores? Hugh Fernley Whittingstall gets stuck in with TV dinners. Next, here on 4. Competition can be healthy. You should see the way she dresses. Look at my body now. At other times, it can become an obsession. That's a question for the jury, not the judge. And for Ali, the competition is definitely becoming a problem. Don't tell me she's good. She's great. We might even win. Oh, Ali, are you really going to date her? It's official. I hate her. Battle lines are drawn in Ali McBeal. Tonight at 10 on 4. To celebrate 100,000 new cars on the road in the UK, Dayu is adding to its three-year, 60,000-mile free servicing and warranty package by offering one year's free insurance on the Matiz. Even more as standard, that'll be the Dayu. Edwina, I said to my niece, where's the furniture? It's minimalist, auntie, she said. Less is more, brave little thing. Oh, dear. Oh, hold on, this feels soft and smooth, like a chair's double velvet toilet tissue, wow. and plenty of it. I'll just add my little housewarming gift, and we're getting somewhere. Edwina, surprise! Double velvet, there's toilet tissue, and there's velvet. Have you had your Weetabix? We need water to live. Our bodies use the equivalent of eight glasses a day. Eight glasses of water. Why not try adding some Robinson's High Juice to a glass? It's made with 50% fruit juice and makes water taste really nice. To celebrate 100,000 new cars on the road in the UK, Dayu is adding to its three-year, 60,000-mile free servicing and warranty package by offering 0% finance on the Lanos. Even more as standard? That'll be the Dayu. group of young women find their ideal man. The search is on for love in Leeds, with the first in a new series in half an hour here on 4, after TV dinners.
This week I'll be meeting a true believer in flower power. And I'll be rolling up Vietnamese style for a housewarming party in Thamesmead. Here in Coniston in Durham, the morning milk round is still going strong. The milk-thirsty families of this little village get through nearly 30 gallons of the stuff every day. But here at number two, Croft View, the doorstep stays bare. That's because organic gardener Rachel Markham never touches a drop. She's a strict vegan. But when it comes to cooking a meat-free pre-theatre picnic for 25 friends, Rachel's still got plenty of bottle. People who think that vegans live on lettuce leaves couldn't be more wrong. My diet is really tasty, very, very healthy, colourful, delicious, quick to prepare, um, and something that I really enjoy. Everything that Rachel does, she does it with all her heart and all her energy. And she was never just going to go vegetarian. She was going to go vegan. She was going to run with it. Preparing a picnic for 25 can be a costly business, but for resourceful Rachel, there are ingredients to be had for free. So what are we after here? Not the sheep, obviously. No, not the sheep. No, we're going to get some watercress. Wow. Here we are. Bundles on it. Yeah, lots of it. This is always here, is it? Yeah, it is. We can't eat it raw because it may harbour something called liver fluke, which is particularly associated with sheep and cattle. It's not right. a problem once it's been cooked. It looks so tasty as it is. I know. No nibbling allowed now. No nibbling allowed. A lot of the people that are coming don't realise that they're coming to an entirely vegan picnic. The vegetarians and vegans are going to be outnumbered by the carnivores. So it's going to be interesting to see what the reaction from everybody is to the food. I'm basically a roast beef and Yorkshire pudding man. I, I always will be. Rachel can try her very hardest for as long as she likes, but she'll never convert me to being a vegetarian or a vegan, no. As a vegan, when you're washing vegetables, do you sometimes think, oh, I'd better get rid of all the grubs and insects in case I accidentally eat some meat? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. But surely you wouldn't want to eat those either, would you? Well, I, to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I'm not that bothered. But I think that, I think this watercress is now grub-free. Yeah. The wild watercress is steamed with an equal that. quantity of yeah. tame spinach. I suppose everyone more or less clubs vegetarians and vegans together, but does it feel like a big step from being a sort of regular vegetarian to a complete vegan? Vegetarian is mainstream now, but people still do think that vegans are some kind of extreme sort of subspecies. You're at the cranky end. Yeah, that's right, we're the cranky end. You're the brown rice brigade. We are not. <laughs> So what is the plan for your spinach and watercress combo? We're going to make a vegetable terrine with different coloured layers. That sounds pretty. It is. The drained spinach and watercress are pureed, <laughs> as are steamed carrots, peas and cauliflower. What we need to do now then, Hugh, is to add some other flavours to these, because these are all really nicely flavoured as they are, but I want to just perk it up a little bit. So this is the battle against blandness? That's right, yes, the battle against blandness. Where's the lemon juice going? The lemon juice is going to go into just a little bit into the carrots and into the peas and into the spinach. But not in the cauliflower? No, I've got something else for the cauliflower. I'm going to use some root ginger. So that's quite an interesting combination, ginger and cauliflower. Mm, but it works really well. I mean, it must be an explosion of flavours when you put a, a bit of this terrine in your mouth. It is. You see, you're getting the hang of this vegan thing already. I'll just uh, squeeze this ginger juice into there. That's clever. So you just yeah. the, the pulp doesn't go in. No, so I, I don't want juice. that sort of um, pulpy residue. And it ends down. up between your teeth, doesn't it? Chopped fresh coriander is added to the gingered cauliflower, ground almonds to the carrots, chives to the peas, and a little freshly grated nutmeg to the watercress and spinach. Is this a vegan cat? Uh, no, I'm afraid he's not. He's never he's, a carnivore. He is, so he's got to be out the kitchen. Go on. If you're making a serene, it looks a bit sort of sloppy. How are you going to be able to actually slice it? I'm going to use something called tahini, which is sesame seed paste. It's actually going to set these purees. Yeah. One little spoonful in each one. It will. 
You sure you don't have a little bit of egg, wouldn't it? Just kind of <laughs> Definitely not. Yourself. Trust me, it'll be better than egg. If you mix, you'll feel it thickening up. I can see that the texture is changing. In fact, the wetness of it already seems to have mm -hmm. been somehow absorbed. I told you so. <laughs> but it hasn't set yet. There's still no. a way to go. I yeah. wouldn't count your chickens. Oops, sorry, not an appropriate phrase. No, it's not, is it? Rachel decorates her terrine with red and yellow pepper shapes and carefully smooths the layers of coloured purees on top of one another into a lined loaf tin. The finished terrine is placed in a bain-marie and cooked in a moderate oven for about an hour. I'm an omnivore. I worked it out the other day. Um, I mean, the carnivore sounds like some sort of like dinosaur goes around eating raw meat, or you know. Um, I don't think it matters at all whether like I eat meat and she doesn't. I mean, like when you start going out with somebody, it's not the sort of thing you don't sort of say, "Oh, what sort of pies do you eat?" Before you start going out with them, it's like the last thing you think about, isn't it? This is going to be where everybody thinks. We can't be having a vegan meal because this obviously isn't a vegan pudding, except that it is. Organic plain chocolate is melted for Rachel's non-dairy orange and chocolate pots. The chocolate's going to be mixed with this um, silken tofu, which I've liquidised, and you can see it comes to the consistency of semi-whipped cream, but it's better. So why is that better than cream? Really low in fat, high why is, in protein. Why is that better? Well, because <laughs> we're not supposed to eat so much We're fat. having a greedy piggy pudding here. <laughs> And we need to work quickly now it's going to set. OK, could you first of all, Hugh, zest those three oranges and then juice them and they can go straight into here. Right. Whilst you're doing that, I'll put in the rum and the Cointreau. So this... Get you a drink. Sure, boss. Boss, what are you on about? Haven't you heard? Zoe is now a director of Tate Haulage. So mind what you say. Time, please, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Too late. Another time, perhaps. Sure. I expect this means we'll be seeing much more of each other. I suppose. Well, she certainly got the odds for you. All I can say is, you must play one hell of a game of pool. Emmerdale's back on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Next tonight, a spot of home improvement. It's our house. Night Entertainment on ITV. Love it! Where celebrity guests join Chris Tarrant in a brand new series of Man O Man. We like to party! Join in the fun and choose your Man O Man. There can only be one winner. Saturday at 7.50 on ITV. It's fair to say our lad hasn't turned out quite the way I imagined. I dreamt of seeing him play rugby for England. Not performing a triple salco with toe loop. Still, I suppose things could be worse. I'm no shrinking violet. I refuse to let my hair color fade into the background. I use Recital by L'Oreal. Stay true colorants that resist fading mean color won't fade out. Special conditioners mean hair won't dry out. Is your color glorious? Oh, I think it is. And I'm worth it. Fade Resistant Recital by L'Oreal.
board meeting. We got a great deal on the kitchen and a dishwasher free. Oh, we love it. You'll love the change at the MFI homework sale now. Marital bliss. Congratulations, you're both husband and wife. Has gone into emotional overdrive. I'm not going on the honeymoon, you know, if you do a bad job on this honeymoon. To me, it's a holiday. Oh, shit. <laughs> Family bonding. We love each other. Taken to extremes. Quite a severely. And a spot <laughs> of body piercing. So if you haven't been able to Liverpool, book to the whole thing. Before a flight into the unknown. Brits abroad. For better, for worse. Friday at 8.30 on ITV. You can see eight inches out there. Probing questions. Your mother does a high life. About love and marriage. Has your mother not been well? Just been telling me he's a big boy. <laughs> oh, how lovely for you. Mr. and Mrs. with Julian Clary. Not the first time I don't suppose. Friday at 10.30. Well, it's colourful, rather more subtle interior design now here on Central ITV. And Davies with another edition of Our House. Hello, welcome to another edition of Our House. Yes, it's back to school today. We're in Birmingham at the Edgbaston Church of England College. The problem here, the sixth form common room, needs a bit of a sorting out. So who do we employ to do our makeover? The fabulous talents of Mike and Marianne and, of course, the A-level team. But for now, a little bit of detention. Would you please say after me, class, you must watch Our House. Thank you. You yeah. must! <laughs> I don't think I'm cut out for teaching. But I wonder how Mike and Marianne will cope with going back to school. Your hair! Come get your gum out. Mm. Hello. 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 Welcome Hello. to Edge Boston Church of England College. Nice to meet you. This is a beautiful building. How old is this? Well, it's, it's been used as a school since 1886. Bent double like old beggars under sacks. Knock-kneed, coughing-like hags, we cursed through sludge. Now, what is going Sounds on? Sounds like a typical a bunch of six-formers, actually. And this lot have asked us to help them tart up their like, common room in like readiness for the first-ever yeah. intake of boys after the summer holidays. A few intrepid lads have volunteered their services already. You guys, have you got any ideas for this room? Because we haven't. You're miserable lot. <laughs> <laughs> The way that it's sort of set up at the moment, the room's in different, well, it's in different zones. Can we keep that feel? We can perhaps separate off different uh, moods to the room so we can have a kind of soft area, we can, area, we can have a working area. I think if you had a central colour theme all the way through, um, blues and tropical colours and greens. We need to do something with the um, loo tiles on the window sill of that. Because they're like, yeah. <laughs> well, they are like, they're, they're the ones they put down in the loos on the floor, you know. <laughs> We want a futuristic look, uh, chrome and plastics. Yeah. We need to do something with the furniture, like, I don't know, get rid of some of the older stuff, like these armchairs and stuff. And what about the ceiling, the sagging tiles and the faded fluorescent lights? Anything we can do there? Well, I've got a great guy who will help us with the lighting that isn't Mike. Some uh, me? Clever. I'm handy with a drill. Give me a ladder, a pair of pliers. No way. <laughs> oh, he seems such a nice man. Well, a lot to do. Let's go. Mike, Marianne, come over here. Got something to show you. Several things to show you, in fact. Right, mystery items. Extra strong pegs. You need those for your hair, actually. Oh, look, bright, intelligent person. Ping. It's, this is an alternative <laughs> to piercing. It's a non-invasive. It's the new piercing, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Two tractor tyres, yep. as you do. This is that um, carpet protector, a duvet. And if you don't want that, I'll have it, please. And finally, some corrugated plastic. A mind-boggling collection. But first, I want to tell you about a real-life happy family. Yes, Mum Mandy Barlow keeps her kids full of beans by letting them help out around the house. Not just with the washing up, though. No, with the decorating. Just a quiet suburban house, but maybe a little bit lively than the rest. Since Tamworth mum Mandy Barlow began an interior design correspondence course, she's been putting her ideas into practice. I'm always messing. I'm always doing something. In the kitchen, we don't have cloths and scourers. We have paintbrushes because they're always on the go. The worst part about it is cleaning up. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's why we don't make any mess at all. <laughs> mm. oh. Kids uh, spend quite a bit of time with Mandy now, um, with their artwork, and they're coming on very well with being very arty themselves. And I think they might even take after Mandy. The ceiling, we are text as we were cooking tea. So as the artex was trying, we put flowers into it, but it works. We've stenciled the cupboards gold so that the sun hits them and shines off them. And the kids have finished it off with their ornaments and little knickknacks that they make for me. In the living room, I've put the panels up, but I've antiqued them. The three piece were covered. Old wardrobes that people have given us. I've made the screen. I don't like going into furniture shops and buying brand new furniture. I'd sooner have old stuff that I can do up as I like it. This is the dragon that I made. It gave me the inspiration for the, this room. I picked up the colours from the dragon and I followed it through with the materials and the fabrics for the curtains, the drapes and the panels for the wardrobe. We were given a quilt cover which was okay but it would never have got used so I'm afraid it was shredded and dipped in PVA glue and stuck on cupboard doors and mirrors just to add a bit of interest. First of all, she painted it all yeah. yellow. Yeah, then all she yellow. done some stripes. Yeah. And you can see the pencil marks at the yeah. top, so, so she gone over leaves. with leaves. The leaves. And the leaf, how she done the leaf, it took her long because she do, she's only got one stencil, but it's little. She done it everywhere. And you know, she was standing there about for about two hours, stippling it all. The wardrobes were due to be thrown out, so we transformed them. The bookcase, we added a few bits and bobs to make it tall enough for the room, and added a pull-down desk so that they've each got the desk. It's nice. Yeah. It's a good place to hang around. Yeah. When the hall was being done, that really opened my eyes to Mandy's talents. Coving was already there, the original coving. So I added cardboard cutouts underneath to add a bit of interest to the room. Covered it with newspaper, did a stone effect. The walls, I just squidged newspaper on the wall. And the first coat I actually put sand in the paint to give it the texture. And it was nice to have the wallpaper delivered through the letterbox two or three times a week. Mandy's also bravely burnt flowers into the wood using a hobbycraft pyrography tool. Some houses, when you walk into them, are very cold and not welcoming, whereas this one, I mean, people start talking as soon as you basically open the front door, so it works for us. That's lovely. Mm. Well, back here at Edgbaston Church of England College, things are moving nicely. Oops, a close shave for a deputy head. What we need to paint rubber is a really special paint, something that dries really quickly and will seal the rubber in, because you just can't put normal paint on rubber, otherwise the paint will come off. So I've got this weird paint here, and this is a shellac-based paint. This is made of shellac beetles. Sad, isn't it? Oh, I think this is disgusting. Made of real beetles. What I'd like you to do is drill just two little holes on that bit there, OK? And hold it close to, you, to yourself. This is simplicity itself, incredibly clever. First of all, drill a couple of teeny holes in your super grip peg. Then what do you do? Secure a length of wire through the holes, twist that wire right round a screwdriver, and hey presto, it makes a spring, a peg yeah. and a spring. And then these are going to be what? Well, we thought we'd, there's a pegboard in there, um, a notice board, so we'll have them dotted around the notice board and they can hold all postcards and memos and what have you. Actually, that's a good idea for home. Okay. We spray them up first. We've got some spray. OK, that's... We just need right. one final... <laughs> yeah, it should be good. One spring. Then spray the lot, a trendy silver and your pegs ahead on style. I'll show you our pegs' ultimate destination in a minute. That's enough, that's it. How many have you got to do with this? About 25. About 25. I'll see you. Thanks, Mike. 
apparently Mike's got a great idea for this plastic uh, flower pot. You have to trust him on this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a pearl finish on it. Now, what I want you to do is on the instructions here, it says shake for two and a half minutes. So I'm going to time it <laughs> and we'll get shaking and then we'll spray this up. If this doesn't work, I'm going home. <laughs> hey. Hey. Like that? Yeah. Deputy Headmaster here. You look dead trendy. Uh, yeah, I don't normally wear these, but I was hoping to be able to join in, perhaps do a bit of decorating this decorating. morning. Decorating? Yes, so that's right. why I'm in my oh, cash fine. gear. Anyway, well, look, we'll, we'll think about that. I'm sure we'll be able to find you something you can do, but um, it, I'll have to go and help. Mike and Maria, but it was nice talking to you. I'll see you around. Hmm? Thanks. Does it matter that this, all these bits go over the other place? Yeah, it does. The sixth form common room is a hive of activity and a wicked colour scheme is beginning to emerge. But what is Mike doing? Very silly games at school. Stop it! Right. What we're going to do is we're going to make a light shade and these are going to sit underneath, you know, the strip lights? They're going to sit underneath there. Get this blowtorch going. Yeah, don't look at it. <laughs> right, OK, turn it on there. Mind your hair. OK, now when you, when you turn this on, turn it on slowly and put the match up to it. If, if you turn it on too quick, the gas will blow out. OK, straight away before the match goes out. That's it. Now, a more, bit more flame. That's it. Until it's really roaring. Brilliant. <laughs> don't point that thing at me. Now, you know, I've got a bit of cloth wrapped around here because I don't want to burn my hands. Copper conducts heat very, very well. So, you watch that. OK, ready? I'm going to put a hole in this thing. Here we go. Flame on, Johnny. Put it through there. Okay. Now, stick the stick the. These are dog balls, by the way. These are, they used to have little bells in. So I have to take these out, but they're, they're dog balls. All right, stick them on there. That's it. All, all the way, all the way as far as it can go. Okay. Now, I'll do the same here. Tell you what, let's let's put yellow ones. Yellow ones on the end. I know it's really odd. Okay, like that. It'll look fantastic. Here, yeah, like that. If you think this is crazy, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's more in part two. Don't go away. Cheetah. No, that's a leopard. There's one in a 200 rand banknote. Oh. Mm. No wonder we're the UK's biggest provider of foreign exchange. Rhino small notes, leopard large. So don't just book it, Thomas Cook it. You see, at AA Insurance, we do the legwork. We search our list of leading insurance companies for our customers so they don't have to. Thanks, Leo. Enjoy your coffee, Marion. Getting customers good deals on their home insurance is my caffeine. AA Home Insurance, 0800 444 Disneyland Paris invites you to spend an unforgettable summer. Discover our spectacular late-night entertainment and our exciting new attraction, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Disneyland Paris. The magic is closer than you think. Call us now on 0990 030302. Welcome back to a very productive Edgbaston College. What we're going to make? What we're going to make is a plant stand out of silver bowl. Yeah. Over the top of there. Right. The and over the top, bits these bits here, drain pipe, plastic drain pipe, held together with other little collars at the top. Then salad bowls, plastic salad bowls, 99p each. Another collar, bit of uh, what's this? Broom dowel. Yep. MDF Broomdale plastic bowl on the top of there. 
Quick as you like, Mike. Quick as you like. Come on. Fabulous. Now that's head girl dedication for you. Our house nail art. We're going to spray these clumps silver. And these clumps are going to be holding up a sheet of polypropylene that we're going to put on the back wall. We're going to put some lights behind this polypropylene. And it's going to look mega mungus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. She's so enthusiastic. Yep, yeah, it's going to be great. When we have Look at this. Christmas time in summer. I shouldn't have bothered buying these. They've grown trees there. Yeah, Maz, could you just just paint that? Of course I can, Mike. Come on, and let's go over there. Oh, thanks. Thanks, sweetheart. Get that fixed. When we have so, these discs I'm going to place inside there to make these very, very strong. I've already scribed the holes where I'm going to place them. Now, I know there's going to be a load of you at home going, you can't put a bendy thing on and underneath the table to fall apart. But actually, it's dead strong. It's not. See? Dead strong. As for the curtains. Do you know, I sometimes wonder whether I shouldn't have um, been so interested. I mean, I've gone from the sewing machine to this. I'm going to cover these horrible brackety things with the plates <laughs> and some bowls, right? We're going to put some clips on as well, so follow this. Now, this was my idea. Make sure you tell Marion that. Let's go! Bowl. She's been going on about the karaoke. Yeah, well, so she should. You're horrible to her. Well, if you go and tell her in the mood she's in... Well, Sarah, please. Oh, well, I suppose I could be persuaded. So there was 250 quid drawn out last night? Yeah. Yeah, it's an employee. I've given him the card to the current account. Mm. Uh, look, so I can keep an eye on things, can you send me weekly statements of how much is being drawn out? And from where? Great. OK. Thanks very much. Bye. All right, that, that sounded a lot better. Look, I know it's boring doing scales, but once you cracked it, you could play anything. I soon come. <laughs> No, it's not. I, I can't tell myself a thing. Can't you tell him to pack it in? I'm giving a saxophone lesson. I started teaching music again. Since when? I thought I'd get it off the ground before I said anything. It's my first lesson. What's all your stuff doing in there? That's another thing I've got to tell you. I'm moving into Fred's. Oh, nice of you to let me know. There isn't anything else you forgot to mention. You didn't get married by any chance this morning. Give huh? me five minutes, Mum. Oh, no, it's all right. I'll see you around sometime. Um, Irene, I, I've been thinking while I was out, I owe you an apology. Yes, you do. I'm sorry about the karaoke. I shouldn't have put you off like that. And what about you always trying to control me? Yeah, I'm sorry about that too. I'll, I'll try and be more considerate in the future. It's more like it. Apology accepted. Thank you, darling. Um, to make amends, why don't I take us out for a meal tomorrow night? That sounds lovely, Terry. Thank you. Right. Uh, whiskey and coke, please, Peggy. Better make that a large one. Oh, one of those days, eh? You could say that. Oh, excuse me, I'm not you. 
Hello, Queen Vic. Oh, hello, Michael. No, no, love, I haven't seen him. Oh, tell you what, hold on a minute, just a minute. Hey, have you seen Matthew today? No, why? Oh, that's his father, Michael. He's trying to find him. Um, listen, I'm seeing him later. Do you mind if I have a word? Yeah, of course, come see him. Michael. Yeah. Yeah, it's Steve, Matthew's boss. No, he's fine. Yeah. Oh, listen. Don't worry, mate. You know what teenagers are like when it comes to keeping in touch. I was with him last night, as it goes. Yeah, he was DJing for me at the club. Mm. All right. All right, I'll get him to give you a ring. Bye. Hi. Everything all right? Yeah. Between me and you, I think Matthew's gone off with Teresa. Oh, really? Good luck to him, I reckon. Yeah, come and have that drink, mate. Now, you stay there, and we'll do the duvet. I see you're managing. Uh, well, a bit scary to begin with, but being thrown in at the deep end has shown me what I've been missing. What's the matter? I've got to see a specialist. They think I've got glaucoma. It might not be that. It's always bound to be this time. They must have made a mistake last year. Oh, Dorothy, don't think the worst. Well, I got to, with my help. I think I'll sue. Bye. Oh, it's a nice surprise. Thought I brought you home. How are Ian's kids? Fine. How'd it go? Yeah, very well. It's, uh, it was awkward to start with. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, she, uh, she thinks we'll get it sorted. She's looking forward to meeting you. Good. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've, uh, I've managed to get an appointment for next week. I'm seeing her next week? Yeah, it's just to chat things through. Yeah, but I thought she'd be seeing you for a while first. Don't worry. Come on, you're going to be fine. Yeah, of course I will. You're a very nice lady. It's, it's all very relaxing, eh? We just sat and talked, really. It was nothing. Had a cup of coffee. Yeah, it was, I was quite surprised, really. It wasn't the best way for her to find out. She'll come round. You don't know my mum. To me and you. Flatmates. Flatmates. And to beer and pizza tonight. And many more of them. <laughs> right, I think I'm ready to order now. And I'll get that. Yo. Come in. Oh, yeah. Um, can I have one 12 inch Hawaiian with extra mushrooms and pepperoni? Yeah. I'll dish up in the kitchen. Um, no. <laughs> you, you better cancel that. Just to say thank you for taking him in. Can you get the cutlery? No, you really shouldn't have bothered. Annie. You got time for a farewell drink? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah, let me take that. Thanks. Listen, uh, I'm really sorry about last night. Don't worry about it. No, no, I shouldn't have lost it like that, you know. I've just thought I've got so much going on at the moment. To be honest, you were right to end it. It was never going to work. Perhaps when I get things straight again, eh? Are you getting me this drink or not? <sighs> I was worried it might affect our business relationship. No, there's no danger of that. I'm really going to miss you, Annie. You're the only one around here I can talk to. Bam. Let me make you a sandwich. I couldn't eat anything. Wait until I get my hands like Matthew. Is that what this is about? Have you had a go at him? No, of course not, Mum. You saw me the other night. I was nice as pie with him. To steal money from us? She must be in real trouble. It's all right, Mum. We'll find her, I promise you. What could be so bad that she couldn't tell us? Have a safe flight. Mm -hmm. I'll see you when you get back. Yeah, thanks. You can't have it fine. What's he doing here? There's nothing left for me around here anymore. I'm going to stay out in New Zealand. So what has, what's that got to do with him? You said you didn't want our relationship to interfere with the business. It won't. Meet your new partner in the health club, Grant Mitchell. Good luck. I think you'll need it. He's road, please.
Do you know what I mean? EastEnders, everyone's talking about it. Now on BBC One, Tad's luck is in and it's bottle shaped in Neighbours. I've got another new friend. Oh, who's the other one? I don't know yet, but they'll be living with me and Mummy. Has Mummy got a boyfriend? No, silly. She's going to have a baby. There's uh. no need to answer that. Libby! No, Libby, please, please. We should have asked for more money. Tony ripped us off. <laughs> all that juicing took ages. Yeah, I'm gonna need more money. Not all of us are going on a tuna boat. Some of us actually have to pay for our own fun. Yeah, I'm not sure how much fun this tuna boat's gonna be. I mean, how much fish guts gonna go a stand? Oh, don't give me that as if you're not gonna love it. Hey, you reckon you'll get seasick? You know, chundering over the side every five minutes? <laughs> yeah, like a recycling thing. Recycling? Now there's an idea. <laughs> Inspired by you, mate, and your pukey idea. You know all those bottles we collected and all the bottles out the back of Lou's pub? Yeah, what about them? Yeah, well... Lou doesn't need them all. And if, uh, and if we leave enough bottles for Lou to, you know, juice the pears, well, we can recycle the rest for cash. Well, for me, considering I thought of it. <laughs> you are so much like Toadie, but it's not gonna work. Ugh, you always have to think of something wrong. Yeah, well, it's only in South Australia that they do that. You could uh, collect aluminium cans, but you probably need a truckload before you get any real. Ching -ching. Cash. Yeah, okay, okay, strike that. I have to think of something else. Yeah, yeah, go on in. He's more than merry. <laughs> Hi. What do you two want? The answer's no. Oh, jeez, Lou, we just wanted to offer our services. As what? Whatever you want. We're flexible. Yeah, yeah, we need some uh, extra cash for the holidays. Yes. Uh, so what do you like at writing employment wanted ads? Yeah, True, right. I said I'd get onto it. Yeah, sometime this millennium would be good, Lou. <sighs> OK, uh, tell you what you can do. You can stack all these books back in there neatly, if you like. What's it worth? My good opinion. Oh, come on, don't you two ever do anything without expecting a handout? I don't know what the youth of today's coming to. All right, all right, I'm getting onto it. Where'd your last slave die of? A heart attack, actually. That's terribly sad. Come on, come on, speed it up or out the door. I got work to do. And if you do that nice and neatly, I shall put my mind to finding you a properly paid job in the near future. That is what good opinion is all about. Come on, darling. Last time. What's up? Uh, nothing. Bolognese sauce, what's the pasta situation? Oh, just these really thick tubes, that's all. Chicken breasts? Oh, is there anything else? There's a bit of pumpkin soup. <sighs> I have to be the chicken. We really need to do a major supermarket shop. Yeah, well, I think it might have been your turn. Oh, probably, I'm sorry. I'm preoccupied with this Ruth thing. Don't you think you're letting that get out of hand? <laughs> letting the other room out to her was the thing that got out of hand. And if you don't mind me saying so, I was the one who said, don't do business with Oh, friends. I wondered oh, no. how long that would well, take. Well, come it's on, sweetheart, if the shoe... Naturally, shoot. everything's Look, always right, right from the start, didn't I not say to my you... My darling, I thought you were at Mike's. Yeah, I got back about an hour ago. You don't look too good. Thanks. No, I'm all right. I, I was just having a lie down. I remembered I've got some washing on the line. Fight? Could be. I'm sure she'd let us know if it was anything serious. Mm. Well, she'd let you know. For heaven's sake, Harold, give it a rest. No, no as a fee paying student, I'm entitled to use that university library. It's my right. Then pay the fine on the missing book. No, because it's a matter of principle. Now, I, I, I've done no wrong, and if I did that, it's like an admission of fault. 
Well, you're the one losing out, and in the meantime, do the beans. Oh. Harold, this is going to blow you away. Oh, let me guess. Oh, you found another crude joke on the internet. Uh, right? Better. How about a crude book? What? South Sea Heat. I know where it is. I found it. That's impossible. Where? In Lou's bookcase. I saw it. South Sea Heat. It's got the library stamp and everything. That man stole my library no, book. never mind. We'll sort it out. But, but how low can a man go? Oh, Harold, it's only a library book. That's what happened all those years ago, and he never gave it back. Maybe you lent it to him. Come on, love. Be reasonable. You know what your memory's like. Well, that's no excuse for him not giving it back. Maybe he forgot. Just ask him. Well, why didn't you say something? Oh, like what? Lou, you're a book thief. I oh. thought Harold would handle it. Yes, quite right. Quite right, too, yes. Well, you're just going to have to go and get it back. No, I can't. Harold, I want an end to this fiasco. Paul will take over doing the beans. You go over to Lou Carpenter immediately and demand the return of your book. And no, please say please. No, I can't do that. I can't. Oh, for crying out loud, I'll do it. No, Madge, don't please. Well, no, the man will never let me hear the end of it. Harold, get the book back to the library. Reactivate your library card and forget about everything else. No. No, no, no. I, I'm going to box clever. What? I'm going... No, don't you worry about a thing. Yeah. Mike, hi, come in. Well, I know it's a bad time. You're probably about to eat. Oh, you're um, welcome to join us. That's if you don't mind salad with too much balsamic. Libby? <laughs> Let me get you a drink. Uh, what would you like? Uh, no, I, I won't, thanks. I just need to talk to Lib for a tick. So, um, how are things in, in your department? Are you getting the usual cutbacks? Hmm? Oh, a couple of the part-time shooters will probably have to go, uh... unfortunately. Yeah. What? We need to talk. Uh, if, if you feel that you need to go... You well... can go in there no, when you go No, 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 it's OK. There's nothing to say. He's going. Could be, please. Look, just so you know, it's finished. Mike here has got his ex-wife pregnant. He's going to be a father again. Isn't that nice? Go! Are you all right? Mm -hmm. what, what could he have been thinking of? I don't know, Dad. You'll have to ask him. Well, meaning you haven't. What's the point? Whatever he says, I'm not going to believe. <laughs> well, he's going to talk to me about no, it. No, Dad, don't. Oh, come on, Libby, this is intolerable. No, just stay out of it, both of you. He's I mean taken it. advantage of the entire family. Yes, but that's for me to deal with, not you. Yes, yes, all right. All right. Can I get you anything? No, I'm all right. I'm going to be in my room. And, Dad, you are to stay here, OK? You're not to go and do any white knight kind of stuff, all right? Promise me? Well, that's done. Oh, thanks for your help, mate. I appreciate that. Fine, but why'd you call on me? Well, I've got the usual help coming in to cover the lunch period, but there's no point in paying them for a full day, is there? <laughs> now, what was it, 10? No, no, 15. Uh, hang on, we said 25. Oh, yeah, so we did, sorry. There you go. And a little something for myself. Got your hand in the till. One of the perks of owning the place. <laughs> Mind you, you've got to have something in the till to start with. <laughs> No, I'm uh, going to do some shopping for Louise. She's growing out of everything. Are you sharing with gifts because you're worried about a pretend friend? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, mate. Look, you have to stop worrying. It's normal. I'm just afraid she hasn't made enough friends at kindy. Yeah, well, buying her new clothes isn't going to alter that. Come on, one way or the other, she's four, she's not 14. I know that. I'm still going shopping for her, though. <laughs> Listen, Lou. There's this bloke who I know who's interested in starting on the garage. I said I'd handle that. Yeah, well, I didn't see an ad in the local paper today, OK? And I'm not staying forever. I missed the deadline. It'll be in the next issue. Well, surely you can run the garage for another week, can't you? He's a good mechanic. His name is Shane. Shane? He's going to call you. Good, good. I'll wait for his call. But on another matter entirely, did you know that you cannot light a fire 
if the flint's in Oakey and the firewood's in Erinsborough, if you know what I mean. No, Lou, I don't. Cup of tea? Uh, what about some toast and Vegemite? There's a bit of strawberry jam, but we're quite low on everything. I might just have tea. Thanks, Mum. Managed to sleep all right? Oh, here and there. Do you know what you and I should do today? Something we haven't done together for ages. Oh, you can't mean the supermarket. No, no, no. After that, a movie. When was the last time we managed to see a movie together? Just the two of us. I can't remember. I think it was, um, it was Muriel's wedding, wasn't it? I think it was. Mum, I'm not really in the mood to see a movie today. Well, you've just woken up. You might a bit later. No, I'm going to spend today cleaning out my room. I've been meaning to go through my clothes for ages now. Does that remind you of anyone? Yeah, well, you know, I might as well face it. I'm just like you. When things get tough, we clean. Oh, babe. <laughs> Hey, when are you finishing? Um, early this afternoon. Why? What's the deal? Oh, I don't know. I just want to do something, so long as it's cheap. Yeah, yeah, I'll see what happens, eh? Hey, listen, um, I was thinking, when you're on holidays, what's happening with your job? Uh, b dunno. Well, how about me taking over? You know, caretaking your job till you're back. Yeah, yeah, sounds cool. I'll, um, have a word to Howard if you like. Great. Could be just what I need, so don't let me down. Yeah, look, um, <laughs> I'll get a go. I'll catch you later. All right, cool. See ya. Oh, gee, sorry. Where's the fire? What fire? Mm. Morning, Reg. Hi. Say, how would you like to join me on a shopping spree? Me? On a shopping spree with you? Yes, I need some advice. Uh, but you want my wife to advise you on what to buy? Precisely. Well, what? Uh, and, and to watch you trying on pairs of trousers and things? <laughs> Oh, Aaron, the look on your face. It's for Louise. She needs some new clothes. I don't know what to look for. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and, and when would this be? Right now. Come on, Madge, give yourself a break. I'll treat you to lunch. Oh, Lou, I can't just drop everything here. Why don't you take Louise with you? She's got an opinion. She's old enough to choose her own clothes. Now, that's a good idea. Madge, you are a marvel. I know. Bye-bye. Bye. What? Hmm? Oh. Just that Lou won't be at home and... My book is almost calling out to me from his bookshelf. Get that idea right out of your head. Did she sleep at all last night? Apparently. It was about 10 o'clock when she made an appearance. Oh, I don't know. She's just so restrained about it all. That's just a form of defense. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just that I've never seen her like it. With Darren, she cried buckets. So I remember. I just can't believe it. Can. He's just taking advantage of Libby. He's taking advantage of his wife. As far as I can see, they're both better off without him. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Carl, please, please don't do anything. You just, just wait here. You've come to drown your sorrows, have you? Carl, hi. I've got two things to say. You might have won Libby's trust, but I always knew there was something fishy about you. No, thanks. Wisdom of hindsight, isn't it? You're in no position to be smart with me. What was it with Libby anyway? Just something to fill in time, was it? Or were you using her to get back at your wife? Well, clearly you fabricated an entire scenario for yourself, so you won't be interested in hearing the truth. <laughs> I doubt I get the truth from you. I have to say something, don't I, about Victoria and me? Okay. Well, you, you spend all that time with someone and it's still not got rid of, is it? There's a certain energy stored up. Well, look at your situation. You and Susan, you two. We're not talking about me and Susan. We're talking about our daughter. We're, we're talking Can't about your fundamental... Can't you see fundamental... that nothing in life is ever black and white? Can't you see that sometimes things are a lot simpler than you make them out to be? You and Sarah, how simple was that? Mike. Oh, Susan, I'm sorry. Look, I'm not ready for this. Yeah, let's not Carl. Look, you see it any way you want to. I'm sorry, that's all, OK? I bet he's got a string of girls. <sighs> He's just an opportunistic con man. He's, he sees something he wants, he just has to no, have it. I don't see him like that, and either did you, not up until now. We both liked yeah, him. We were both wrong. Oh, 
い。So what do you want to do? Uh, I don't know. Anything. <laughs> anything. It doesn't cost money. Oh, no, no. I'm sick of doing everything cheap. How about we go into town and grab some lunch, see a movie, and, uh, I don't know, check out the latest CDs? Are you sick? No. And it's all on me. Want to do rob a bank or something? No, mate. I just got a little lucky. Mum sent along a pre-holiday bonus. Well, how come you didn't tell me about this before? Well, because I only just got it. Well, you better hang on to it. No way, my man. We are going to hit the town. Loose notes, eh? Yes, Harold. Cash from the wallet. Oh, I'm afraid your chances are very slim. And it's a sad truth, but there it is. Well, I was hoping there might be a few honest people left in the world. Well, it could still show up, you know. Do you want to call the police from here? No, no, let's face it, it's gone. You know, I had it right here in this pocket when I was in here before. Oh, I'm sure you didn't lose it in here. Old eagle eyes Harold would have seen any drop notes. Mm. And I would have had it straight to the police. Saying you wouldn't. That'll teach me a lesson, won't it, eh? <laughs> Come on, Lolly. Let's put the lot on credit card. Oh, uh, Lou, um... Why don't you and the little one join us for dinner tonight? Dinner with you? Hmm. Why? Well, well, I didn't know you had to have a reason to invite a friend around for dinner. Vegetarian? Well, it'll be vegetarian for me, but uh, Madge is doing a leg of lamb. there <laughs> be plenty for everyone. Might help ease the pain a bit, eh? What do you say? Well, I say you never fail to surprise me, Harold. That'd be great. Fine, I'll uh, see you there, what, about six o'clock? Oh, we're pretty casual. <laughs> right. Bye. 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 Inviting the enemy home for dinner, are we? No, oh, in adversity. <laughs> he suffered a loss. Just a neighbourly gesture, Madge. Oh, and South Sea Heat have nothing to do with it, I suppose. Yes. Uh, no. Well, yes. It'd be interesting to know how you're going to introduce the topic into the conversation. I won't. Then how, pray, do you expect to get the book back? Hmm. You wait and see. So, how much money you got left? Heaps, don't stress. You were the one stressing about having no money. Yeah, all well, that was before I got the money from Mum. Keep up, Paul. So, what are you going to do with the rest of it? Uh, I've got some plans. Can I talk to you? No. Please. Oh, I thought you'd been at the beach by now. <clears throat> this is actually very difficult. I couldn't go when I knew you'd found out about all this. Did you plan it? No. I didn't even plan on sleeping with him. It just... it just happened. You can't expect me to believe that. I don't expect anything. I'm just stating my case. You can believe what you like. How often? What? Did it happen? Oh, I don't know. Um, since we've been separated a, a few times. It doesn't just go away the way you feel about someone. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I'm sorry for the way you found out. But I love Mike and I'm not going to apologise for that. And I do want him back. But I'm not stupid enough to think that a baby heals marital risks. Yeah, and I Victoria. Never... He's all yours. Okay. I'd like you to leave. Take care of yourself. Hi, what are you lads went up to? Um, saw a movie, bought some CDs. Anything with a decent tune? Ah, uh, nah, nothing you'd like. Ah, <clears throat> oh, come on, give me a look. Thanks. Oi! No wonder you're always trying to extract money from people. These things cost the earth, no? Uh, that's quite right, you know. I mean, what would they cost in our day? Like a couple of dollars? Oh, I paid five ninety nine for my first Seekers record, I think. <laughs> Regurgitator? Yeah. yeah, it's a band from uh, from Brisbane. I thought that was something you did when you ate too much. Yeah. Well, look, uh, dinner is almost ready. <laughs> You know, I'm starving, mate. Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, but now, if you just bear with me while I go out in the garden and pick some mint. Right, we can't have lamb with that mint sauce, can we, eh? I can get the mint. 
Yeah, no, <laughs> no, you. We come back with parsley. No, I'll do Charles, some veg. We've got plenty of meat. That's sauce. a technical maneuver. You keep Lou busy. Harold, don't. Shh. I hope you know what you're doing. Who is that? It's me, Mike. Thanks. We really do need to talk. Uh, I think I know the whole picture. No, you don't. That's what's so destructive about all this. Have we got some privacy? Uh, no, Dad's behind the door over there, and Mum, she's under the table. Libby, I want you to give me a chance to explain. <laughs> I think what you've done is all the explanation that's needed, really. <laughs> Look, I honestly didn't know about Victoria. That's beside the point. Can't you see that? Look, when a, when a couple splits up, there's a lot of emotion flying around, and usually it's bad, yeah. but sometimes you just yeah. get caught up in this time warp. Yeah, and, and you end up back together again. Just one time. It was only once, Libby. <sighs> Look, it had nothing to do with the future. It was all to do with the past. Well, you've got a new future now, haven't you? But it's not the future I want. Well, you're the father. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I am, but I love you. I want to be but with you. you can't have everything. No, no, I know that, but I've just tried to shield what we have together away from all that other mess. I can't believe a word you say anymore. Please, Libby, we no, can get over this. Go. We can get over no, this stuff. Please, don't, let, let don't do this me. to me. Get out! Backstreet Boys meet the 21st Century Girls, add the Chemical Brothers, and then some red hot chili peppers. And you've got your lineup for Top of the Pops tonight at 7.30 only on BBC One. Meanwhile, for first-class help with your exam revision, you can log on to GCSE Bite Size with BBC Online at this address. Can the criminal mind... Are you driving yourself? Clean as a whistle. Have a change of heart. He does disappear sometimes, but he always comes back. Do you think he's come back to London and fallen into old ways? Who knows? Or is crime in the blood? He's a missing person, sir. Oh, no, he's not. Go to a children's home. Mum's just died. You're knocking on the wrong door, Maisie. Maisie reigns on the case. Tonight at 9.30 on BBC One. Can I come in? Can I stop you? Um, there was a time in my life when I couldn't control it. I couldn't help being polite and agreeing with anything that anyone said. But then I discovered Central Weekend. Central Weekend, the only known antidote to polite conversation. 11.30 Fridays on ITV. Now on Central ITV, they looked forward to wedded bliss. They found holidays from hell. A wedding video or a wildlife film? So there he is, filming the backsides of peacocks with no feathers. It's more like a comedy show than a wedding. A wedding video or a sob story? The video man scans the beach for topless women. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude. But not on your wedding video. And battling against the bugs. A tropical wedding anniversary. Look at the size of this bloody thing. The only person that was missing was David Bellamy. Forty thousand couples will get married abroad this year. Love is in the air. Everywhere I look around. They head into the sunset expecting perfection. Love is in the air. Every sight and every sound. But according to travel writer Frank Barrett, they could be heading for a fall. There's an unlimited potential for things to go wrong if you get married abroad. Everything is out of your control. Um, so if this is going to be the most important thing in your life, you're taking a hell of a risk. And the wedding video can be the major disappointment. 
and you're paying 150 pounds. I mean, it's a substantial sum of money, but for 150 pounds, you're not going to get Steven Spielberg or Cecil B. DeMille. You know, you're more likely to get to the local version of Les Battersby. Jim and Donna Tomasi returned home from their holiday in a state of newly wedded bliss. They just got married on Margarita, off the coast of Venezuela. Oh, it was wonderful. It was a dream come true. It was perfect. Donna looked great. The weather was perfect. And we did have a very good day. The first thing they did was put in the wedding video. We were obviously dying to see it. We expected something totally professional. We couldn't believe it. It was just awful. But it actually started with the cameraman just panning around at anything, but the actual people involved. He obviously had a sight problem because he just could not focus on anything. What about the music? I mean, where did they dig that up from? It was something from the archives. I was expecting Steve McQueen to come round in a car and pick us all up, and then we're going to have a porno movie shot. And why have a photo shoot on top of this bank? Bearing in mind, this bank was like one in 30, you know, just like straight up. Of course, wedding shoes you don't have any grip on. Jim was lifting up one side of the skirt. The cameraman was lifting up the other side. So my stepdad had to come in as well and help me up there. You're holding on for dear life before you slip down again. And he's kept all of this on video, you know? It's, it's more like a comedy show than a wedding. I was so bloody annoyed about it. The cameraman then took them to the zoo. The video man obviously was more interested in, in all the animals than us. So there he is filming the backsides of peacocks with no feathers. We had other rodents running around that you'd never even seen before in your life. We couldn't believe the cameraman had captured the zoo rather than us. It was our big day. And then there was another point of where we was actually walking across the actual pond they had there. You know, arm in arm across the bridge. I actually turned to Donna and said, look, he's not even looking at us. And he wasn't. He was totally oblivious to us coming over and all of a sudden he's like, oh, sorry, you know. Just when they thought it couldn't get worse, it did. For Donna and Jim, the most important part of the video would be the recording of their wedding vows. Unfortunately, the microphone was favouring the nearby aquatic features. All you can hear is the water fountains. You know, it's like standing in the shower for a week. We had our rings put on two petals on the table. And the cameraman's gone in, out, in, out, in, out, like this, just trying to get focus. And in the last two seconds, he actually got the focus, and then he went somewhere else. He may have missed the rings, but the cameraman had a sharp eye for the irrelevant. As a bride, I would say that everything in your wedding video is all of the perfect bits of your day. You don't want to see all of the mishaps. I just wanted to go back over there and punch them. I haven't shown any, any of my family the video. It's just too embarrassing. Oh, here's our wedding video, so it's crap. At the end of the wedding video, believe it or not, there was flies actually flying in and out onto the cake and everything. And the next minute, the screen just goes completely blank. And that's it. End of story. Jim and Donna pay £2,211 for their holiday. First Choice says its wedding brochure stresses video quality may differ from UK standards, but it's paid the Tomases £160 in compensation. It's devastating if your video turns out to be a disaster, because that's all you have as, as a record of your wedding. It's your one perfect moment in your life, and what you're going to end up looking at maybe is a carry-on film. Sue and Mark Taylor were hoping for a fairy tale wedding in Cyprus when they booked with First Choice. We 
wanted our wedding on video. It said it's something you can keep forever. I thought it was going to be so pretty, so lovely. I thought that I would want to play it over and over again for the rest of our lives. Mark and Sue were eager to show the film to members of their family who hadn't been able to make it to Cyprus. We were really looking forward to putting the wedding video on as soon as we arrived home. We couldn't wait. I realised straight away that we were in trouble. There's me and my dad's wife stood in the doorway of the town hall and straight away this woman just walked straight past us. As soon as I go outside, the dress is completely lost. It looks radioactive. It goes from bad to worse. The cameraman took Sue and Mark to a local beach for romantic shots. And we thought it would be really pretty. In fact, I imagined pretty archways covered in flowers. Oh, what a fool I was. I'm in a four-foot wedding dress trying to squeeze through a two-foot hole. And I couldn't believe it. And they just carry on filming this, and it's not edited. You couldn't walk properly on the sand. And I liken myself to looking like a duck. It just looked absolutely hideous. gutted. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I wondered what else was to come. Then the video man scans the beach for topless women. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude, but not on your wedding video. I, I couldn't believe it. I could have smashed his face right in. Sue had hoped the video would show her thousand-pound dress in a good light. When we walk back into the hotel, the first thing you see is my dress looking yellow, really yellow. I don't understand how anybody could get a picture that far overexposed when that's what they're supposed to do for a living. And then the music that's playing, it jumps all over the place. And the sound along with the vision, absolutely spoils the effect. But when the music finally did come together, the choice of song was odd. It's Tina Turner singing I Don't Want to Fight Anymore, hardly appropriate for our wedding day. Devastated. Oh, absolutely devastated. I broke my heart. I absolutely broke my heart. When people watch our wedding video, they laugh. They don't mean anything by that, but they laugh. Today, Mark and Sue celebrate their anniversary by putting on their wedding outfits at their home in Mansfield. We can't watch the video, it's, it's just far too painful. But the dress always looks good. She looks like an angel in it. She looks great. The tailors paid £1,523 for their holiday. First Choice refused to pay compensation so the couple went to court. They were awarded £300 plus costs. After the break, the Caribbean wedding that proved a total washout. Oh, I don't believe it. We paid a lot of money out just to come in a foreign place and be terrified. And ants in your pants, some of the unwelcome guests at the Goan Hotel. I'd worn it looked like a barnacle and I touched it and it just exploded with eight legs, and I got a fight in my life. It moved faster than an set.
How was your soup, madam? Very tasty. <laughs> Now that's right up my street. Whatever takes your fancy, Little Chef is right up your street. The UK's number one film, Notting Hill, is all it's cracked up to be. Great. British romantic comedy at its best. Cool. A guaranteed good night out. Lucky me. That'll leave you smiling for days. That's nice. Julia Roberts, Hugh Grant, Notting Hill. I wouldn't go outside. <laughs> Right Guard Double Protection doesn't just keep you dry, it keeps you feeling fresh from the shower all day. Although many body washes moisturize your skin, after a while their effect can disappear. Only Dove contains special moisturizers like those found naturally in your skin. They last a full 24 hours, so even at the end of the day, your skin still feels soft and silky. New Dove Ultra Moisturizing Body Wash. The little luxury that lasts all day. The Mestos Germ Guard kills all types of germs. And it's safe to use on food surfaces. As dentists will tell you, Although too much sugar too often can be bad for children's teeth, fruit acids in soft drinks can also damage tooth enamel. But with its substantially lower levels of fruit acids, Ribena tooth kind has been scientifically proven to minimize tooth erosion. Ribena tooth kind. Open wide and say ah. With Summerfield's price check, there are great offers every week, like Garlia melons at half price. Jerry? Be first, pass the post, and don't miss out on Cole's Sporting Summer Sale. You'll have a fair way to go to find a store sporting a finer selection of furniture in the Midlands. We're serving up some smashing offers. Take advantage of up to 40% off brand name and exclusive furniture. Score with up to 50% off showroom models to clear. And you'll be bowled over when we tell you there's 0% finance as well. So put yourself in the driving seat and visit Cole's Sporting Summer Sale. Start Saturday at Dalston, Stoke, and Bedworth. Little Chef's two-course meal deal, only $5.99. Now that's right up my street. Caribbean, a favorite destination for lovers. But between July and October, it doesn't always look like this. If you're going to have your wedding, you know, at that time of year, you've got to run the risk of it being swept out to sea on a hurricane. Major, come here. Here, come on. Here, boy. Clint Maloney and Joy Hartley have wanted to get married for over 10 years, but money has always been tight. So when Clint was made redundant, he decided to blow some of the money on the wedding of a lifetime. I wanted to make it so special for Joy. She means the world to me, obviously. Uh, I wanted to take her to the best place that I could really think of, the Caribbean. I couldn't really think of anywhere better. When he told me that we were going to the Dominican Republic for a cruise and stay, I thought it's like winning the lottery. We ordered a wedding dress. Seven weeks it took, it was handmade, and everything was prepared for the wedding. Their holiday kicked off with a cruise round the Caribbean islands. That shit's beautiful. We're in another beach in the US Virgin Islands. Okay. <laughs> My body from England. <laughs> Even if we got to 50, I think you'd be lucky to see what we've seen. We had a bit of money and we thought, this is it, let's do it. After a week, the couple arrived at their wedding destination. Here we are in the Dominican Republic. Look at these homes at the minute. It's like it's all over. The scenery was fantastic. 
There were swim up pools to the bar. The sun was scorching hot. It was beautiful. It was the perfect setting for the big day. I pictured my wedding day to be uh, a nice sunny day, manicured lawns, a pergola covered with tropical flowers, and obviously um, my other half with a big beam on his face, enjoying himself. And that's my wedding day. But the island was hit by a hurricane. If you're going down the motorway at 100 miles an hour and you open the wind, the wind was just blowing like that. It was so aggressive. And the rain lashing down. Oh, I don't believe it. The drain was actually blocked. I tried to throw it out over the side, if you like. Oof, I got absolutely drowned. This is the floor. Can you see it's like a floor? The long-awaited wedding was a washout. We got out of his room and everywhere was just obliterated. Everybody was swimming and drinking here, so good. Like it was in. Right enough, when we looked at the place where we were supposed to be married, everything was demolished. And I looked at it and my heart sank. She was absolutely devastated, as I was. I mean, this wouldn't really matter, but, you know, we'd paid a lot of money out, and uh, it was for, you know, nothing, basically, except just to come in a foreign place and be terrified. The hurricane had damaged communication links, so Joy and Clint couldn't tell anyone at home that the wedding had been called off. When we got to the house, there were banners and balloons and uh, congratulations and just married and wedding presents and the full works, and I just burst into tears. Twelve months on, Joy and Clint are still waiting to get married. Look how beautiful this dress is. It's still brand new. <laughs> they did say it was bad luck to try the dress on, but it was pushing it a bit when you couldn't even wear it on your wedding day. You're talking three and a half thousand pounds, to be quite honest, uh, which is no way we can, you know, get that sort of money together again. I could work 24 hours a day and I wouldn't get it. So I don't know what we're going to do. Joy and Clint paid £3,027 for their holiday. Thompson says it's sorry the couple's ceremony had to be cancelled and has refunded the cost of the wedding package. Billy and Sue Lively from Whitley Bay have been married 25 years. They've always holidayed in Europe, but to celebrate their anniversary, they went to India. They booked a two-week holiday at a beach resort in Goa. It is a silver wedding, and I thought it was going to be great, fantastic. I thought it was a place to be. It was somewhere exciting and exotic and, you know, somewhere really nice and different, and it was certainly that. Billy and Sue chose their hotel from the Unijet brochure. And it looked lovely, lovely grounds, lovely place. But there was a side to the hotel the brochure didn't show. It was terrible. I just couldn't believe my eyes. Bars at the windows. Just total filth. I just couldn't believe it. It's like being in a prison. Yes. Bars again. But this is just plywood, not even painted. Curtains hanging half down there. You know, that's safe for the Dutchman. We had a look in the kitchen. The kitchen was filthy dirty. In your kitchen sink, that was just absolutely outrageous. Never been painted for years by Ludwig. 
That's the dirty stains on the bed. We went over to the beds, and the beds were all stained. But I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. It's sort of, you know, that's filth. And I just sat down and I cried. Oh, I don't believe this. I've come all this way. I was on such a high, and then I was just dashed. It was just terrible. Coming across to the back door. The couple complained and moved rooms, but things didn't improve. And the place itself, looking out from the balcony, it was like some go to Beirut. And the facilities weren't even bog standard. You have to use the bucket to flush the toilet because it doesn't work. We told the rep again, you know, it was starting to get like a saga now. She turned around and she said to us, well, you know, you are in India, you know, what do you expect type thing? They didn't expect this. The bugs were just everywhere. They're coming through the doors, they're coming through the windows, they're coming through the, the kitchen. Nothing was sacrosanct. Baby ants, daddy ants. But they were bigger than what we have here. Bullet head beetles, green things. And the nip. <laughs> Black with white spots and then he died. I had one that looked like a barnacle. It was about the size of my fingernail and I touched it and it just exploded with eight legs. I got a fight of my life. It moved faster than an set. I'd left my toothbrush out in the bathroom. On the, on the sink with my toothbrush was all these insects crawling in and out of the bristles. You know, and you thought, oh, God. You know, I was sharing my shower, the toilet. It was their home. And um, the only person that was missing was David Bellamy. Going to bed became an ordeal. Everybody has a few too many to drink when you're on holiday, but we stayed sober because you've got to have your faculties about you when you, when you went into that room. The routine was um, spray yourself with insect repellent, then put the little charger on for the mosquitoes. Well, I just uh, slapped my uh, pants and shirt on, and the wife had a pair of pants on her head. <laughs> Brave woman. <laughs> I was tying a pair of trousers from the top of my head so that the insects wouldn't, wouldn't get into my hair. And in my ears, I, d I don't know why I had a thing about them going in my ears. And then there was the big green thing. And there was this big green thing that was about two or three inches long just came over my shoulder. God, I nearly hit the roof. Well, we're lying on my bed, and this is what we're going to put up with. Look at the size of this bloody thing. And it's just not on. It was just dreadful. We never slept all the time we were there. We were exhausted. Instead of having a nice, relaxing holiday, we, we were traumatised. Billy and Sue decided to go home a week early. The day I was coming home, um, I was walking around the swimming pool shouting to the residents, I'm going home, I'm going home, just like the English footballers. I was absolutely ecstatic. They paid an extra £414 for their flights. I just wanted to get out of it. Enough is enough. I just wanted to get out. Back in Whitley Bay, Billy and Sue have no doubt home is where the heart is. Whitley Bay is an excellent beach, and compared to Goa, it is absolute paradise. But there's one thing, it was one heck of a 25th wedding anniversary, <laughs> and one I'll never forget. The Livelies paid £1,070 for their holiday. Unijet regrets the couple were disappointed, and says it acted with speed and professionalism to find alternative accommodation. The company has now offered them £650 in compensation. On Monday, meet Telis, the Greek host who enjoys arranging entertainment for guests. He punched me on the face, and I was trying to fend Telis off while he was hitting me. And I was like, saying, for Christ's sake, calm down. And gasping for air, 
the holiday makers trapped by fire on the 15th floor. It was chalking us. We were leaning out of the window, just trying to breathe. I'll never forget the smell of smoke. And you can witness those holidays from hell here on Central ITV on Monday evening at 8.30. You've had a holiday from hell, please call us on 0870-901-4224. That's 0870-901-4224. Behind the scenes on Emmerdale. Join GMTV next week for the latest gossip with the key players. As the battle for the wool pack heats up, Emmerdale's barmaids Trisha and Bernice are face to face on the sofa. Get inside the soaps Monday with GMTV. Look at this cute little fella. Couldn't do harm to a soul. But it could cause the destruction of the human race. The animal is carrying the top of virus. The most deadly virus ever detected started in Africa. The village is dead. It's threatening the world. It's one billion our size and its beings. Rene Russo. Were you in contact with any animals? Morgan Freeman. It's out of our hands. Kevin Spacey. I hate this bug. Dustin Hoffman. You know I bought the town. The movie. Outbreak. Saturday at 9, ITV. Next this evening, it seems to be take advantage of Ashley time again in Coronation Street. two CDs for £22. A visit to Woolworths is well worth it. At Morrison's, we're on a mission. Our price, Mission Plus. It means we're on a mission to bring you low, low prices. Plus, great offers every week. And because we keep our prices the same in all our stores, wherever you live, you'll make big savings. Two of a kind. Sensitive. Energetic. Rare species. Hmm, but hardly extinct. A girl likes to be wooed, but some girls also like to feel protected. Wildly entertaining. <laughs> Wonderfully human-like. No, <laughs> bad It's the one that you liked at the beginning still there. Go on. Take a walk on the wild side with animals doing the funniest things at 6.50. And the new series of Man O' Man at 7.50 on ITV. Now on Central ITV, will we find out what Linda's up to? And more to the point, will Mike? Coronation Street is sponsored by Cadbury's Flake.
to bed. <laughs> too late, much too late. Oh, that was my fault. You, know, you should have said. I liked your company. <laughs> Alfie'd never stay up late. If he did, he fell asleep. Oh, well, it was the only time Mike and I ever got a chance to talk. Um, nothing in the post. For me? I wasn't expecting anything. No, I mean from Mike's solicitor. Oh, well, I mean, they take their time, don't they? Um, Alma, I mean... You know that advice I gave you? Well, I did it with the best of intentions. I mean, you know that, don't you? Yes, of course I do. I don't know how I'd have managed without that sensible shoulder of yours. Ah, it's just that I, I really believe something could be saved from it without the cost of your dignity. Well, even if I'd taken him back and played the forgiving little wife. I mean, <laughs> marriage had never been the same, would it? I still think he'll come crawling back. He's a fool if he doesn't. Ah, yes, but you're missing the point. He can crawl as much as he wants. I don't want him back. I won't have him back. Not under any circumstances. Morning. Morning. Look, Ashley, I've said you'll get your rent and you will. Ah, but when? When I get paid, I've said. Oh, it's not my fault. Well, I thought you were asking Natalie for a sub. I did. And? And she said no chance. I knew she would. Well, why don't you give citizens advice? What for? Well, there's probably a law in it where Natalie's holding your payback. Well, most people have to work a week in hand before they get paid. Yeah, but you've not been paid since you started. Well, I have. It's just I'm still a week behind. Not where you rent, you know. It's been three weeks. <sighs> yeah, I know it has. Look, just give me some time and I'll sort it. Well, it all sounds very irregular to me. Why don't you phone license fix? Yeah, yeah, I might do. Well, I'll only take a phone call and I'll sort it out for you. Look, I know how easy it is getting debt. Difficulty is get straight again. I can have a word with Natalie. Oh, Ashley, will you just stop going on about it? Well, I'm only trying to help for your own good. Yeah, I know you are, and it's really kind of you, but please, stop going on about it. I've said you'll get your money and you will, right? Well, there's no need to be so stroppy. Yeah, well, take the hint and stop going on. Yap, 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 like an old woman. Are you not eating anything? No. When's your next exam? Monday afternoon. Well, I'll be over then. You know what's wrong with her, don't you? She's pining for that spotty lad. Daft taffy. I win. Well, I wouldn't bother if I were you. He'll have forgot about you already. I'm not listening. Do you know what he'll be doing right now? He'll be chatting up some other poor girl. Spinning her the tale of how he's the fastest muck spreader in Wales. What are you going on about? I'm only saying she wants to forget him. Taffy turnip. Owen. Oh, whatever he's called. Just leave her alone. This is all part of her education. How to deal with fellas. How to see through the chat. Because they're all after one thing, you know. Is that so? Of course it is. Not all blokes are like you. Well, it's obvious where these brains were. Because they weren't in his head. Look, can we just change the subject, please? Look, I'm just trying to let her down gently. Make her realise what kind of a fella he is. It's all right, Les. I think I already know that. Right, I'm off. See you later. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, will you be on for your dinner? No, I'll get a pie or something. It'll be all right. You don't think police will come round again, do you? Well, they better not. Well, and what if they want to search house again? No, you've heard the last of that, believe me. Unless they want you for an identity parade. Well, they'll have to catch him first. And I want all my breath while they did that. Some of them coppers are too slow to catch a cold. I hope we didn't say that to the first. <sighs> hey, I just thought. I didn't finish them windows. Whose? That woman's house. Only just started upstairs. Well, if I were you, I'd leave them well alone. Yeah. Don't think I'll ever go back there again. Well, I'm at the other end of the phone if you need some legal advice, if you get yourself in any more scrapes. <laughs> I'll try my best. See you later. Bye-bye. Where were you last night? Nowhere, why? Well, I call round, you weren't in. Oh, I must have popped out for half an hour. What time? About eight o'clock. You might fancy a drink or something. Do you know what? I was at the supermarket. You should have said. I love Wales, mate. There's something so intoxicating about the air, especially in the tent. We were in a static. Yeah, but it's the same sort of thing. Me and Roy are hoping to go away at back end. Yet you haven't got a brochure of you for that camping site? No. Uh, Gail might. Yeah, of course, because they were there at all, weren't they? That must have been fun. Flats being on the same site. Yeah, we had a right laugh. Yeah, Gail told me all detail. Oh, all right. Good job Martin with her bit sound of it, though. Hmm. About Les. Yeah. Terrible. Shocking, more like. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, 
Hey, hey, what's going on? Nothing, Mr. Baldwin. Well, I can see that, but I don't pay for nothing. I pay you to work. Well, you're only talking. Yeah, gossiping more like it. Now, come on, we've got an order to get out. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, well, just get on with it. God, he's right paranoid these days. He always thinks we're talking about him. Yeah, as if we'd be interested in his love life. Right. <laughs> Morning. You all right? I suppose. I don't know how some people get away with it, honest, I don't. Who? Her in pub, Natalie. Why, what's she done? Put the price of beer up again? My hand's money. There's something funny going on. She's not paying her right. Well, it's nothing to do with you, is it? No, but she's behind up rent and we've just had a big row about it. I'm only trying to help her. She's giving me a right here, full. Says I'm fussing on like some old biddy. Mm, we're taking a notice. It's what Zoe you saying, oh. Says he used to clock like a mother hen. Do you think a clock? Don't answer that. No, I don't. It's what most girls think. It's how it seems to me anyway. You think of some kind of boring joke. Yeah, well, anybody who does think that isn't worth bothering about. Thanks, Maxine. I know you mean well. Oh, these are great. Thanks. Well, Danny says if you don't like the colour or they don't fit, not to worry. He'll take them back or he'll change them for you. No, I'm sure they'll be fine. And they go in the machine. Great. Because you know what all this designer stuff's like. It's all in league with dry cleaners, isn't it? <laughs> How much do I owe you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to let you know. He was nice. We were pleased to meet him. Danny, yeah. Mm. He fancies you. Give up. <laughs> Come on, you know he does. Well, there's nothing doing, Gary. You can take it from me. We're friends, and that's how it's stopping. And what does he say about that? Well, you just have to lump it. Have you talked to him about it? Well, I think he's got the picture. Anyway, I'll see you later. Uh, never in the field of human conflict. Has so much been owed by so many to so few. Uh, Winston Churchill, 1941, Battle of Britain. What does the ARP stand for? I don't know. Air raid precautions. Anyway, I'm going to leave it. I feel like going out and getting drunk. Yeah, well, got a weekend to revise, haven't you? Can't be bothered. Tell me about it. What? It's not just exam stress, is it? It's this lad I met. On holiday. What's so? I really fancied him. I thought he fancied me and all. We went out, you know, for this evening, and it were great. So what happened? All the time you were fancying someone else. Forget him. Wish it were that easy. Well, anyway, it's not very practical, is it, if he lives in Wales? Was she a local girl, the one he fancied? No. She were married and all. Do you think I should write him a nasty letter? Whatever for. You tell him what a rat he is. I think you'd be better off forgetting about him. Because he's obviously not good enough for you. Now, come on. Who's the force's sweetheart? Uh, Vera Lynn. Uh, bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. And uh, we'll meet again. You'll have to excuse the mess. I'm all at sixes and sevens. Yeah, I know. And they told me. It, the police. Of course, that made me feel even worse. Searching your eyes. Yeah, well, it wasn't our idea. Yeah, no, I know it was my fault. But <laughs> what else was I to think? His last person in the world who do all like that. Yeah, but I don't know him, do I? Well, I, I didn't even recognise him. He's as straight as a die, is Gary. Usually to his own cost. Anyway, I, I mean, I had to come and apologise. Oh, I don't know if you like a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, well, these are just from my garden. They're lovely. Ta. I didn't know he had kids. Are they twins? Yeah. Maybe you haven't got enough on about police tromping all over. Have they got any further? Oh, um, well, yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you. My neighbour that just lives across the road, well, she's just come out of hospital with a plastic hip, but she saw the whole thing through the window from a chair. Oh, it's a pity she didn't say something when police turned up. I know, but she couldn't reach the phone. Anyway, she's given a description now, but, well, I'm not awful. Well, at least our Gary's isn't clear. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, tell him from me, thanks ever so much for doing what he did. <sighs> Who knows what else I might have had pinched if he hadn't stepped in. You're a very lucky woman. 
Yeah, I am. Linda, can I have a word with you in the office? It won't take long. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. The rest of you, get on with your work. That order's got to be out by Wednesday. What was all that about last night? How do you mean? Well, coming around in my flat under false pretenses. Hey, that lot don't know, do they? No. Thank goodness for that. So, what was it all about? Nothing suspicious about it. You what? Well, there isn't. Look, when you get to my age, and a good-looking young woman comes up and starts giving you the eye, you take a deep breath and count to 20. Because nine times out of ten, she's looking over your shoulder at some young fella in a T-shirt. What I'm trying to say is, uh, fellas like me could make fools of themselves. Do you think I was after something? Well, if you turn up on my doorstep out of the blue, I uh, could get the wrong impression. I just thought you might be feeling a bit miserable. Want some company. Nothing more to it than that. But if you've got a problem with that, then it's fine by me. Forget it happened, I won't come round again. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's... Well, don't think I don't appreciate the thought, because I do. It's that, uh, I've got a divorce coming up, and, uh, the last thing I want is any gossip flying around. So you don't want me to come round again, then? Well, put it this way. You can drop in for a drink any time you want. That's if you pass it. Disneyland Paris invites you to spend an unforgettable summer. Discover our spectacular late-night entertainment and our exciting new attraction, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Disneyland Paris. The magic is closer than you think. Call us now on 0990 030302. We got a great deal on the kitchen and a dishwasher free. Oh, we love it. You'll love the change at the MFI Homework Sale now. New Magnum Double. Thick, cracking chocolate. Creamy vanilla ice cream and soft caramel. Temptation has a new name. New Magnum Double from Walls. Life is all about priorities. There he is. Same time every Sunday. Regular as clockwork. <gasps> Pasta. Utterly botany. You know, the trouble with people like him is that they get stuck in the same old routine. Every little job has to be finished to perfection. Everything has to be done in a certain way. Before they know it, they become totally obsessed. Hmm. If I ever get like that, divorce me. It's the taste that drives you utterly, utterly. After the show, why not treat your lady? Sit her down to our famous delicacy, the Lamb McSpicy. Only £1.39 at McDonald's Restaurant, The High Street. Charlie's very stubborn. He knows his own mind. He's a strong character. If he's faced with an obstacle that seems difficult at first, he doesn't give up easily. He'd always try. He'd always do his best. The new nap is clearly geared for an active child. Introducing Pampers Playtimes the newest member of the Pampers family. It's like a condensed version of a Pampers nappy. The bit that's been cut away here allows for that freedom of movement. When I take the nappy off, his skin is very dry. He could play for England. He could play for whopping. <laughs> I think I'm destined for life on the touchline with him. New Pampers Playtimes, a smaller shape for a flying start. On Wednesday, nobody won. <laughs> This Saturday, the rollover jackpot will be an estimated £13 million. The English summer forecast. Chilly, pouring and fine wines.
Don't miss Jay McQuitty's pick of this summer's 100 best wines for your money. And whatever the weather, buy any one of these four bottles and get another free, starting in the Times tomorrow. Yourself so miserable. Well, I've got to live with her. There's an atmosphere in the house. I thought you two got on okay. I did when Nick were there. Well, now it's just us two. She treats me like a doormat. Well, that's not on, not if she's not paying her rent. Well, I suppose that's Natalie's fault. What's bugging me is her attitude, talking about me as some kind of freak. Well, you're not. Well, I should know. Ah, oh, well, I suppose I'll live. Look, me and Tom are going to take pictures. Why don't you come along? Oh, I'd only be in way. You wouldn't. It's very kind of you, Maxine, but I've got some cleaning to do. Cleaning? My bedroom. It's in the right state. Look, will you have some confidence in yourself, please? I want you to come. Are you sure? Tom's a mate the same as you are. Right, then. So? So, what were it all about? Um, just this order we've got to get in. It says we're not working hard enough. Hm. Why's it picking on you? He says I'm a bad influence. Cheeky beggar. I'll tell you what his trouble is. He's missing it. Well, I'm glad it's all sorted, any road. So am I. Spot us this. Hmm. That was decent, have I? Mm. And then flowers from the garden. I bet she was embarrassed, wasn't she? Yeah. She said, if you hadn't stepped in when you did, she might have lost everything. Tele, video, jewellery, the lot. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a complete waste of time, then? No. She's rather grateful. Could have run to champagne. It's the thought that counts, Gary. <laughs> You're right. What are them daisies? Daisies. Should be really nice. Well, at least it's all sorted now. Yeah, put it down to experience, eh? It's the last time I joined Jack Straw's army. Right, I best get ready for work. What, already? Not you fancy a night off? What's that got to do with it? We need the money. And besides, I promise Natalie. And anyway, you've got two kiddies in there that are going to wake up any minute. Oh, I think they've just gone down. Yeah, I'm sorry. They won't go off earlier. What time are we going to get to bed tonight, then? Garrett, you are not going to prison. That's the main thing. You should be thankful. Yeah, you're right. Who needs sleep, anyway? Mm. Hello, young miss. Is your mammy? Not today, thank you. You don't know what I'm selling. A lot of old flannel. Well, again. <laughs> anyway, what's up? I just want to ask you a question. You know that kiddie stuff I got for your mate? Was it all right? Oh, uh, yeah. I told you she would be pleased. Right, so she's not changed her mind, then? Since this morning? Well, I haven't seen her since. Right. Well, I'll see you around then. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Was that it? No. I'll tell you what, though, I mean, now I'm here, fancy going for a drink? I can't, Danny. I've got to put the kids to bed. Well, if you sort yourself out with the babysitter, I'll be up the road. I can't, Danny. I'm sorry. Never mind, then. I'll see ya. Er, uh, don't mind me asking, but uh, you're not in any bother, are you? No. Only I, uh, I thought I saw a police car outside your house. Oh, yesterday, yeah. So everything's all right, is it? Yeah, yeah. Have they not been to your house to do a survey? No. Oh, yeah, survey on nosy neighbours. All right, all right, don't tell us then. Oh, actually, there's no to it. I, I tried to make a citizen's arrest when I was doing this woman's windows, and she got the wrong end of the stick and went, oh, it's all cleaned up, any road. You know, I bet you see all sorts off the top of them ladders of yours. Oh, well, burglars, for one. I am the rest. My Uncle George was a window cleaner. He used to reckon the money was a bonus. He'd have done it for now. How's that? Think about it. Totty. Come on, you must have pulled by now. Hey, don't judge everybody by your standards. Give over, you're not that green. Yeah. It's not like that, not on my round anyway. Well, I'll tell you what. If ever you fancy a day off, I'll mark your card for you. I can tell them a mile off. Who? Them as does, and them as don't. My Uncle George had a twinkle in his eye right to the very, very end. <laughs> He buried him with a chamois in his hand. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's plenty of fellas out there that fancy the life of a window cleaner. Maybe they do, but uh, I'm sticking to it straight and narrow. To tell you the truth, I'm too tired to do anything else. What with coppers chasing me for stuff I didn't do. <laughs> Is there anybody serving in here? Sure! Fancy going for an engine after the film? Aye, I'll do. I'll just get in. 
Two parts, please, Judy, and a spritzer. Right up. Look at the end now. Do you know it's a wonder her and Nick lasted as long as they did? Well, I don't even want to look at another man. Ah, uh, could I have that in writing, please? Yeah, well, not for a while. <laughs> You've got three on the go now, then, have you? <laughs> Three? Why? Who's the other one? Uh, Ashley, the living lover. <laughs> I hope that's a joke. Well, I don't know what you get up to, do I? Living lover? Auntie Ashley? Do us a favour. Oh, I am. I'm off out tonight. Probably be back late. Me and Maxine night on town. Right. <laughs> night on the town. <laughs> oh, it kills me. <laughs> hey, your turn to put the cocoa on. Mm. Warm his slippers. I put the cereal bowls out for the oh, morning. Oh, ha, ha. It's not like that. Uh, well, how do you fancy a game of cards after close? <laughs> I'm up for it. Yeah. What? Round eyes, you mean? Yeah. Or do you have to have permission? What? I've actually... No, of course I don't. Well? All right, then. But you've got to bring your own booze, because we've got no in. I'll take these. Oh, cheers. I must have feet. On your own, are you? You and Leanne? That was night off. Typical. She ain't got a clue, has she? What do you mean? I'll treat her staff. Well, I quite like working for her. Well, Pays all right, does she? Thank God. There'd be trouble if she didn't. All right. In fact, we're all going up to her for a sub. She's all right about it. Come on, Ash, drink up. Still in, Leo. Told you I'm skin. No. It's just me and you, mate. Anyone want a butty? Yeah, go on. <sighs> Another 50. Most of the big spenders, ain't eh? right, I'm still in. Another 50 paint. Another. Sure about this? Put some change in your other pocket for your bus fare. <laughs> yeah, very funny. And another quid. Right, see your quid. I'll raise you another. And another two. Quite sure about that. Your two. And another ten. Let's see. Three of you can beats two pair. Uh, pack it in, mate. <laughs> what, what? You've still got a shirt on your back. You must be joking. i just started. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Ashley won't mind. Because <laughs> he's out in the town. <laughs> I'm coming. Two pizzas, 14 quid. You what? Two pizzas for you. It... No, wrong flat. You went downstairs. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm all a bit steamed up here. My mistake. See you later. Your ten. I'll raise you. Oh, Ashley's here. Is this your idea? What's going on? We're playing cards. What does it look like? I'm sorry, I'm not having it. I'm going to win it, mate. We're in the middle of a game, eh? We can finish it off each street. Who says? I do. This is my house to say what goes on in it. Take the notes. You stop out of it, Liam. Are you serious here, pal? Look, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Don't you think you're going a little bit over the top here? Eh? No, I don't. I'm sick of folks taking advantage of the desert door. 
You can't do this. We were invited by Leanne. I don't care. It's not Leanne's house. Yeah, but she pays the rent. No, she doesn't. That's just it. If she did, then fair enough. Then she could have a say and I wouldn't mind, but she doesn't. No, that's rubbish. She's talking oh, rubbish. Oh, she thinks she can take me for a ride. Well, you can't know anymore, cos I'm not stupid. No, you're not going. Stay where you are. Take the notice of him. I think that's my pack of cards and all. Come on, Steve. Well, shower's getting late anyway. You know something? You're a right sad case. Well, I'll just have to live with that, won't I? And don't slam the door. And you can clear this mess up, cos I ain't gonna. I'm afraid Mr. Fairhurst has made some accusations of his own against you. He's accusing you of assault. <laughs> Mr. Musgrave, have you seen your Ryan? He was supposed to be meeting me and Barbrookie. No, love. Sorry. Um, is everything all right? Yeah, just heading in to see Luke. How is he? Ah, uh, okay, you know. You tell him I was asking after him. I will, yeah. See you, Kitty. See ya. Oh, someone doesn't sound too happy. Oh, tell me about it. Hey, I'm so near to say. Good morning. Oh, hi. Is he all right? Uh, he's just hungry. What about you? I I'm fine. You don't love him? Well, I've had a bad day, that's all. Um, uh, no chance of you coming over later, is there? I think Margie's in for the night. Oh, well, never mind. I'll see you whenever, then. No, I'll come over. I'll make some excuse. Oh, that would be nice. Right, I'll see you later, then. Greg, sometimes I feel like the only person I can rely on at the moment. See you later. See ya. How are you? Oh, in competition with Lord Irvine, are you? <laughs> well, you did say that we could change things, if you... If you told me up front and pay for it. Yeah, I'm just going to work my way through this lot. Oh, I've just had a month of that with the club. Yeah, uh, help me take my mind off things, though. Your ex. Oh, I'll live. I'm just sorry that Mark made a fuss in your bar. Compared to some of the stunts that go on in that place, it wasn't a fuss, believe me. Anyway, good luck. Thanks. Oh, and don't give nothing any walls out without telling me, OK? <laughs> See ya. Bye. Look, I know what I said, but I only said it because that lunatic Musgrove attacked me. So you're now retracting your confession? Yeah. How very convenient. You've got to believe me. Ryan Musgrove is mental. I'd have said anything to get him off my back, anything. I'm scared stiff of him. I don't know what he's going to do next. A me thing? Well, what about us? Oh, right. Well, I thought that they had made up the minds about when it was all happening, yeah? My bottle goes every time I hear that phone. I can think it's the police. About these DNA yeah, samples. Yeah, thanks. See ya. I just wish they'd find something on Luke. I know, love. Oh, my God! Oh, my God, guess what? What? That was weird. You want me to go down to London for a meeting at the CUC? About this new job? Yeah, Ross reckons it'll all be happening in the next few weeks. I thought it'd be a year off at least. Meeting up with all the big wigs, eh? Yeah. Well, what am I going to wear? Not to go into town tomorrow. So, does this mean you've definitely got it? Well, I don't know. I mean, they haven't actually said that the job's mine, but it's looking that way, isn't it? They're asking me to go down to London to talk it all through. So, are you going to take it? Well, I don't know. But I don't see why we shouldn't have a lovely romantic few days away, all expenses paid. Well, you want me to go with you? I don't see why not. Five-star hotel, fancy food. It only cost the price of a train ticket, but the rest of it's on them. Grace, eh? <gasps> Mr Fairhurst has cuts and bruising to his face, chest and arms. Were the injuries inflicted by you? I, I don't know. You don't know? Well, yeah, OK. I mean, I admit, I did knock him about a bit, but only because it was the only way I knew to get the truth out of him. This isn't the first time you've been accused of assault. There's been two other complaints against you in the last couple of months alone. I was mugged in my taxi. I didn't attack anyone. Just like you didn't attack Mr Fairhurst. Oh, I can't believe you're making him out to be the victim in this. Look, can't you see what's going on here? He did it. He raped Nicky Shadwick. There is no evidence that points to that other than a confession extracted from Mr Fairhurst under extreme duress. Well, what about these DNA samples? What about them? Well, I know you've been testing other people. That's because you can't find anything that points to it being our Luke, isn't it? We are testing everyone who was at the party at number five Brookside Close at Christmas. Which reminds me, Mr Musgrove, I don't believe we've had your sample yet. Someone will be with you shortly. There you go, mate. Do you want back? Yeah. Another bottle of shit, that's for table ten, please, Jack. OK. And an orange for the little girl. 
thought he walked the line again. She does. Hello, is anybody there? Every time I spoke to you today, you've been on a different planet. I'm just knackered, that's all. I had a bit of a late night. Well, at least you weren't woken at half four in the morning by a crying four-year-old. Um, how well things at Ruth? Is everything OK? Yes, I'm. She loves me. She follows me round everywhere. Between me and you, I reckon Rachel's a bit jealous. Jealous? Is that what she says? Well, not in so many words, like, but she's just a bit narky. Well, are you sure that's all it is? Yeah, why? Oh, no reason. She's just behaving a bit weird lately, that's all. It's a weird situation, isn't it? I mean, it's different when you have kids of your own. At least that way you get a chance to get used to it before, and... But, you know, Ruth has just been dumped on Rachel out the blue. She's tired out. Hiya. Hiya. How are you? Have I interrupted anything? No, no, you're all right. Listen, go and grab yourself a table, I'll bring you the coffee over. Why did you refuse to give us a DNA sample? I was trying to stand up for my rights. You know we can insist that you provide a sample. I realise that now. Why didn't you go ahead with it in the first place, like everyone else? I told you, I was trying to make a stand. I don't like the idea of living in a police state. You do realise that refusing to help us with our inquiries makes it look like you've got something to hide? Well, I haven't, honestly. Look, you can have a sample if you want. I just want you to see that I'm the victim here, not the criminal. OK. We're going to need a statement from you about what happened with Musgrove. A statement? Yeah. We'll push for ABH, but I doubt if we'll be able to make it stick. No way, I'm not giving a statement. What? Forget it. If I press charges, he'll come after me. Only next time, I might not be so lucky. You're joking? No way, forget it. And how about if we do you for wasting police time? Do what you want, I don't care. But I'm not writing any statement. You can work in this, you know. This is like a pigsty. Turn me a few papers. You've gone through half a forest, day. I'm just never out for five minutes. At this time, where's who? Susanna Monacy wants me to place a job before her. Yeah, we'll make sure she pays up front this time. It's like trying to get blood out of the stone with that last plumbing job. Yeah, Katrina said she's a right minge bag. She's always been all right with me. Yeah, well, whatever it is she wants to do and tell her you're not available at the end of next week, could you be in London? Actually, I wanted a word about that. Oh, don't be telling me you can't go. I can't, can I? I've got loads on. Oh, Craig. Away for ages. I know, but I can't afford to let the business slide, even for a couple of days. Surely our Jason can manage. He's working at the school. He can't be in two places at once. <sighs> I was really looking forward to it and all. Yeah, so was I. I just push stuff back. I can't, love. You know what, if I could? Well, I suppose it was a nice idea while it lasted. I'll get the train straight back as soon as I can. No, don't do that. Well, there's no point in me staying down on my own any longer than I have to. Why don't you take our Nicky? She could do with a break, couldn't you, love? Could we, Mum? I wouldn't miss much from you, and you get all my notes up, Bainey. You're definitely sure you can't juggle things. Honest, love, I'm pushed enough as it is. Right, get your stuff. What? Must be a lucky day. Mr Fairhurst doesn't want to press charges. What, you mean I'm free to go? For the time being. <laughs> Look, what about Harvey? I mean, are you keeping him in? Just go, Musgrove, before I change my mind. Oh, and by the way, be aware that from now on we'll be watching you. You step out of line once, pick a fight with anyone, go anywhere near Mr Fairhurst, and you'll be straight back in here on whatever charge we can pin on you. Got it? Oh, aye. Well, you're good on that, aren't you? Yeah. Doing innocent people for crimes they didn't commit. Mm. Oh, that's what you weren't coming. Couldn't get away. <sighs> I was killing me stuck over there, knowing you were here on your own. Oh, never on my own. Where are the kids? Mmm, asleep. Oh, I want to make up for the other day. Oh. Oh. Do you want to... Uh... Oh, it's Harry. He'll go off in a minute. Mm. No, you better see to him. Forget it. Just so you know, you can't touch me now. It's all down on record in there. So you come within spitting distance of me and they'll drag you in. All I have to do is make one phone call, right? You may have convinced them, but I know you rate Nicky Shadwick. <laughs> Just get yourself lucky I didn't press charges. Scared, were you? Worried that the busies might be getting a bit too close for comfort? I've got my reasons. You'll go down for this. 
Somehow, I will make sure of it. Oh, no, no, Ryan. Remember what the police officer said? No contact. Gonna be tricky gathering evidence when you can't come anywhere near me, innit? See you around, Ryan. Have a nice life. It's just so hard. Day after day, feeding, changing, sleeping, it's relentless. You've got Katrina, though, haven't you? Oh, she makes me feel worse half the time, like I'm some kind of failure. Don't be soft. I just feel the responsibility of it all weighing me down. Hey, come on. But this isn't how it was meant to be. Getting Harry. It's meant to put Max and I back on track, not blow us apart. That isn't why you split up, though, is it? Because of Harry. Max was carrying on. Well, everything's gone wrong. Well, here I am, struggling to cope with two young babies, Max is... God knows where, with God only knows who. Hey, come on, it's only while a little it's hard. <laughs> Things will soon start to ease up. This isn't what I wanted. I've just been left on my own. Hey, you're not on your own. I'm here any time you need me. <laughs> you didn't mind me coming round, did you? No, as if. You should call in more often. I've just been up to your dad's flat looking for me one, but there's no one here. I think they've gone out on the razzle. Oh, I think he's took up a meal, you know, sick of minds of all this hospital business. Hiya. Hiya, Megan. Hiya. Hiya. Have you seen Ryan? He's supposed to meet me here. He hasn't stood you up again, has he? No, it's just late, that's all. I hope nothing's happened. I always said you couldn't trust that lot, didn't I? Um, at least I'm not having it off with Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Are you seeing some of us, isn't it? Yeah, my boss. Really? What's he like? He's nice. He's a creep. Jackie, what table's this for again? Um, nine. Thank you. He looks very cheerful. I know, yeah. So him and Rachel finally sourced everything else? No, not yet. He still doesn't know? No. No what? Oh, sorry, I thought you just told Megan. No. Tell me what? Rachel's pregnant. One steaming hot cup of coffee. Cool, oh, thanks, Greg. I'm amazed you haven't run a mile. Oh, don't be soft. Well, accompanying some emotional wreck of a mother is exactly why we got together, is it? Look, I've um, been thinking. How do you fancy getting away for a night together? Hotel or something? What about Margie? Well, she's going to London next week with work. She won't be back till after the weekend. Mm, and the kids? I'll come up with something. Well, I'm not sure I could leave Emma for a whole night. I mean, I'm still feeling her, you know. Bring, bring her with us. A whole night? No sneaking around? No Harry waking up on the hour every hour. Oh, I could do with a bit of a break. What do you think? Well, um... Let's see how next week goes, hmm? It's done, I guess. It's, uh, probably. If we can get it organised. Hello, boy. How you doing? You OK? Fine. I spoke to Ryan. Tell me what you said about not visiting. So why are you here then? Look, I wanted to see you. I thought we'd all that sorted. What happened with Rose and Don? Why me and your mother did what we did? I thought you understood. I've had a lot of time to think about though, haven't I? That's what you get in here, time. Hours and hours to mull things over in your head. Look at them from every angle. Look, don't torture yourself about something that happened over 20 years ago. I'm not stupid, Dad. I was too much trouble for you then, and I'm even more trouble now. I can do this by myself. I know I can. She thinks he's abusing her. Well, he's not like you. I mean, it's all in Rachel's head. It's a bit weird, isn't it? I suppose she has been through all kinds. It's bound to have an effect on you eventually. All kinds like what? Well, she was abused by her dad. And she was married to some loon who wouldn't let her leave the house for weeks on end. Rachel, she's only about 20, isn't she? She's managed to get lost into a short space of time. I just thought she was dead normal. Well, she is usually. I don't know. I mean, if she's imagining stuff like this about all Mike, she must still be having problems, mustn't she? No wonder she doesn't want to have the baby. Yeah, but it's not just her decision to make, though, is it? I mean, it's all Mike's baby as well. There you go, ladies. How about that for service? Thanks for lighting the break, I think. Been a long day? Yeah, I've just been chopping and changing with Rach, making sure somebody's always there to look after Ruth. Who's got her now? Rach. Yeah, I was quite happy to look after her for the rest of the night, but she wouldn't have it. She wanted to do it herself. A bit possessive of her, is she? Yeah, true, right. She thinks she's the only one who can look after her. She's off her head. 
I mean, anyone would think she didn't trust me with her. Katie. Where have you been? Look, I'm sorry I'm late. I've been hanging around for hours. You could have phoned. Do you want to get another table while I get the drinks in? It's just, I've got something I need to tell you. Oh, yeah, all right. Our company not good enough for you, then. See you later. See you later. Mm. You're going to have to go. I can't. Mark, you'll be wondering where you are. Oh, who's that? Oh, this isn't Katrina. Uh, hang on your button. Oh. Oh, hi, Mickey. Hey. Uh, I suppose you want your father back. Um, I hear Dad, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Some fella's just phoned about him, um, delivery of bricks or something. He said if you want them, you're going to have to ring him right back. And he's going out to the next course for now, so I've got the number. Right, better get over. We're just about finished here anyway, aren't we? Yeah, I think we've got everything I need. Oh, are you, Harry? He's been playing on your matting. <laughs> yeah. Coming on, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, you could do with a nappy change, though. Oh, um, I told Katrina to change him before she went out. I mean, honestly, that girl just has to be told everything twice. She went out with our Jason ages ago. Oh, we must have been like this for ages. Come here, come to Mummy. I'll make you all nice and fresh. Come on. Right, come on, we better go back. I'll let uh, be in touch about the job, okay? Okay. Neither of you wanted me. You can't have done her. You wouldn't have just handed me over like that. We did what we thought was best for you. That's all. We've paid the price ever since. We spent 12 years regretting that one decision. 12 years thinking we didn't have the right to even see you. For God's sake, Luke, you saw the letters me and your mum sent. She regretted it almost from day one. We both did. But we couldn't take you back from Rose and Don. We just couldn't do that to them. It's easy to say that now. There's nothing else I can say, boy. Because it's true. Your mother and me have had a lifetime of regrets over what we did. We've suffered. You'll never know how much. We're still suffering. But that doesn't mean we don't love you. I mean, we're in hell seeing you stuck away in this place. But if you want, I'll walk out that door and never contact you again. It'll kill me to do it, because you're my son. I love the bones here. But if it's what you really want, I'll do it. <sighs> okay. I understand. Now, wait. Don't go. I don't want to be involved with someone who thinks he can solve everything with his fists. I don't know what's happening to me. The last few months, I've just been that wound up that I just can't seem to stop myself from lashing out. Are well, you going to have to? I know. It's just with everything that's going on with our Luke, I just don't think I can do anything to help him. Striding around like Mike Tyson's not going to do him any good, is he? No. I want you to promise me you won't get into any more fights, no matter who decides to take you on. I promise. Because I know we haven't been together that long, like him. I've no right to tell you how to run your life. But if you do do it again, I'll walk away. And I mean that. You still on for Friday, Meg? Yeah, always. Yeah, me and Richard are really looking forward to it. Should be a good laugh. Oh, hang on a sec. I've just got to go and see someone. We'll be a minute. Who's that? Oh, just some girl who's moved in the flat upstairs. And Jackie must be doing a bit of brown nosing. And she sees them, they're a right bunch of snobs. Back again? Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you about flat. Yeah? You know that wall when you come in? I want to take it out. I've sketched it out. I just think it would uh, open up the flat a bit, give it a sense of space. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, that's fine. Um, what's all this? Oh, this is phase two, actually. Um, you know that passageway thingy between the bedrooms and the lounge? Well, it's just a waste of space, so I thought that we... Um, I'm gonna say, phase one's okay, but... Well, phase two will have to wait until I know exactly how long you're gonna be staying here. Well, uh, as long as Nathan the Doc want me, I suppose. So, um, you've definitely finished with Mark, then? 
If I didn't feel so sorry for him, it'd be a hell of a lot easier to walk away from him. I suppose it's hard when you're married, though, isn't it? it? Makes everything seem that much more serious somehow. Mm, yeah. To be honest, I think that's why it's taken me so long to sort it out. I mean, how do you turn around to somebody and say that you've changed your mind after three years of marriage? What a nightmare. But then you can't stay married to someone just because you feel sorry for them, can you? No, I suppose not. And although Mark is safe and reliable and dependable and all that, compared to someone like, like Nathan or even Darren, to be honest, he's a bit of a bore. And I bet he doesn't like the idea of you living with two fellas either. God, no. He's completely paranoid about it, convinced I must be sleeping with at least one of them. Yeah? Well, maybe I should. Nathan's kind of cute, really. <laughs> but I might as well if I'm already being accused of it. Anyway, I'll let you get back. See ya. See ya. <laughs> oh, my God, he was stinking. Anyway, the next thing, she starts blaming Katrina, saying that she should have changed him before she went out. Go away. Katrina came round for our Jason hours ago. So she left that poor baby in a dirty nappy just because she didn't have a nanny there to change it. Looks that way, doesn't it? It's a disgrace, that. No wonder Katrina can't stand her. She can't do right for doing wrong. Have you ever asked yourself why? Why what? Well, maybe she's not doing her job properly. Katrina? Well, I don't think Susanna would have a go at her for no reason. What are you on about? Katrina's really good. She's been nannying for years. She spent all that time out in America, remember? Yeah, and wasn't the trouble over there, or no? No. It does wasn't very well, that's why she had to come back. All I'm saying is there's no smoke without fire. If Susanna's constantly having to chase her up to get her to do things, maybe she needs to pull her socks up. <laughs> it's not fair. How come Harvey gets away with it? You guys come up with us. If he did do it, they'll come up with something, they'll find something. The only thing left is these DNA samples. How come he refused to give a test? I mean, he must be worried that they're going to find some evidence against him. Well, if he's given one today, we'll soon find out, won't we? Right, that's me. Back to the grindstone. Well, listen, we'll have another cup of cappuccinos when you're ready. Okay. God, what am I gonna do? Oh my, you can't believe Rachel's pregnant and he doesn't even know. I'm gonna have to tell him everything, can't I? But how can I? He'll be gutted. Not as gutted as he'd be if she gets rid of it and he hasn't even had a chance to stop her. Listen, I'm sorry to pile all this onto you. I suppose it's partly my problem now, though, isn't it? I mean, he is my brother and all. Yeah, I suppose he is, isn't he? I yeah, quite like the idea of having a sister to confide in. You just have to sort stuff like this out on my own. Well, if you want my advice, I'd tell him now before it goes on too long. I mean, you'd only have to look at what happened with me mum and Ron to see that honesty is the best policy. Yeah, you're right. I'll have a word. Oh, what about talking to her? Rachel? Yeah, give her an ultimatum. At least that way he might say it from the horse's mouth. I will, yeah. I'll see her tomorrow. I'll say if she doesn't tell him, then I will. But I can't carry on like this. Italian style. <coughs> Hold up, lads. I've got an idea. Get those up here now! Oh, oh, Um, I'm meeting someone, but I'd quite like to freshen up first. It's just over here, sir. Thanks. Hello there. Things come to those who loaf. Here's to maximum refreshment, minimum effort. Mmm, you smell nice. Thanks, I've uh, just been to the lavatory. Play Thunderball, the brand new Saturday game from the National Lottery. And you'll soon discover that the game isn't over. A 
until the Thunder Ball rolls. Match just one number, and you'll still be in with a chance when the Thunder Ball rolls. Ask your local National Lottery retailer for details. Quelque chose ne va pas? J'ai 93 ans aujourd'hui. <rire> C'est merveilleux. Regardez, ici ma femme. Elle a 25 ans. Ah, la plus belle fille du monde. Nous faisons l'amour tous les jours. Elle est parfaite. Mais alors, vous pleurez de bonheur Non, je ne me souviens plus où j'habite. At least Hagen does is 100% perfect. find a fragrance with the exotic sensuality of the East. New Oriental Blossom, captured for the Lenore World Sense Collection. This booklet will give you facts on the Millennium Bug. Look out for it in tomorrow's papers and next week's TV guides. Are you thinking of soft, white bread? A little dollop of ketchup, maybe? Thought so. Go. Go get the pan. Diet Tango, you need it because you're weak. Traveling about three days. Right, you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. Granddad! Hiya, Kedda! Did you have a good holiday? Yeah. Oh, great. All right. Hiya. Home at last, eh? Yeah, back to reality. Cheers. Hey, Hiya, Rich. Hiya. Hiya, Ruth. Um, Hiya. I thought you were working on the Sabi. Um, I've switched with Tricia. I'm going to do tomorrow afternoon instead. I'm taking Ruth for a walk. Is uh, Mike going with you? No, he's needed here, isn't he? <sighs> Rachel, you can't keep this up, you know. You're going to have to tell him. No, I don't. Of course you do. Rachel, if you're having his baby, he's got a right to know. How can me and Mike have a family when I can't even cope me back to my little sister? So you're just going to pretend that this isn't happening? I don't know what I'm going to do. Rachel, leave me alone. Don't be getting everything out. We live next door and I remember. Mama, eh? I'm looking for Grandad's present. So come on then. What? What was it all about? Jetting off to Majorca without me. Why'd you just get off like that? Because I had a holiday. Paid for by your daughter that I wouldn't have missed for the world. Right, uh, I'd better get going. I'm going to catch up with Jackie and Susanna, see what's been happening at the club. Not even a flaming phone call. So, so what are you saying, Jimmy? That we all should have missed out? That I should have turned around to Kylie and said, I'm sorry, love, the holiday's off. Because your granddad is that blitzed, they're not going to let him on the plane. You could have at least rang. <laughs> Jimmy, I went on holiday to forget all about Tembrook Cyclos. Not phone home here every five minutes. Um, Mum, would you mind um, keeping an eye on Kylie for me just for an hour, just to get things sorted? Yeah, that's fine. Um, Kyles, will you just take Will upstairs, love, and um, we well, could start unpacking his stuff, couldn't you? I'll be up in five minutes to get the washing ready, all right? Mm. I won't be long. Take as long as you like, love. Makes no difference to me. Rich? Uncle Mike! Oh, yeah. Lead well, off. No way. We're going to the swings. You sneaking off without me again, mate? Right. You keeping up the way of the tickle monster? Mike, stop mauling her. Huh. You're always messing around with her. She don't want to be tickled, do you, Ruth? Sorry? I'll have to go. Listen, did you ask Cindy if you can babysit when we go for this meal? No, I don't think I'll bother. Why? Well, I don't know. I don't really like leaving Ruth. Well, I've told everyone you're coming now. It's all booked and everything. <sighs> well, I'm not staying out long. Look, I'll meet you in Bar Brookie, OK? We'll have a drink. Now, coffee, coffee. I know I've got some somewhere. Uh, this place looks like a bomb, is it? 
Well, I haven't had a chance to do anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I might head out for a bit, give those two a bit of fresh air. Well, don't be out too long. I think Emma's coming down with a cold. She'll be all right. She's well wrapped up. Well, that may be, but I don't want to get onto her chest. Susanna should be fine. Can't you just do as I say? <sighs> OK. I'll make sure we're not out for too long. See ya. What's all that about? Oh, don't ask. Katrina and I aren't exactly getting on at the moment. Are you all right? Yeah, fine. You sure? You I mean you look really stressed out? Well, I'm just tired, that's all. You know, children are really hard work, with the business and everything. Sounds like you could do with what I've just had. A week in the sun. Oh, I wish. Actually, um, I was wondering, there is any chance of you covering for me one night next week in the restaurant? Um, I might be going away. Yeah? Mm. Oh, on a business trip, you know, just the one night. Oh, so you'll be staying in, like, a, a hotel? Oh, well, um, I don't really know. Um, oh, but probably. Oh? Well, well, it's not all been arranged yet. I suppose that'll depend on whether Greg can square things with his wife. How did you find out? I've suspected for ages, Susanna. I mean, you haven't exactly been discreet, have you? And once you start getting into the realms of a night away, then, it's pretty obvious. The kettle's boiled. So it came just like that in the post? No, that's nothing. He thinks your husband's trying a little emotional blackmail. Estranged husband. Anyway, I'm not going to let it ruin my night. Did you manage to book us in anywhere? Yeah, I thought we might go to the shelf. Fine by me. Yeah, I'm starving. You should have asked Jackie to come along with us. I want to have you two giving her the once over again all night. Mm -hmm. He's going all protective. <laughs> Must be getting serious. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Where's Rach? She's going to meet us in there. She's just taking Ruth around to some buds. Oh, can I suggest a drink? We just spotted you now over in the corner. Jackie's fella. Which one? The snot in the sweater. The sooner we get out speed, the better. Should we make a move then? Yeah, come on. Thanks, I'll just get me caught. What happened with Rachel and Mike? She told him, yeah? Not as far as I know. She's joking. I know. Lousy, isn't it? I think it's a disgrace. I suppose you think I'm some kind of marriage wrecker. What you get up to is your own business. I don't even know how it happened now. Well, we did try to stop it once, but, you know, these things are, we sort of slip back into it again. I must admit, Craig Shadwick isn't the type of fella I'd have had you down for. <laughs> Why? Because he's a local labourer. Bit of rough. No, not at all. He's interested in me. He listens to what I have to say. Stops me feeling like a total failure. A failure? Susanna, you're a superwoman, running a business, bringing up kids. Well, maybe I'd feel better about it if I didn't have two babies under the age of one. And a nanny you actually got on with. Oh, exactly. Are you sorry you took her on? She just makes me feel totally inadequate, swarming around in her best outfits like some sort of stick insect. Oh, so it's just a personality thing then, nothing to do with the work. Well, yes and... No, not altogether 100% certain she watches the babies all the time. Oh, well, I'd sort that out straight away. Oh, easier said than done. Well, if you're not happy with her, get rid. You can't have a mind in the kids if you don't trust her. But then I'd have to find a replacement, and that could take ages. I'd hate to be left with no childcare whatsoever. Oh, speaking of which, I better get going. I told my mum she'd only have Carly for an hour. And I've got to shoot round and see Jackie yet. So, um... You don't think I'll burn in hell for committing adultery with my next-door neighbour? Oh, don't be soft. He's the one who should be feeling guilty. You're a free agent, remember? Look after number one. That's my motto. You know, men are scum. A lot of them. I think we both know that. Will you stop banging just so I get this done? So, if I give these rotors to you, do you think you'll be able to sort out next week by tomorrow? If you pay me the going rate, yeah. Do you mean pay your hand here as an old dumb and dusted in ten minutes? Let her do them, then. Well, she's got enough on a plate at the moment. And I'm afraid it's £4.50 an hour, unless you want great grannies to grind to a halt. Look, uh, do you want to get the drinks in? We'll line it over and see our Harry. Mine's milky tea. Fine. I'll put it on your tab. Please, just for one minute, if you give me a bit of peace and stop banging. 
Harry, look what you've done. For God's sake, you're What's stupid. What's going on? Mr Dixon, we had a bit of an accident. Yeah, I can see that. What I want to know is, why are you having to go with my grandchild? I wasn't, I just... I know exactly what you were doing, love. What do you think you're playing at shopping at a nine-month-old kid? I'm sorry, he was banging the next minute. Ow! What are you doing? I'll tell you. Ow! But he's my responsibility. Oh, really? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> So, what was your holiday like? Oh, brilliant. We had a great time. Um, is it true that your dad got thrown off the plane? My dad? No. No, he just panicked with flying, that's all. So, is everything being okay here then? Yep. How are you, Jack? Thought I'd find you here. What's going on? Why have you got Harry? Look, I don't care what you say. I've had enough. There's no way I'm leaving my grandson in the care of some psycho nanny. What? That Katrina one. I've just had to stop her from giving this poor little fellow a smack. You are joking. Knows what would have happened if I'd have been there. He could have finished up in hospital or anything. Yeah, give him to me. I'll bring him back to Susanna where he belongs. See if I can try and find out what's been going on. Come on, mate. is a brand new body lotion that moisturizes for 24 hours a day, every day. New bird scoops. The custard snack you can enjoy almost anywhere. The MFI Homework Sale's now on. I can't believe we changed the kitchen so much. And spent so little. We got a great deal on the Hygiena Cabinets and a free dishwasher. So does that mean you like it? No. I love it. You <laughs> love the change at the MFI Homework Sale now. Yeah? Dave, the match. What? The match, Dave. Come on. Oh, no. Great. Yeah? The match. I'm ready, mate. Because Vodafone is giving away up to 50% more free minutes to new and existing digital account customers on its most popular tariffs, you now needn't worry about how often you call even your closest friends. So whatever the call, the word is Vodafone. Saturday game from the National Lottery, and you'll soon discover that the game isn't over until the Thunderball rolls. Match just one number, and you'll still be in with a chance when the Thunderball rolls. Ask your local National Lottery retailer for details. The one to watch, winner of five Academy Awards, Tom Hanks, Saving Private Ryan. Rent the video now. 24-hour services are everywhere these days. And now there's a brand new body lotion that works for 24 hours. It's from the makers of E45. And it's called Skin Confidence. If you've got dry skin like mine, Skin Confidence will keep it moisturized for 24 hours. Use it first thing and you're laughing. <laughs> new Skin Confidence moisturizes for 24 hours a day, every day.
Susanna. Um, no, I don't know where she is. How's the shops? I think from where? Well, what time's she back? I don't know. Something all right? Are you kidding? What the hell is going on? I've just had my dad round saying he's just about stopped you from giving Harry a belt. Oh, <laughs> I told Harry off because he spilled a drink all over the place. Just like I'd tell Emma off for another child that was in my care. Oh, so my dad's lying then? I wouldn't hit Harry, I wouldn't hit either of the kids. <laughs> Look, I'm just concerned about Harry. I don't want him coming to any harm. Then I'll have a word with the suppose mother, not me. She's the one who can't even be bothered to look twice, the poor little thing. What? She couldn't care less about Harry. All she's bothered about is her precious little Emma. Don't be stupid. Oh, don't tell me you haven't noticed. Never seen anything so blatant. Harry can cry and cry, and she'll just get on with whatever she's doing and wait for me to go and see to them. Oh, but the minute Emma gives a little whimper, it's all systems go then, isn't it? You think she was any baby that matters in the whole world? Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Oh, I'm sorry to give you a fright. I shouldn't have shouted in front of him. Look. Maybe I should let my dad look after him until Susanna gets back. Try and get this sorted out. You know, I've got to be somewhere. I'm already running late. Yeah, well, you go and have your night out or whatever it is you're doing. But I'm telling you now, Jackie, this problem isn't going to go away. If you want my advice, I'd get this baby as far away from Susanna as possible. She's the one you want to be worried about, not me. <laughs> She's gonna have like, it's like watching all these beautiful people from up and down, isn't it? I'll see you five, just here, please. You okay? Yeah, fine. Are you sure? Badly said a word. Mike, I'm all right, stop going out. Oh no, look who's just come in. Are you following us or what? Oh, I don't believe it, that's put the mockers on me nice. Hi. Hiya. Hi. That's all we need. Miss Rogers is beginning to resemble some kind of bad penny. <laughs> So it was a good holiday, then? Oh, I, yeah. Plenty to do. Kids had a ball. Dad's sunny right by the beach. They loved every minute of it. And what about you? What about me? Well, did you enjoy it, or what? Yeah, it was all right. Well, was that it? Just all right? What do you want me to say, Jimmy? I enjoyed the holiday. I had a nice time, all right? How long's this lot been in here? Do it take it you still haven't told him then? No. You're gonna have to tell him sometime. I mean, it is his baby as well. You what? Who told you? Jackie. She was just worried about Mike. Well, I hope you all had a good gossip. Rach, no one's gossiping. We're just worried about you, that's all. Yeah, well, don't be. I can sort it out on my own. I don't need any of you, all right? Hiya. Hiya. Listen, I'll see you in a bit, OK? OK. Hiya. Hiya. What have you been? Oh, don't ask. I'm having a nightmare. Is Susanna here? No, I don't think so. I need a word with her. Why at all? Well, put it this way. Everything that could go wrong today has gone wrong. Ready? Go. <coughs> I win. I win by a mile. <laughs> right, who's getting the next round in? What are you doing here again? I need to see you. Have you been to the flat? No, I saw you come here before. I've been sat out in the car for ages, wondering whether or not to come over. And then you made the wrong decision. I just wanted to know if you got the watch. Mm, yeah, yeah, I did. I couldn't keep it, not now, not with everything that's turned out. Then why didn't you throw it away? Well, it's not mine to throw away, it's yours, you bought it. <laughs> Look, um, I'd really rather that you just got rid of it. Can we talk? Mark, I'm about to have a meal. Come on, Vic. Can you grab another table? Can you move all the books? I want to put the plates out. Yeah, right. Gather you went back into school then after we went away? Yeah. Still in a job then? Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? Are you actually going to spend some time at home then next year instead of signing on for everything that's going again? What? Because I'm not going to be skivvying after you for 24 hours a day. I've had enough of that to last me a lifetime. Hang on. Haven't you just had a week sunning yourself on some flaming beach in Spain? What's that got to do with it? A hell of a lot, actually. 
Cos in case you hadn't noticed, I have been stuck here cooking, cleaning and doing God knows what while you have been waited on hand and foot in some posh hotel. One week. One lousy week. And you even begrudged me that. Yeah, and you didn't even have the decency to get in touch, did you? To let me know how much you were enjoying yourself. And you want to know why? Because I didn't want to. I didn't want to be reminded of what life was like back here. I wanted to forget the old flame and loss of it. Oh, yeah? Including me, I suppose? Yes, if you want to know the truth. Can't you see, Jimmy? For once in my life, I was able to do what I wanted, when I wanted, and I didn't have to answer to anybody. Have you got any idea what that feels like? You didn't want me to go on that holiday, did you? You didn't want me anywhere near the place. No. Because I've had enough. I've had enough of washing the dishes and dropping the kids off and spending every day stacking shelves in that poxy garage till the old bloody merry-go-round starts again. Where are you going now? To pack my case. There's got to be more to life than this. Hiya. Enjoying yourself, then? Well, we were. Oh, I take it he wasn't invited. <laughs> he follows around like an overgrown lapdog. I don't know what it is. She seems to have this effect on men. I just miss you so much. Your laugh, the mess you used to make in the flat. Oh, don't. Please, Vic. Just give me another chance. That's all I'm asking. One more chance to prove I can make it work. It's never going to be any different. It is. I'll make it different. I'll change, I promise you. I don't want you to change. I'll do anything you ask. Anything, if it means you'll come home. I decided to join us, Abby. Thought you'd been in us off, you new fella, for a minute. You've only been gone about five minutes. Mike's just been telling us about Ruth. Yeah, she fell over the nurse and either, so I mean, she was in tears once you rate. Yeah. So that was it then. We had to play doctors and nurses for the rest of the day. Sounds like you're really enjoying having it around. Well, it's hard work, but it's been good, hasn't it, Rach? Yeah. yeah. Why well, do you know? If someone would have said to me a couple of weeks ago, I'd be raving on about some little kid, I'd say they were off the heads. Yeah, so was I. Hey, yeah, make a good dad, mate. You've got to be ready for it, then. Yeah, well, maybe I am. I mean, I know Josh is mine and everything, but that's different. I never really look at him as my kid. He belongs to me, Dad and Bev. So, you reckon you'd handle things differently now, then? Yeah, I'd love to have kids. Oh, I can't take any more of this. Great. I'm going home. What's wrong with her? It's all right, I'll go after her. Oh, Susanna, can I have a word? Leave me alone. You just wait one minute. I want to talk to you. What good's talking going to do? Talking's not going to help. You're going to have to stop this. You can't carry on like you are. You're going to have to tell him. I can't. Of course you can. You have to. Katie, I can't. I'm scared. Of what? Of me and Mike and a baby. How it'd be? It'd be great. Of course it would. But the things I've been thinking about him. Mike wouldn't harm a fly. You know that. There's abuse of it. It's all in your head. You love him, don't you? You know we can't get enough of him. I feel like I'm going mad. You've had a bad time. It's bound to have an effect on you. Okay. I don't deserve him. I mean, if he knew what I've been thinking, he'd be devastated. Rachel, you're having a baby. It's a whole new life for you, for both of you. Mike will be over the moon, you know he will. It doesn't make it any easier. You're going to have to tell him. You've got no choice. Oh, no. Mike will make a lovely dad. <sighs> Do you mind if I give the rest of the net a miss? I think I'll go back up to the flat. I'll come with you, eh? Make could about the coffee. I just don't want us to give up without a fight. For all those years, they've got to be worth fighting for. Mark, I've already come back twice. How many more times are you going to put us through this? Please, Vic, don't throw everything away. Every time I think I've got my life sorted out, you come along and throw it all back up in the air again. 
I need to move on. Well, you can't. I won't let you. Please, Vic. Just give me one more chance. That's all I ask. Susanna, I just want to know what's going on. Well, nothing. Well, that's not the impression I get. Listen, I don't want anything to happen to Harry. Why? Do you think I can't look after him? No, I didn't say that. You didn't have to. It's written all over your face. I just feel responsible for him. You relinquished all responsibility for Harry when you sold him to Max and me nine months ago. What? I'm sorry, it's a bit rich you coming in here and having a go at me when I'm the one coping with your baby for 24 hours a day. Hey, hang on a minute. I'm not having a go at you. Aren't you? No. Susanna, to be perfectly honest, I don't want to have anything to do with it. As far as I'm concerned, Harry is your son, not mine. But what do you expect when I'm getting all hands coming up to me and telling me that he's getting neglected? I can't just ignore it, can I? Nobody's neglecting anybody. Well, I've got to make sure that he's all right. But what about me? Do you care if I'm all right? Or am I just the resident babysitter, the giver of milk? Does anybody care about me? What's happening now? Oh, he's still got hold of her hand. She doesn't look too happy about it. Oh, they're getting up. What, both of them? Yeah, eyes down. They're coming over. <sighs> you two jumping ship? Yeah, going back up to the flat. Everything OK? Yeah, fine. I'm just going to pack some stuff. Oh, I, I thought... Vicky's coming back to me. Let's just see how it goes. One week, that's what we've said. Thanks. Be in touch. Do you think she'll be all right? Huh? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have taken it out on you. Susanna, you should have told me. I mean, if I had known you'd been this wound up, I'd have come round and helped you out. No, you're right. Harry isn't your responsibility. He's mine, just like Emma is. Yeah, I know that, but it's hard work. I'll manage. <sighs> to be honest, it was Katrina who got me all wound up. Well, I had to go at it over Harry, but... But she kind of twisted it and put the blame onto you. Oh, I'm not surprised. He's not getting along at the moment. Not really. We haven't been for a while. Well, that makes sense, then. As a consequence, I'm doing all the work at home and working here at the restaurant. I just get so tired and ratty. It's a vicious circle. Well, in future, if things start getting on top of you, you just give us a shout, OK? And we'll all rally round. I mean, me and Lindsay can easily help out in this place. That way, you'll have a little bit more time to yourself. Time you can spend at home looking after the children. <laughs> Look, Jackie, I know I'm in the wrong. I shouldn't have had a go at you over the holiday. I couldn't help myself. There's more to it than that. I like what? If you don't know now, you'll never know. Well, just tell me. Look, tell me and I'll change. It's too late, Jimmy. I've made my mind up. I'm going. I'm going where? Anywhere, as long as it's away from here. You can't. Get off me. Jackie, I don't want you to go. Sorry, Jimmy. This isn't what I want anymore. Jackie, please. Don't leave me. I'll do anything. I'm sorry. Jackie! Jackie! The end of an era? Find out when Brookside continues on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Tonight at 9, Graham Norton gets under the skin of the fashion industry. Models, designers, photographers stripped bare. Who are in fashion unzipped.
NATO has occupied large sections of Kosovo. The occupation began at dawn today. And despite tension over Russian troops who reached the capital earlier, NATO controls Pristina. British forces have disarmed retreating Serb police. German forces have entered the province from Albania. Join me for the latest from inside Kosovo. Channel 4 News next after the break. Summerfield's price check has great offers every week, like buy one, get one free on Summerfield quilted toilet tissue. Guess who's doing Italy at school? Yes! She's been. With up to £200,000 paid out every Sunday on the national game, no wonder Britain's bingo in mad. <laughs> me they whispered buy me now come to think of it they've been whispering it on and off for the past two weeks but they were lovely with shoes like these you can't help smiling with shoes like these the sun always shines with shoes like these a girl can easily do without steve arnold and his i have trouble with work commitment my life is very full right now i've loved our time together perhaps we need some space can't we be grown up grown up Nice, aren't they? Barclay card. One card, a million uses. If it now falls to me to start a fight to cut out the cancer of bent and twisted journalism in our country with the simple sword of truth and the trusty shield of traditional British fair play, so be it. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. The real Jonathan Aiken. Sunday at 8 on 4. Proving that there's a lot more to the Salvation Army than smart uniforms and tambourines, a new series looks at the work of God's Army starting tomorrow at 7.30 on 4. And what you can read in the morning you can see tonight as Alan Tyler and his guests peruse tomorrow's papers in the Sundays. That's at 11.50. Right now, the very latest Channel 4 News with Jon Snow. Nine forty, BBC Two. Join me, Sue Barker, on BBC One as I discuss the lives of a very modern royal couple, Edward and Sophie. The royal wedding interview tonight, only on BBC One. Tim Hemmons made it through to the final at Queen's. His match against Pete Sampras starts at two o'clock on BBC Two. This is BBC One. I thought you were taking her for a walk. Aren't you going to be late? All part of the master plan. Not master plan. Not letting the little runs of the world take over. What do you mean, like Steve Owen? Steve Owen, Ian Bill. And that's just for starters. Me and Phil have made a deal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No more Mr. Nice Guys. Give it a rest, will you? Sorry, it's a bit like a bear pit here in the mornings. It's all right. I'm used to the noise. Six hours of house and techno every night. <laughs> Speaking of which, morning, Matthew. Morning, Steve. I'm minus the DJ. Who are you? Word has it, there's a pretty good one living here. You want to earn a few extra bucks? No, well, thanks. I've done you enough favours for one lifetime. Oh, come on. At least consider it. I just did. Now, have you finished the tea? I've got to get back to the store. Well, if you do reconsider, you know where I am. I know what you're doing. Yeah. I'm offering you regular paid work. Cash up front. No, you're not. You're trying to keep an army. You're going to have to do better than that, Steve. Listen, you carry on like you're in some gangster movie if you want to. I'm just trying to find a DJ, all right? Well, you've had your chance. Bye. Nice meeting you. Yeah, so long. But you was broke. Not that broke. Have that. 
I feel sick. All I'm saying is you've seen quite a bit of him lately. There's no need to bite my head off. It wasn't what you said, it was the way that you said it. Quarrelling already? We haven't even left the house yet. All I'm trying to do is tell my daughter that I miss her. And he, as usual, she jumps down my throat. You do see me every night. Well, five minutes before we put the cat out and go to bed. Did anyone ask for your input? Why don't you ask him round to supper tonight? Monday's always quiet at the restaurant. I'm sure Beppe and Gianni could manage. It's my night off. Oh, come on, Gianni. Bit of give and take, eh? I'll do all the preparation early, then you can go over and help Beppe later. Yeah, but I already taped the Italy Wales game. I was going to watch it tonight. We can go round Beppe's and watch it when you're finished. Yeah, a nice beery lad's night downstairs. Does that mean you're saying yeah about Matthew? Um, well, I'll ask, but I can't guarantee he'll come. Well, of course he'll come. Why wouldn't he? I'll make him my own yellow alfredo. No, Mum, you're scaring him. Just make egg and chips or something. Chips? I don't think so. No, I know how important it is. Or maybe I could make some osso bomba. Oh, you look better, love. How's your head? Oh, it throbs a bit. Well, I'm sure it'll wear off. Yeah, well, that's what the doctor said. He said I might be out of it for a bit. No change needed. Great. Okay. See you later. Yeah. Now, have you just popped in slag off my lodgers, or did you want something? No, I came to ask if you'd pick up Courtney this afternoon. Yeah, of course I will. You working late at the health club? I might be. And what's that supposed to mean? Mum. All right, all right. I just want to know what's going on, that's all. I can't get any sense out of Phil, either. You've both been very funny since you got back from that police station. No, we haven't. And I'm still waiting for an explanation of what's happened. Peggy, it's the karaoke man. Don't you go away. I need you to bring in two crates from the back. <sighs> Shame books some more karaoke, has she? Tomorrow night. <laughs> well, remind me to stay away, will you? She's got a nasty habit of trying to get me and Phil up there to sing two little boys at two little toys. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Oh, and I thought I'd get five minutes to myself. Got rid of yours, have you? I'm sorry. Caught me. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Rob, I haven't finished with you. Where's he going? Only asked him if he'd taken caught me to the nursery yet. It's bit me head off. Oh, take the notice. You know, him and Phil, they're up to something. They've been acting peculiar all weekend. I reckon it's something to do with that scaffolding. Scaffolding? Well, scaffolding makes blokes go a bit funny, doesn't it? Morning. All right. Nina, did I hear Grant's voice down here just now? Yeah, he's helping Peggy. Where is he? Touchy. Bloody social services sticking their noses in. Oh, come on, Frank. They don't just show up out of blue. Must have gotten a tip off from someone. Well, why on earth would anybody want to do anything like that? Oh, I don't know. Someone with a grudge against Grant, maybe? Has anyone been asking questions? Nina? We're low on tonics, love. Yeah. So. They're yeah, definitely charging you. Yep. Yeah. I can't say I'm surprised. Mum, the bloke asked for it. Yeah, and you gave it to him. Very mature. All right, all right. I've heard it all before. That's your last crate. Can I go? Grant, I know you're fed up with hearing about this, but it's Courtney we've got to be thinking about. The social services, well, they're bound to be on your back now, aren't they? They already are. What do you mean? They want to pay me another visit. Don't worry about this. It's just routine. I mean, once they see how much Courtney loves you and what good care you take of her, well, they know they haven't got a case, won't they? Mm. We'll try telling Bianca Butcher that. Well, what's Bianca got to do with it? Think about it, Mum. There's nothing she'd like more than to see me lose Courtney. You're not saying Bianca... But she grasps would... me up. Yes, I am, only it ain't gonna work, is it? I'm not gonna lose Courtney. Because I'm taking control of my life again. And nothing and no one, not Bianca, not Steve Owen, not the social services. It's going to stop me. Yeah, Dr. Fonseca finally got back to me this morning. Turns out the waiting list for counselling is over a year. Ah. Oh. Well, he's, uh, he's offered to put me down for a cancellation. And you said? Well, so I'll think about it. Roy, have you uh, got Dr. Fonseca's phone number? Yeah. Well, what are you waiting for? Go on. Go on. You don't think that uh, Sonia's sore throat and that horrible noise are in any way connected to you? She says it's therapeutic. Yeah, maybe for her. What about the rest of us? All right. Hello, darling. Just come to give you the latest Ricky bulletin. Tea? No, thanks. How is he? 
bit dozy. So back to normal. Now. Ha ha, Lenny, very <laughs> funny. No, he's insisted on going back to work. Well, the doctor said he could, didn't he? Yeah. So what's the problem? Well, I thought we could have stayed at home so I could send him down the shop. <gasps> Might be <laughs> your heart. Yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> Listen, Mum, I've got to go. Mm. Uh, Sonia. Oh, a sore throat, bad temper. Is she still upset about it? Yeah, well, that'll be an understatement. She'll come round. I've got to go. I'll see you later. All right, darling. Hello. You've, um, got a visitor. Yeah. Dan. You're late. I know. Well, seeing as we're not busy, I'll overlook it. Overlook what? It's all right, Steve. I'm dealing with it. No, I don't think you are. Right, you're over an hour late. Now, I'm giving you a verbal warning. Steve? No, I'm trying to run a professional outfit here for grown-ups. I don't need you acting like some stroppy teenager. Grant, go and put the towels in the shower area. Have you finished? For the moment. Would you mind leaving staff discipline to me? I would if I thought you were capable of it. Now, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. I put a lot of time and money into this place. I want to make it a success. Now, the first step towards disaster is having someone with this kind of background working here. I hired him and I'll decide whether he gets fired or not. Annie, last week he threw out one of my clients. Then he goes and roughs up the social worker. The guy is unstable. I won't be told what to do by you or anyone else. Oh, could I just interrupt the board meeting for a minute? No. What is he got? Uh, keys to the store. Thanks. Carry on. Is that sandwich big enough for you, you little tinker? <laughs> Police are continuing to investigate the discovery of a young woman's body in a shallow grave in Epping Forest. The children who made the discovery are reported to be... Oh, yes, love. Uh, two teas, please. Pat. I told her you wouldn't want to come. You didn't. At least she wouldn't take no for an answer. Oh, please, Matthew. Otherwise, she'll stop going on about it. It's not your mum I object to, is she? Brothers, yeah, I know. They hate me. Hi, oh, Peggy. Hi, oh, darling. Uh, can I pin this up, please? Is that what it is? I might have to ask Ian. Well, I'm having karaoke at the Queen Vic. Oh, not again. What's up with the jukebox? Yeah, but the punters, they love it, don't they? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Go on, then. I'll be HP, though, so have Let's face it, they're not too keen on your boyfriends, are they? Yeah, but Tony was different. He just got out their noses. No, I won't. Just tell him I'm sorry. Well, what if I give you a solemn promise that my brothers won't be there? You're twisting my arm. <laughs> well, left side down a bit. I, uh, hear Grant was rude to you earlier on. So I've got to know. You still don't like him much, do you? Well, we've managed to call a truce. That's the best I can do, Peggy. But even though he's not your cup of tea, you wouldn't hurt him, would you? I mean, really hurt him. What's this about? Well, Courtney means the world to him. And if she was taken away, well, I think it would kill him. I mean it. I think he'd finally go off the deep end. You think it was me, didn't you? You think I'm the one that phoned the social services? Was he? I can't believe you even asked me. You think I'd do something like living under your roof? I don't want to see Courtney get taken into care. No, I had to ask. I thought you knew me. Oh. Bianca, I'm trying to sort this mess out. Someone's doing. And I won't rest easy till I find out who it is. But it wasn't me, all right? Now look, Bianca, don't go off like that. It's John. Is this the same Carol Jackson who bent my ear on the phone about staying away? No, that was a sensible Carol. This is a soppy idiot who can't get enough of you. Sorry about Sonia, not much of a welcome, eh? Listen, Carol, I was expecting it. I mean, it's textbook, isn't it? Jealous teenager, all that stuff. Sonia? I'm going out. No, you're not, darling. Dan's here. Come and say hello. Sonia! Carol, leave it. I mean, there's nothing you can say right now that's going to make her feel any better, is there? I just can't seem to do anything right. It's like she can only be happy if I'm miserable. Can I? No, no, of course not. Well, look, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Don't lose sight, are they? Okay. Now, why don't me and you slip out for a lovely little bit of lunch somewhere? Got to be somewhere decent around here, isn't it? Well, can't we go further afield? Oh, ashamed of me, eh? No, of course not. But well, you're right, I'm being daft. Well, lucky for you, I love daft women.
What are you doing? I'm talking to you. Sorry, did you say something? Are you drinking? No. What do you call this thing? Well, I call it an empty beer can. So you have been drinking, right? Exactly. I have been drinking. Your question was, are you drinking? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get a picture, Grant. You get your stuff, mate, all right? What's going on? I'm just in the middle of telling Grant I'm going to have to let him go. Only you don't have to. Because I quit. You can stick your poxy job where it hurts. See, Annie? Cheers, right, Pat? Oh, Bianca, darling. About what I said, I... What was that all about? Oh, I don't know. You're gonna have to ask her. I haven't got time for all this. Yes, darling, what can I get you? I've got an appointment this week. It's a cancellation. This week? Yeah, I go to the first session on my own. You don't have to, Ron. No, well, that's what they said at the clinic, but that, it's an assessment. Oh, I see. Well, then what? She didn't say exactly, um... Just so they see how things go and uh, not to worry about it. <laughs> 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 uh, don't worry, I'll serve this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, don't tell me she's telling them about karaoke. Come on over, the lovely singing voices. Oh, yeah, yeah. Regular male voice choir. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing anything tonight? What do you mean, apart from working? Only Johnny said something about going over to yours to watch the football. What football? The one they taped the other night. Wales. The one where Italy... Fraser! Anyway, he's going over to yours. Yeah, well, whatever you do, just don't tell him when to score, right? Oh. Who? Johnny going over to yours after work. Well, of course he is. Why? No reason. There you Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Would you like anything to drink? Yeah, I'll have a glass of mineral water and um, a glass of house red. Yeah, cheers. Please. Okay. It's just that my kids have been messed around enough. They feel like you're the last straw. Oh, lovely. It's me, is it the last straw? Well, I've been called some things before in my life. Yeah? But, uh, like what? Well, the last words my ex-wife said to me can't really be repeated in public. I don't know why I said that. Makes me sound bad, doesn't it? You told me the truth, Dan. I won't be here if you hadn't. You know, if I'd have met you 20 years ago, none of this would have happened. No regrets. No, I can't say that. If I'd met you, I wouldn't have had Bianca, Robbie, Billy, Sonia. Sonia. <laughs> a bit of pesto, I think. Yeah. What's this running around for the gym? I told you, no more running around for the likes of Steve Owen. We would look up some old mates to sink a few points. You'll get a sack. No, I won't, because I've already quit. Well, since this morning. Like we said, bruv, from now on, things are going to be different. Yeah, I know, but... Well, I just thought we could assess the situation. You're a long time dead, bro. Jamie says the police have charged Grant with criminal damage. Oh, no. Dad, look, maybe you should keep a low profile, eh? I mean, if Grant found out... You think I'm going to be broadcasting what I did? Stupid. You did what you thought was best for the sake of that child. Courtney's dad going to prison ain't what I had in mind. I'll see you later. Yes, yeah, see you. And dad, stop worrying. Yeah. Oi! What's all this about you working tonight? Who's a night off? Go to the pipe, please, then. Well, Mum's cooking his dinner for Teresa, inspecting her dodgy boyfriend. Ah, that explains it then. What? Why, Teresa was hassling me about what we were doing tonight. She don't like us around, might scare him off. Well, it's a pity we're both working, really, isn't it? The restaurant is very quiet on a Monday evening. Yeah, well, I'm sure we could be spared for an hour. And I think I can see the answer to our problem arriving just now. Jeffrey! Just the man we've been looking for. What are you having? Oh, fine, uh, please. Jeff, you know that conversation the other day we had about who does what in a restaurant? What conversation? Only we were just saying it's about time he took on a bit more responsibility. Yeah, obviously with a view to promotion. How would you feel about a bit of managerial experience? About trying your hand at running the show and running your own? Okay. Starting tonight. Oh, whoa. All right, close your eyes. Oh, no, I ain't surprised. Close, keep closed. They're closed. OK, open them. So, what do you think? Oh, you really have to ask me that. It's beautiful, I knew it would. Thanks, Dan. You know me, I'm always happy to oblige. No, not just for the dress, but for the whole day. Is she back? 
She's sulking upstairs again. Well, I told you she'd be here by the time we got back. Now, come here and give me a kiss goodbye. Did you run back to Albert Square to get away from me? <laughs> Answer your question. Yeah, it does. See ya. See ya. Not you on the job front then? No, but desperate times call for desperate measures. What's that supposed to mean? The job seekers' reviews coming up. Gentlemen, would you mind if I had a word with my daughter in law, please? In private. It's all right. I was going anyway. You were? Where? See about a job. All right, well, I'm going to go upstairs and check on them. Thanks, sir. Thanks. So, young lady, uh, you and uh, you and Peggy had a fall out of him. Well, you should ask her. Oh, that's very funny. That's exactly what she said. She reckons I've grasped Grant up to the social services. No. I mean, why would I do that? I ain't got a problem with the way he handles Courtney. Man, he's a good dad, isn't he? Lousy bloke, rotten husband, but he is a good dad. Listen, darling, I promise you I'll try and get to the bottom of this, but... In the meantime, do you think you can cut Peggy a bit of slack? I mean, she's not been upset, you know. She's upset. Bianca, it's her granddaughter. And she's terrified the social servers are going to come round and take her away. Look, I promise you, I'll try and sort it. In the meantime, do you uh, want another one in there? Thanks, Frank. <laughs> You said you were working tonight. No, Bebe's coming for me. Anyway, Jeff's there. They'll phone if they need me, won't they? Well, don't think you can lounge around in here watching telly. I told you I'm watching Italy Wells. Yeah, but you can watch that any time. I could save you the bother, tell you the score. Only if you want to die young. Me and Bebe have waited without that score all weekend. And now tonight's our night. You're ready for a new little Joe. Tell ya, tell ya. See? Mom, I tell him to go downstairs and watch it at Bebe's. He's winding you up. Take my milk tea. He promised he wouldn't be here. No, I didn't. I said I'd cover for Mum if I was needed, but I'm not. I'll go. No! Jeff, don't be wrong. Right. Won't be long. Mum's making one of her specials. That was for me. You shouldn't have. No, no, for Mrs. Tomorrow. I'll bring you some glasses. I want to watch the football. No! Anyway, why aren't you in bed? Evening all. Here, Johnny, catch. Oh, oh, mate. Oh, You're supposed uh, to be working. Yeah, well, we've got Jeff on a spot of management training, haven't we, Johnny? That's right. He's going to close up for us tonight. Is that a good idea? Yeah, we think he's up to it. Hey, mate. You don't happen to be Welsh. No. Mm -hmm. Good. Is it any Welsh? I've watched it. <laughs> yeah, you know the result? Yeah. Shh, don't speak. Mum, tell him we're not watching football. Anyway, I wanted to spend the evening with my family, meet Matthew and find out what he's all about. Okay. Come and sit down over here. Get that bottle open, Johnny. Make yourself at home, mate. Sit down and relax. She's coming, but I'm warning you, she's not in the best of moods. What's the problem? Me. You're forgetting your tone quality. You must take deeper breaths. Not you as well. Everyone's been picking on me today. It's on you. Hey! <laughs> Don't do that. Why not? I'm useless. Everyone says I am. Well, I don't say so, and I'm a musician. So what would you say to some more lessons? I ain't got no money, Mick. It's only I can afford to pay for them. We can't have a talent like yours going down the drain. You sure? I'm sure. Now, let's hear that scale again, from the top. <laughs> Donkey. They're doing it to spite me. They're being friendly to your boyfriend. Matthew, do you want to come and give us a hand in here? I'll oh, leave him alone, will you? I can't take him away in the middle of the game. Hey, hey Bo! Oh, come on, Red! Hey, Joe, I'll never get up really to school well in the morning. This is a very important part of his education, Mum, Mama. if you can't discuss the game in the playground, it'll be an outcast. We should have played Robert, shouldn't we? What's the difference with that, mate? He's good in the air. Who should play for? Norwich. Used to be Wolves. He knows his stuff, your boyfriend, doesn't he, Theresa? I hate this. Oh, right, that's it. Supper's oh, ready. You. Quick video, Joe, then off to bed. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, Matthew, when Mama says jump, you'll jump. You can watch the rest later on. No, they can't. Everything all right? Yeah, fine. Why? Just wondered, you know, how things have been over the weekend. What, you mean in here? With Grant. Last time I saw him, he was in a bit of a state. It's 
been quieter than usual. Remind me to have a go at those DeMarco boys in the morning. Why? They only left me to cash up, wash up, clean the tables and lock up all on my own. That's all. Exploiting the workers, eh? Yeah. Well, I'm going to form a little Giuseppe's branch of the Catering Workers Union. Well, you'd be the only one, wouldn't you? I mean, all the other staff are DeMarco's. <laughs> it's the principle of the thing. Oh, hello, Jamie. It's Philip. He's upstairs with Courtney. Where's Grant? He's going to visit some mates. Well, he's been gone all afternoon. Oh, I thought he was putting in a full day at the health club. You don't work there no more. Don't tell me. They sacked him. Well, as it happens, I think he resigned, you know, before he got the push. I knew him. I knew they wouldn't keep him on after that nonsense with the social services. You see, even if you're innocent, mud sticks. Yes, love, what can I get you? Man to man marking us, anyway. This is delicious, Mrs. DeMarco. Rosa. Look, it don't matter how good your strikers are. All the great teams have had a solid defence. Clean sheets do not win games, it's the goals. Yeah, no one scores like the Italians, eh? In more ways than one now. Jenny. <laughs> Teresa, bring over the pudding, will you? Come on. Come on, these boys want to finish watching the football. See? Traditional armour. Not like this new feminist nonsense. <laughs> That's not true. Don't you listen to him, Matthew. Why don't we um, skip pudding and go over to the Vic for a quick one? Oh, don't be silly, Teresa. We can't send the poor boy home hungry. But I don't want any. Yeah, well, Matthew does. It's mum's speciality. Budino a chocolate. Chocolate pudding. All right, that's great. <laughs> I'm going to put an ad in the newspaper tomorrow. Music teacher available. Sonia's my first student. Sonia? Is it my sister, Sonia? Well, I think that calls for a drink. Which I'll pay for. Peggy? I saw you in deep conversation with Alec earlier. I was wondering if everything was all right. Yeah, he was just asking after Grant. Was he? Yeah, you know, after what happened with the social services. You know, the arrest and that. Oi! I want to work with you. Of course. Is it a private work? On the contrary, my old son. I don't give a monkey's who ears, and I'm glad to chew you because it's about time you got the flavour of what your wonderful, good fearing brother is capable of. Leave me out of this. His job's got nothing to do with me. Even when he uses it to go around destroying people's lives. Frank. Do you still want to tell me what this is all about? Yes, I would love to tell you what it's all about. It's about Grant, it's about Courtney, and it's about Bianca. What, Bianca? Me? Yes, my darling, about you. Now, you may not realise this, Reverend. But she's getting the stick for something that you did. I'm sorry. Yeah, bringing grass into the social services, if you don't mind me saying so, is a little bit beyond your province, wouldn't you say? Frank, you've got no proof. I haven't grassed anyone up. Frank, listen. So you're denying it, eh? Of course I'm denying it, You Frank. know nothing about it. I can't say that, no. So you are saying that you are involved, yes? I'm saying I've got no control over what other people do, that's all. Believe it, Frank. I mean, you don't know it was him. Turn it in, Peggy. He's treating us like a bunch of donuts. I'm telling you something, Alec. I'm not going to accuse you of lying because you're a man of the cloth. But suffice to say, I won't be dropping in for eating this song in the near future. Here you are, Matthew Benedictine. That'll send you home with a smile on your face. Thank you, Mrs. DeMarco. I told you, Rosa. Rosa. <laughs> I can't believe how you keep sucking up to everyone. Well, you've got a proper big family. I've always wanted brothers and sisters, arguments in front of the telly, lots of noise. <laughs> then you've come to the right place. Where's the tape? Joe took out to put his yeah. cartoon in, didn't he? Where'd you put a tape? It's there, mate. The Look. body, no, believed the to be that of a young woman, was discovered by a group of children while they were playing in the area. Just put the tapes back in while not releasing any yet. further details about oh, the victim, on, just saw the police now. have started a house-to-house -house investigation, asking residents if they remember anything Beth, unusual she got occurring in the past sleep. few months. I already did. Exactly of course, we want to wait till the autopsy before coming to conclusions. But it's clear that the uh, the body of this young lady was buried at the spot. Uh, probably within the last few months. And, of course, we want to set the investigation in motion as quickly as we can. Good morning. Is it? What's the matter with you? Believe me, you don't want to know. Oh, of course I do, if you've got a problem. I just had a call from Dad's solicitor in New Zealand. He's been arrested. What for? Some sort of tax evasion. Back and back. He's only been out in five minutes. It's not funny. Apparently he's in the right state. All right, sorry. Let's go for a coffee, yeah? I was on the news again this morning. No, I just watched it. What should I do? I don't know. It has to keep quiet, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, look, nothing's happened. Yeah, you want to stop going on about it? You're right. They can't prove it's me. I could do a vac. I don't know what I do a vac. This is Dad's desperate. He's 
pleading with me to get the next plane out there. You're going? Well, I don't know. I'm still trying to get the health club off the ground. You can't leave him out on his own, though, can you? Yeah, and I can't leave Steve in the lurch. Now, Grant's gone. Is he? My advice would be to go and get the flight out there. This is much more important. And yeah, we'll try telling my punters that. Steve will cover for you. You'll understand. You're the last person I'd expect any support. It's not George I'm thinking of. It's you. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it. Hey, look at this. It's got to be my lucky day, isn't it? I want to place my first order. I can get a free set of towels, clock radio, or a set of saucepans. Yeah, makes you wonder where they got your name from, eh? No, hang on, and then they put me in a free prize draw, and I could win all expenses paid month on a cruise. I've never been much of a sailor. Look, last night's taking's a bit of a disaster. Yeah, I was there, remember? We need to sort out a DJ. Can't you have a word with Matt? I'll have another word. It's hardly worth opening up. But don't worry about it, Lenny. I'll sort it out. You just lighten up. Life's too short. Police have arrested two people in connection with an attack on a We're only driver. sending two women around now, yeah. If they open their mouths, I'm gonna throw them out. I'm alone there. What do you mean? Well, the times you come to me saying how sorry you are, wishing you hadn't lost your rag. I will lose my rag when I find out who grasped me out. All you've got to do is show them that you can cope and they'll leave you alone. They've got no right poking their noses in. All right, fine. Lose your temper. But don't come crying to me when they take Courtney off you. Is that it? Lecture over. We could try cleaning this place up before they visit. Hey, hold on a minute. Now, hang on, I'm not having this. You wait here while I phone your boss. How many saucepan sets did you order? Fifty, like you said. Well, I've only sent twenty. What are you doing? Hey! Why'd you let him go? I was in there with you. Well, you still should have stopped him. I can't stop him from driving away. Get this lot in there. <laughs> Maureen, do you have to? I'm only coming. Well, I'm trying to read the paper. I'll have one of those. If you finish with it. Found some poor woman buried in the woods. I mean, who'd do a thing like that? Bad enough killing her. But not letting her have a proper burial. Yeah, well, there's some sick people around, aren't there? What you change? Tough. Hey, have you read this? I think you owe me an apology. I'm sorry, my darling, you sounded lovely. No, I See so what? I'm going to sing tonight at the Vic, the karaoke. What's that face for? Irene, are you sure about this? How oh, dare you? I've got a lovely singing voice. Well, that's why Peggy's organised it. You start singing my way, everyone will need a drink. <laughs> Why don't you leave me alone? There's nothing to say we did it. What do you mean we? Oh, come on, Matt, you were there. The police are going to find out who she is, and they're going to be straight round here. Yeah, and when they do, we'll be ready for them. <laughs> otherwise, we're both going to go down for this, and I assure you, you won't be able to handle a life sentence. <laughs> It's not going to come to that, all right? Because we're going to stay calm and we're going to keep this shut. All right, Matt? Yeah. Come on. So cheer up. Like I said, we've still got nothing to worry about. Are you still speaking to me? Not if I can help it, no. Sorry about what happened. Oh, let me guess. Uh, you never wanted it to work out like that. Steve didn't give me any choice. Well, maybe you should have stood up to him then. You've forgotten the powder. Let me give you a check to tide you over. No, thanks. Won't Peggy take you back at the Vic? I thought you said I was worth more than that. Come on, darling. Here we go. 
So, what do you say? Well, social workers ain't exactly Grant's favourite people. Oh, he loses it with this one. Don't worry, I've already had a word. Thanks, Phil. I appreciate you seeing him through all this. Well, it's just a matter of keeping an eye on him until Monday. Things seem to go from bad to worse. I've never known us to have such a rough time. Sometimes I feel like giving in. Well, this place, it doesn't get any easier. Well, if you can't manage, why don't you take some extra staff on? <laughs> I wish it was that simple. <sighs> we just can't afford it, love. Got your boxes? Yeah, we've got plenty out of the bag. All right, we don't work too hard, will we? I'll try not to. Morning. Carol! I've just got to go over the and collect the rest of my stuff. Oh, you're a brave lady. I hope those boys don't drive you too crazy. <laughs> can you give me a hand? <laughs> I'm busy on the store. What, what, what about after work? I've got to sort of Leonard. Sorry. Robbie, can I have a cup of tea, please? All right. Oh, I'll get crackers. See you later. See you then. <laughs> Wish I had time to read the paper. Did you want something? I've got a problem. Oh, yeah? I've had a phone call from New Zealand. Dad's been arrested. What, they've locked him up? Tax evasion. He's desperate for me to go out there. Well, this is hardly what you call a good time, is it? I know. You know, what with Grant no longer with us. You'd rather I stay? How long will you be away? A couple of weeks. But honestly, I don't mind staying. <sighs> no, no, it's all right. I can manage. After all, it is your dad, isn't it? I tell you what, though, we better uh, sort out this gym equipment before you leave. Is that it? Well, what else do you want me to say? Well, seeing as you can manage on your own, I'll go home and book my flights. Annie, I said I'll cover for you, didn't I? I'll put a cross next to the things I think we need. Annie! I'll call you when I get back. What's happening with social services? It's none of your business. Hang on, hang on. I am Courtney's grandfather. I've got a right to know what's going on. Do you know what? I'm sick of hearing about your rights. It's a pity you weren't so attentive with your own daughter. Well, they are. Daddy's not really cross. They're sending someone over to check up on Courtney and make sure she's OK. Right. And I'll let you know what they say. That's more like it. Don't want you upset, do we, sweetheart? You still haven't sorted me out regular access. When do you want to see her? Set day every week, not just when you need babysitting. You name a day and we'll sort something out. I'll let you know. You read that? Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Stumped her in the middle of nowhere. Mm. What her poor parents must be going through. Well, that's how they catch it. Well, once they get the forensics on the way. Well, they do say that most murders are solved within the first 24 hours. Yeah, I was reading in the paper how they convicted one bloke from a grass seed they found on his sofa. I don't know how they think they get away with it. I mean, it's always a, the husband, some ex-lover or boyfriend or something. Well, when they catch him, I know what I'd do with him. You have to get in a queue first. Orange juice, please, Frank. Yeah. Look, this is a regular order. You've had it in for three months. Put that phone down. Put it down now. I'm going to put it down for you. Just get my order here today, will you? What's the matter? Everyone can hear you. You're going to give yourself a coronary. Can't you just enjoy your lunch? Those saucepans are our best seller. Yeah, but you're not going to get anywhere by screaming and shouting. All I'm trying to do is run a business. I can't let people walk all over me. That's more important to you. Look, all I want to do is make a profit. I'm not hungry. I'll see you back then. Is anybody in? No. What's the matter? We've got to leave Wolford straight away. Why? What's happened? They've got forensics on the scene. They're going to be on to us. Oh, you don't know that. Teresa, all they need is a hair or a footprint. Now, have you got any money? No. Oh, don't worry. Go upstairs and get your stuff. Well, come on, we've got to go now. I never asked to be involved with this. I'm not going anywhere. Look, don't worry, we'll be OK. What do you mean, we? I want nothing to do with this. We... You've got to come with me. Sorry, Matthew, but I can't. Now, I want you to go. 
I can't get through this without you. Just go. Teresa, please, look. Will you get out and leave Don't me alone? Don't do this to me. I only did it because I was worried about Courtney. But it's not fair on Alex to let him take the blame. Do you think I don't know that? Well, then say something. I just think it's best to let sleeping dogs lie. In other words, you are scared of Grant Mitchell. My father, the man of principle. Look, Mel, it'll all blow over. I'm sorry, Dad, but you're going to have to sort it out. Jamie, this is your lucky day. Oh, yeah? Well, I need to get my hands on some cash quickly. So I'm offering you my business for a grant. No, I don't want it. But that's, that's the stock and everything. That's worth three times that. No, thanks, mate. You, you be your own boss. I haven't got a grant. No, what are you selling it for, anyway? It doesn't matter. Forget it. I'll see you later. Steve. Um, I'm really sorry I shouldn't have lost it earlier. Yeah, I went a bit over the top myself. Mm. You OK now? Yeah, it was just seen on the news last night. Yeah, I know, I know, but uh, as long as we carry on as normal, eh? Well, that's what I was wondering. Um, any chance of getting my old DJ spot back? Yeah. Yeah, of course there is. You want to come for a drink in the Vic? I've got a couple of things to sort out first. All right. About seven, eh? Yeah. We'll sort it out then. All right. He's fast to save. Told you he was. Oh, I can't help it, though. I just have to keep going and checking on him. Listen, uh, darling, when you finish work today, why don't you leave Liam with me and you go and help your mum, eh? No, it's all right, thanks. Did I detect a slight chill in the air? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, he wasn't exactly, uh, exactly friendly with her, was you? Yeah, I was. What's the problem, eh? Come on. Sit down. When I had problems recently, you was, uh, you was there for me, weren't you? His mum's no bloke. How's your rating? I haven't met him yet. And before you say anything, Frank, I don't want him either. He'll just be the same as all the rest of them, mess her about, and she'll end up getting hurt. Would you say that uh, me and Peggy were all right for each other? There's nothing to do with it. Well, yeah, Phil and Grant didn't, and they reacted exactly the same way as you, only a damn sight worse. But it's not the same, is it? It was to them. You know what brought them around? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. I realised how much I care for Peggy and how good I was for her. Listen, maybe if you, maybe if you met this fella, right? She should go back to Alan. They're perfect for each other. But if they don't think that... Look, what if this fella is the right man for your mum? You don't want to spoil it for her, do you? I've had enough of this. Hey, 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 hey. Well, you go stomping off. I want you to know how much I appreciate everything you're doing for Peggy. We love having you here, and uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Thanks, Frank. Also, uh, don't forget, I'm still available to babysit. <laughs> oh, why are you at the shop? Terry's so clear he can manage on his own. What's he done now? Be honest with me. Have I got a nice singing voice? Yeah, well... Whenever I've heard you, you've sounded good. Mm, I told you I was going to sing at the karaoke. It was the funniest thing you've ever heard of. Well, take no notice. Mm, I tried not to, but I don't want to make a fool of myself. Well, you won't. Oh, he hates me doing anything on my own. That's why he's trying to knock my confidence. <clears throat> What's that for? Oh, it's your microphone. I'm going to put some music on. Let's have a little practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're on. <laughs> One, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, yeah, Mum, let me take that off you. Cheers, love. I thought I'd better come and give you a hand. Thanks. Oh, Matt, mate. Am I pleased to see you? You Steve about? Ah, uh, he's just gone. Do you know where? No, he didn't say. Look, are you here to ask for your job back? I was going to see about it, yeah. Ah, well, between you and me, he's a little bit desperate. I'd ask for a bit more money. Yeah? Yeah. Listen, uh, you don't mind looking after this place for us, do you? I've got a nip out. No problem. Thanks, Lee. Cheers.
Steve. I'm not going anywhere. Just give me a couple of grand, no one will ever see me again. Oh, I told you, stay calm and not to panic. But the police will think I'm guilty. You'll be in the clear. I'm just not getting through to you, am I? Huh? I'm going to explain it to you another way. But don't, Steve. You can't kill me. Someone else knows. You told someone? No, just made that up. Who is it, Matt? I don't want you to hurt me. Tell me who it is! Oh. <laughs> On the night that I passed by her window I saw the flickering shadows of love on her blind She was my woman As she deceived me I watched and went out of my mind We're in trouble. Shh. I don't want to know anymore. Steve is looking for us. He's after us right now. Why? I told him that someone else knew about Saskia. Did you say it was me? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Matthew, did you tell him it was me? No, but he'll work it out. He might not. He knows you're the only person I speak to. So come on, get your stuff for Just let me think. We haven't got time to think. You can't do anything to me. He killed Saskia. He's going to know I told you. And grab his stuff. Sorry about earlier on. I should think so. It's not worth losing you over a few saucepans. It's not just me I'm thinking of. All that stress isn't good for you. I'll try and be a bit calm. I can't say it'll work all the time. As long as you try. Why? Why? Oh, 
take anymore. Forgive me, Delilah, I just couldn't take Tell him get out of his armchair at home. He wasn't even in tune. Said, let her go. Now, you just finished your drinks. A line lady wants you out. Yeah. Push off, Obis. It was about time. No, oh, it's all right, come for. I've got something on the stove. Hope your shoes are clean. He's just on the floor. Oh, all oh, right, I'll stand there. It's all right, come in. Oh. What is it? Uh, I've been meaning to pop around and see you. Yeah? Yeah. yeah I well, was fighting at the Vic. Was Mum all right? Yeah, but some blokes are causing trouble. Well, you stay out. Look after Courtney. Skyving, and we're going to go clubbing. Please. All right. Hang on. Must be having some sort of relationship. You can't even offer me a lift to the airport. Well, it's not as if we're married or anything, is it? Listen, I've never asked anyone for anything. Yeah, so why start now? Because I care. Oh, not now, Annie, please. I want you to tell me how you feel. You know, I think we better call it a day, eh? You're ending it. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. Leave it, Annie. Is that the way all your relationships ended? I said just leave it! We made it. You did this on purpose. I swear I didn't. Come on, it'll be all right. I'll look after you. I don't want you to, Matthew. What have we done? Coming up at 7.30, we'll have all the latest local news and travel, including a police appeal for the body found in Epping Forest. So, taking us to news time, here's one you'll... I'm sure I put the money in here. Mum, it's probably the till. Can we go now, please? Yeah, I'll just have to pay him by cheque. Teresa, I want that restaurant ready for opening by the time we're back from the market. Do you hear me, Teresa? Don't wake her up yet. Teresa! I thought you wanted to leave. Matthew in? Uh, no, no, he isn't. Are you sure? Yeah, I was up pretty late. He didn't come back last night. All right. Thanks, Lenny. 
You go back to bed. Sorry. Who's there? Hello. Grandpa crying out loud. Morning. What are you doing here? Well, after last night, he didn't sit here managing too well without me. Well, at least you could have shouted up that you was down here. Yeah, yeah well, I've quit at the gym, and I? Yeah, so I heard. Yeah, it weren't for me. You've only been there two minutes. Yeah, two minutes too long. Well, what did Annie say? Look, do you want me to help out or not? Well, of course I do. All right, well, I'd better go and sort of sell her out then, hadn't I? Excuse me. So, uh, what, couldn't wait? You're looking at an official music teacher. I got my first students to prove it. Oh, nice one. Three of them from my ad in the paper. Ah, of course, for a few beers later. Only I've got a bit of a problem. Yeah? My first lessons today, I ain't got nowhere to teach, and I was wondering if I could... Look, I've got to get to work. Here's the keys. <laughs> Cheers, mate. You're a lifesaver. Seeing as you more or less live here anyway, why don't you move in and pay me rent? You serious? I don't see why not. When can I bring my things round? Whenever you want. Right now, today, before you change your mind. Well, you know where the spare room is? I can't believe this. I am getting out of next door. Hey, don't get carried away. Still haven't negotiated the rent. Good luck, love. Oh, thanks, Pat. Uh, I must admit, I'm feeling a bit, uh... Oh, you'll be fine once you get there, silly. Oh, look at the two lovebirds. Morning, Lily. Morning, Pat. We'd like a word with you both later on. We're thinking of starting up a neighbourhood watch. Leave me alone, Lily. You do know that I'm doing this just for us, don't you? Of course. I appreciate it, love. Give us another kiss for good luck, will you? Oh. If you don't mind, Neighbourhood Watch is my idea, and I'm the one what'll be organising it. Oh, come on, let's unlock and go and put the kettle on. Right. I'll report back to you later, yeah? Yeah. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Oh, it's nice to see someone in a good mood this morning. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone. But when I see you hanging about with anyone, it's not a... Right, that's it! I've had enough. Enough of what? What do you think? You're jealous. Oh, don't you flatter yourself. Just because I went down a storm at the karaoke, I would have won if it hadn't been for that punch-up. You made sure I didn't have a go. I don't know what your problem is. It just so happens I've got the better voice. Oh, cut off. <laughs> it's not unusual to be mad with anyone. What's she are? Annie's outside. Give me your tea. Oh, Peggy. I'll make you another one. You were right. I should have stood up to Steve. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better. If you stop snarling for a minute, I've got a proposition to make sure. No, I'm listening. Thing is, I'm about to go to New Zealand. I'd rather do this in private. Yeah, well, I'm only busy all morning. I'll call back after lunch. All right. I'll see, see you then. Please, Mum. Well, what did Annie want? Nothing. Didn't look like that to me. Look, I beg again, anyway. You sure you don't want me there when the social workers arrive? I should be my charming self. Yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about. Save your worries, whoever it was that grasped me up. Well, it definitely wasn't Bianca. Yeah, well, I'll find out whoever it was sooner or later. Theresa! She won't have overslept on purpose. You always stick up for her. That's because you always go over the top. She's meant to have the restaurant ready. We're supposed to run a business, aren't we? Annie. Sorry, the door was open. Did you get everything sorted? Yeah, that's why I popped in. I'm, I'm going to go out there. Good for you. All right. Take care, Annie. Thanks, Johnny. Look after yourself. Go out where? Oh, there's nothing. Well, then you can tell me about it, can't Later, you? Later, Mum. I won't have a word with Teresa. Can I get you a cup of tea or anything? We had one before we set off, thanks. Well, take a seat. Mr. Mitchell, I know you and my colleague didn't exactly hit it off the other day. No, we didn't, So Just ask your questions and then leave us alone. I think you and I need to get a few things straight. Like what? When you read about terrible things happening to kids, don't you think, where were social services? Yeah, probably. 
So you want us to investigate every complaint except this one? Courtney's fine. There's no need for you to be here. Which is what I get told at every house I walk into. And no, I'm not accusing you of anything. Good. But I am going to do my job. Look, look, I'm sorry. Look. Can we just start again, yeah? Did Theresa stay at your place last night? No. Where's Matthew? Oh, I don't know. Listen, my sister's gone missing. So it's nothing to do with me. Look, we've already had Steve waking us up looking for what him. For? He didn't say. You'll have to ask him yourself. <laughs> Look, I've just been in Matthew's room and all his stuff's gone. He hasn't done a bunk? Something happened at the club last night, mate. I went out to get some booze. When I got back, Matt had gone. Why would Matt go off without saying anything? I don't know. But doesn't he owe us a month's rent? Well, I'm sorry about what happened with Frank. I'm sure it'll all blow over. Dad, you're putting me in an impossible position. How can I be the local vicar if people don't trust me? I might as well pack up and leave. I'm going to have to own up, aren't I? Yep. And the sooner the better. Dorothy! What is it now? This lady needs some change. Yes, well, I'll be with her in a minute. She'll be with you in a minute. Excuse me. He's coming at 12.30 for this. You won't have it ready. That is why I am trying to put it in the dryer. Oh, look out. You've dropped a sock. I'm getting a bit peckish. Are we going to have some lunch soon? I'm popping out. Here's your change. What for? I'll bring you back a sandwich. Well, I'll, I'll come with you. Oh, no, we can't leave the place unattended. I won't be long. Have you been looking for Matthew? Yeah, why? I can't find Theresa now. Has Matthew gone missing? <laughs> Looks like it. He's just gone with him, then. Did, uh... Did Theresa say anything to anyone? Not a word. Now, what I don't understand is why. It's only the other day we had Matthew round for a meal. Yeah, come on. You know what teenagers are like. You let me know the minute you hear anything, all right? It's just, um... I booked Matthew to DJ three nights this week. He's gonna be no fit state to DJ for anyone when I get my hands on him, mate. I have to get out of that shop. I know exactly how you feel. Terry thinks he's so clever, I'll end up throttling him. I'd swap him for Lily any day of the week. Do I need a large drink? What do you have in? Gin and tonic? Please. Cheers, right. Um, I don't know if this is a good time to mention it. Come on. Well, I'm thinking of starting up a neighbourhood watch again. Oh, if it gets me out of the house, put my name down. Right, I will. Yes, ladies. Uh, I'll have a gin and tonic, an orange juice, and a tuna sandwich to take away. Ta. If Grant needs assistance, you're usually available. All he has to do is ask. Then why was Courtney left with Jamie? He's family. We thought he could manage. But Courtney was left with Jamie rather a lot. Well, we were still getting over her mother's death. It must be a difficult time. Yes, it is. I can't win. If I own up, I'm in trouble with Grant. If I don't, then it's Alex. You're not even listening. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm worried about Teresa. Gianni's trying to find her. Oh, thanks very much. All you've got to do is tell Grant you were thinking about Courtney. Oh, he won't see it that way. Well, when you explain, he might even thank you. Grant Mitchell? Have you seen him in a temper? Oh, where have you been? Where's Teresa? So, how does Pat feel about not having a physical relationship? <clears throat> well, she's always said she doesn't mind. But you're not so sure. I'm uh, worried that one day she may seek satisfaction elsewhere. Have these fears increased recently? Yeah. Um, I suppose it's from talking to my new business partner. He, um, he just got married. So no doubt that reflects upon yourself and Pat. Well, yeah, something like that. Why have you come to see me now, Roy? Well, I, I would like Pat and me to have a more normal... Uh, a sexual relationship. Well, if you got married two and a half years ago, why haven't you sought assistance before? Well, it's, it's this talk about Viagra. I, I took a couple of tablets and mm -hmm. it, well, it had an effect. Oh, okay. So, we know why you're here. Now, can you tell me what happened 28 years ago? Well, I had a family bereavement. Obviously, a traumatic experience. Yeah, it was my first wife. It, look, it's not something I like talking about. Well, 
if we're going to find out what the problem is. What's the point? We, we know what the problem is. Look, let's take a breather and I'll sort us out some coffee. Yeah, you can put my name down. Sounds like fun. It ain't supposed to be fun, Josie. It's a serious business, catching criminals. I remember that, Doc. See you later. Oh, I ought to be getting back. Oh, so ought I. I shouldn't have left Lily so long. Mm -hmm. So, we don't good to be left on our own. Yes, you're probably right. The trouble is, I'm about to go out and leave her again. Oh, I'm not waiting all day for you. Here you are. You close the shop. What if I'm standing here holding the keys? I'd better get going by Irene, Terry. You always have to show me up. I'm trying to work out what it is I've done wrong. We both know what this is about. Yeah, you're jealous because I'm a better singer. No, it's about you always trying to control me. Oh, uh, really? Mm, that business with the karaoke, you can't bear the thought of me doing something on my own. You mean you can't bear the idea of us doing something together? I offered to do a duet with you, you shut me out. I'm sick of you trying to run my life for me, I've had enough. You seem to forget I've given up a lot for this marriage. And maybe you shouldn't have bothered. Well, maybe I won't in future. Frank, he's yeah. gone in. Yeah, he's out of back door, but I've got to tell you this is not a good sign. He won't mind, it's important. I'm not looking forward to this. You're doing the right thing. Oh, it's all right for you. You're a priest. Annie, look, can you give me half an hour? I'm waiting to see someone. I'm trying to do you a favour here, Brian. I'll come and find you as soon as I'm done here. Well, don't be too long. I'm flying to New Zealand tonight. So, are you finished? Yes. Well, can you give me a verdict? I'd say there have been one or two minor lapses, but that's understandable in the circumstances. I'm satisfied it won't happen again. Thank you. I can't tell you what a way off my mind it is. I'm sorry we didn't get off to such a great start. Don't worry, I'm used to it. You will be hearing from us officially. So, is it over now? That's not for me to say. Where on earth have you been? I brought you a nice tuna sandwich. You've been over an hour. That man came for his service wash. It wasn't ready. He went berserk. The dryer on the end has packed up, and I've run out of change. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to leave you a little longer. You will not. I've got an appointment with the optician. It was you what booked it. Well, I can't cope on my own. Oh, you'll be fine. I'll see you later. Dorothy, you come back here now. Can't have been easy for you when your wife died. All of a sudden, I was on my own with Barry to bring up. It was always difficult. I couldn't control him. What's your relationship like now? It's fine. I'm sorry, but I can't see how any of this is relevant. Well, something from that period caused the problem. Look, can we forget about the cause and try and solve it? I think we've gone as far as we can today, Roy. You've done really well. Oh. Uh, right, so, um... Well, um... What happens next? Um, do we bring Pat in and, and chat things through? How does she feel about counselling? Well, she's apprehensive because she's embarrassed. As long as it's what she really wants. Yeah, deep down it is. Uh, so, um, do I make an appointment for the two of us? Yep, if you have a word at reception. Right. Well, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> and next time, I think we need to examine your past again more closely with Pat. Yeah, fine. Yep, look forward to seeing you both soon. Johnny told me about trays are going missing. Uh, I just wondered if there's anything I could do. Why, did Matthew say something to you? No, not a word. It's just that he's, he's meant to be DJing for me tonight. No, there is no point in me calling my old contact. Trays is 19. She can do what she wants. Uh, Steve's come by to see if he can help. You right, James? Cheers, Steve. But I'm having a word with him, will you? There's nothing the police can do. I don't even bother looking. Yeah, I can't see him taking it too seriously himself. Please, Beppe, it's got to be worth a try. All right, there's a guy I went to Hendon with. He's a DS there. I'll give him a bell. And I'll try Matthew's place again. Yeah. I'll stay by the phone, Mum, right? So you've got no idea where they might have gone? Could be anywhere by now, innit? Yeah. I'll get her and he's off to New Zealand, isn't she? And she told you about it then? Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. He's always been a bit dodgy, innit? Mm. But I am surprised how bad she's taken it. Yeah, she's a tough lady. She'll be fine. I don't know, mate. I've never seen her this upset. If you ask me, she's going to want all your support from now on. I can't believe it's all over. It's like being given a new start. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, can I have a word? Of course you can. You never said what you came around for last night. I've got a confession to make. It was me who found the social services. You? The only reason I did it, Grant, is because I was worried about Courtney. 
So you went beyond my back telling lies? I saw one or two things and I thought I had to do something. Have you any idea of the grief you've caused my family? Yeah. And I'm sorry. Sorry? I mean, if there was a problem with Corny, it's only because we're still getting over Tiffany's death. Hang on a minute, Grant. Just keep out of this. You just said yourself if there was a problem. So there was one, wasn't there? Yeah, you didn't have to go ringing the social services, though. But my dad saw something. For all he knew, anything could have been going on. Then why didn't he come to me? Look at you now. You're not exactly approachable, are you? Look, he said he'd done it. Please, just let's leave it at that. Thanks. Uh, no, Grant. Oh, Steve. So the weird didn't work out with Grant. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know. What do you do? What do you do? Walk out? Yeah. Save me firing him. Firing him? You were going to fire him? Well, he wasn't up to the job, you know. Excuse me, Frank. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah, speaking. Um, let me get in a club and I'll call you back, all right? All right. I told you I need not to say anything. Oh, he didn't want to, I made him. Is George in a lot of trouble? No, he'll be fine. I'm really pleased you're going to be there for him. Why's that? We've not always had the closest of relationships. Uh, it's really strange. I've never heard him like that before. Regardless of what happened, give him my best wishes. Yeah, thanks, Rosa. Take care, eh? Yeah, and you, little one. Annie. Look, I I'm sorry about it. I have one or two problems to sort out. No, don't worry about it. Look, should we get somewhere more private? Yeah. Hey, lads, is he looking worried behind that counter? You should be buying your nails because the boy is back in town. Sorry. Uh, Sarah, hang on. Look, I just had a bet to cheer myself up because your mother's been going on at me. Well, that's no excuse. Well, you know, she's been going on about the karaoke. Yeah, well, so she should. You're horrible to her. Look, if you go and tell her in the mood she's in... Look, Sarah, please. Oh, well, I suppose I could be persuaded. So there was 250 quid drawn out last night? Yeah. Yeah, it's an employee. I've given him the card to the current account. Mm. Uh, look, so I can keep an eye on things, can you send me weekly statements of how much is being drawn out? And from where? Great. OK. Thanks very much. All right, that, that sounded a lot better. Look, I know it's boring doing scales, but once you cracked it, you could play anything. I soon come. Is it you making all that racket? No, it's not. I, I can't tell myself. Can't you tell him to pack it in? I'm giving a saxophone lesson. I started teaching music again. Since when? I thought I'd get it off the ground before I said anything. It's my first lesson. What's all your stuff doing in there? That's another thing I've got to tell you. I'm moving into Fred's. Oh, nice of you to let me know. There isn't anything else you forgot to mention. You didn't get married by any chance this morning. Give huh? me five minutes, Mum. Oh, no, it's all right. I'll see you around sometime. Irene, I, I've been thinking while I was out, I owe you an apology. Yes, you do. I'm sorry about the karaoke. I shouldn't have put you off like that. And what about you always trying to control me? Yeah, I'm sorry about that too. I, I'll try and be more considerate in the future. It's more like it. Apology accepted. Thank you, darling. Um, to make amends, why don't I take us out for a meal tomorrow night? Sounds lovely, Terry. Thank you. Right. Uh, whiskey and coke, please, Peggy. Better make that a large one. Oh, one of those days, eh? You could say that. Oh, excuse me, I'm not you. Hello, Queen Vic. Oh, hello, Michael. No, no, love, I haven't seen him. Tell you what, hold on a minute, just a minute. Hey, have you seen Matthew today? No, why? Oh, that's his father, Michael. He's trying to find him. Um, listen, I'm seeing him later. Do you mind if I have a word? Yeah, of course, come see him. Yeah, I'll 
Michael. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Steve, Matthew's boss. No, he's fine. Yeah. Oh, listen. Don't worry, mate. You know what teenagers are like when it comes to keeping in touch. <laughs> I was with him last night, as it goes. Yeah, he was DJing for me at the club. Mm. All right. All right, I'll get him to give you a ring. Bye. Hi. Everything all right? Yeah. Between me and you, I think Matthew's gone off with Teresa. Oh, really? Good luck to him, I reckon. Yeah, come and have that to you, mate. Now, you stay there, and we'll do the duvet. I see you're managing. Uh, well, a bit scary to begin with, but being thrown in at the deep end has shown me what I've been missing. What's the matter? I've got to see a specialist. They think I've got glaucoma. It might not be that. It's always bound to be this time. They must have made a mistake last year. Oh, Dorothy, don't think the worst. Well, I've got to, with my ill. I think I'll sue. Bye. <laughs> It's a nice surprise. Thought I brought you home. How are Ian's kids? Fine. How'd it go? Yeah, very well. It's, uh, it was awkward to start with. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, she uh, she thinks we'll get it sorted. She's looking forward to meeting you. Good. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've, uh, I've managed to get an appointment for next week. I'm seeing her next week? Yeah, it's just to chat things through. Yeah, but I thought she'd be seeing you for a while first. Don't worry. Come on, you're going to be fine. Yeah, of course I will. You're very nice ladies. It's all very relaxing, are we? Just sat and talked, really. It was nothing. Had a cup of coffee. Yeah, it was, I was quite surprised, really. It wasn't the best way for her to find out. She'll come round. You don't know my mum. To me and you, flatmates. Flatmates. And to beer and pizza tonight. And many more of them. Right, I think I'm ready to order now. And I'll get that. Yo. Come in. Oh, yeah. Um, can I have one 12 inch Hawaiian with extra mushrooms and pepperoni? Yeah. I'll dish up in the kitchen. Um, no. <laughs> you, you better cancel that. Just to say thank you for taking him in. Can you get the cutlery? No, you really shouldn't have bothered. Annie. You got time for a farewell drink? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah, let me take that. Thanks. Listen, uh, I'm really sorry about last night. Don't worry about it. No, no, I shouldn't have lost it like that, you know. I've, just thought I've got so much going on at the moment. To be honest, you were right to end it. It was never going to work. Perhaps when I get things straight again, eh? Are you getting me this drink or not? <sighs> I was worried it might affect our business relationship. No, there's no danger of that. I'm really going to miss you, Annie. You're the only one around here I can talk to. Bam. Let me make you a sandwich. I couldn't eat anything. Wait till I get my hands like Matthew. Is that what this is about? Have you had a go at him? No, of course not, Mum. You saw me the other night. I was nice as pie with him. To steal money from us. She must be in real trouble. It's all right, Mum. We'll find her, I promise you. What could be so bad that she couldn't tell us? Have a safe flight. Mm -hmm. I'll see you when you get back. Yeah, thanks. You'll kind of be fine. What's he doing here? There's nothing left for me around here anymore. I'm going to stay out in New Zealand. So what does, what's that got to do with him? You said you didn't want our relationship to interfere with the business. Well, it won't. Meet your new partner in the health club, Grant Mitchell. Good luck. I think you'll need it. He's road, please. You gotta eat something, huh? I'll get it. Okay. Hello. Nikki, who is it? Teresa. Hi, this is 
I'll put that in the microwave for you. Sorry? Well, it must be stone cold now. Oh, uh, no. Actually, I'm not all hungry. I've noticed. Well, change your mind. Hello? Claudia. Look, calm down. Yeah, I, I can't understand a word you say. Murdered. Saskia. Yeah, that's terrible. And they definitely think it's her. <coughs> all right, all right. I'll see you at the club when you get there, OK? Calm down. I know, but saying sorry isn't going to help. Look, look, Teresa, where are you? What can't you say? Look, Jenny wants a word. Oh, Teresa, Mum's here. Teresa! Teresa! Why didn't you call me straight away? She didn't want to talk to you. All right, what did she say, darling? That she was OK. She must have said more than that. Well, not really. Mum, she was only on the phone a couple of minutes. <sighs> she just said to tell you she was fine. People that are fine don't suddenly run away from home. And that you weren't to worry. Worry? What are you shouting at me for? You should have called me. You were in the bar. But I said I was going to put you on. She hung up. It's not her fault, Mum. Heading for the Vic? Yeah, I thought I'd better get it over and done with. Look, if you don't hear from me in the next hour or so, check the local hospitals, will you? Good luck. She's going to want to know where I raised the money for this partnership. Yeah, I had thought of that. And I'm going to have to tell her. In which case, you better tell the doctors I'll be following you in. See you later. See you later. I should have realised something was wrong. You went to know what Theresa was up to that night, were you? I just should have, that's all. Jenny, what's going on? Why is all this happening to us? I don't know. I've got to get ready for school. Nikki, don't worry about nothing. We'll sort it all out, right? Hey, Grant. You're up bright and early. Hey, listen, my old son, I, uh, I want to thank you for helping out downstairs in the Vic the other night. It meant a lot to Peggy. What's meant a lot to me? I was just saying how glad we are that, uh, that Grant's around. Oh, yeah. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't turned up like you did. And mind you, I've been thinking, now you... Mum, I've got something to tell you. Uh, I didn't know this was going to turn up. What? The health club. Annie wants to give you old job back. She's offered me her shares in the business. What? And I've said, yeah. You're going back to the health club? Mum, I'll be running the place now. We'll help me to run it, and no one can push me around. Yeah, but what about the Vic? Mum, this is a real opportunity for me. Whereas this is someone just to hang your hat until something better comes oh, along. It's not like that. Well, it looks that way to me. You've only been back five minutes. I know. Anyway, how can you afford to buy into a place like that? A raised loan. Well, just like that. Well, not exactly. Phil's put up the arches as collateral. Oh, the two of you are in on it. Oh, <laughs> that cosy. We're not in on anything, Mum. This is business. Well, don't let me stand in your way, cos it all looks cut and dry to me, eh, Frank? It seems that way you're still in your way. Mum! No, I'm sorry, Graham. I don't have time to discuss this anymore. I've got a pub to open. Well, she took that well. What do you blame her? I mean, she's been over the moon for the last couple of days because you've been here helping her. Well, it wouldn't be easy for her. Didn't stop you, though, did it? I saw the phone call from Teresa. And? She's OK. Well, did she say where she was? Do you think I'll be standing there talking to you if she had? What about Matt? What about him? Are you sure you don't know something about this? What do you mean? What are all these questions, all this stuff about Matthew? You seem very bothered about him. He works on me, that's all. Exactly. It's not as if his family, is it? Yeah, but, you know, ever since his parents left, I... I feel kind of responsible for it. We work well together. What, you mean like you and Annie did? Yeah. So you saw where she's gone then? She was a good businesswoman. It was more than that. You see, a lot of people misunderstood Annie. She's a good person. Yeah, well, I'm just beginning to realise that myself. Hello? She's feeling like I'm staying. 
stabbing him in the back. Are you just going to split your mum and Alan up? I ain't been doing much to get them back together, have I? Should you be trying to? I've just gotten so well with Alan. I thought him and my mum would be together forever. It just feels a bit weird. Look, do you want to meet later for lunch? We can have a proper chat. Yeah, that'd be nice. I've got some of my minds in the store anyway. See you later. See ya. Right, Pat. Lovely. Yeah. Come on, Roy. Yeah, okay. yeah thanks. Um, <clears throat> that's the counsellor on the phone. Um, she was asking, uh, can we make next week's session half an hour earlier? Uh, seems she has to be somewhere that afternoon and, uh, well, she doesn't want to rush things, not with it being your first time and that. So... Yeah. Is that OK? Yeah, fine by me. Have you priced that up yet? Well, they only came in this morning. I can't do three things at once, Ian. Yeah, well, maybe if you got yourself organised. Just finish unpacking that for me, Jamie, will you? I'm getting worried about him. He's fine. Are you sure? He's not pulling his weight. Well, if he's not, I'll deal with it. Don't worry. Last night's taken, he's got to go to the bank. Oh, yes, sir. On my way, sir. Thank you. Good to see somebody bossing Ian about for a change. Mm. He needs to learn to relax, how to take a rest. Oh, when you find out how to get him to do that. Bottle it, will you, love? I could do with some of the same sort of treatment for Roy. Do you know what? I might have just the thing. Yeah? I've just ordered this box of aromatherapy candles. Aroma what? Well, like, they release all these relaxing smells. To soothe the spirit and calm the soul. I might use these on Ian. Well, let me know if they work, love. I'll take a box. So is it your birthday? No. His birthday? It must just be a nice thought. It matters, doesn't it, the little things they can. Mm. Dad! Oh, romance is obviously in the air this morning. See yeah. ya. What are you doing here? Well, I've come to see you. Can I grab these on the way? What do you reckon? Oh, look, well, I'm working. You can still talk to me while you're pouring tea and coffee, can't you? Now, you've got to take these off, you know what? Yeah, cheers. Right, can I have a cup of coffee and egg roll, please, to take out? So, we're celebrating, say? No, um, Ricky, this is Dan. Ricky, as in, uh, Ricky and Bianca? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you, mate. Carol tells me you're a bit of a mechanic. Do you want me to take over for a bit, Mum? No, no, you're all right. Um, there's someone I'd like you to meet, love. Show me my next Nearly, nearly. Thank you. Um, I said grapefruit. Oh, sorry, sorry. Frank, hmm. is Peggy all right? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. She just seems to be distracted, that's all. Oh, yeah, well, well. <sighs> Thanks. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Nina can come in later, so we won't be short staffed. Oh, well, that's good news, doesn't it? Yeah, isn't it? It's nice to have someone around you can count on. Look, Peggy, yeah, I'm not trying to do finger on, but. Good, then don't. Because we've got to manage somehow. I always thought they'd be like that. Who? My mum and Alan, you know. Grow old together. It just feels like nothing ever lasts. Don't keep on. I'll be bound to stay single forever. Maybe you won't have much choice. Cow. <laughs> Everything all right? How do you mean? Well, certainly that you seemed a bit quiet ever since I mentioned the counselling session. It's been a busy morning, that's all. OK. Look, Roy, what we've got, you and me, it's special. This isn't just about sex now. I've told you that. And what is it about then? Well, it's about you and me having a full relationship. We could be getting into a load of problems over this. Yeah, or we could be heading for the best time of our lives. And that's a risk worth taking, is it? Definitely. I'll have a cup of tea to take out, please, Carol. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll second thoughts. I'll have it in. What are you doing here? Well, I caught us in the crash and I thought I'd take a break from the gym. Vic's out of the question for a drink, I suppose. Uh, something like that, yeah. No need to ask her mum took the news then. I told her about you putting up the arches. Right. So, as far as she's concerned, we both stabbed her in the back. It's not like that, is it? Will you try to know that then? Well, maybe I will. I mean, this is too important, Grant. It's not just about the gym, is it? This is everything we talked about. A fresh start. And mum's got to understand that. I read it in the paper that they found a body in the woods, but, uh... I really had no idea. Why do they think it was Saskia? Dental records. That's how they identified her. She must have been down there buried like that. So if they know it's her, then why 
daddy want you to go to the police station? She was still wearing her ankle bracelet. A what? An ankle thing, you know. They want me to go and identify it. Oh, she still had it on. She always used to wear it. If I see that, then I really will believe that it's her. Will you come with me? Please, Steve. Next to my family, you're the one person in the world that was really close to her. I can't go on my own. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Who would want to, to kill her? Yeah, there's not an ounce of farming, Robbie. Two, please. Yeah, the fresh pot's brewing. Just gives two minutes to life. Look, Carol, how about if I make the rest of the clan? What do you mean now? Well, why not? Because I'm supposed to be working, not hosting family get together. So I'd better get on with my boss. Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, managing fine. If we run out of tea and coffee? No, kettle's on. The fresh lot will be ready in a minute. Well, if you had fresh on the go, the customers wouldn't have to wait. Yeah, right. Mum, are you going to continue ignoring me? I'm busy. I know what you're thinking, that, that me and Grant are... Uh, well, we turned our backs on. If Grant had seen sense, he'd have realised his future was here at the Vic. He just wants to move on. There's worse places than here to work, and if you ask me, he's about to find out. All Grant's done over the last few years is coasted. And that's as much your fault as it is his. Mine? You made everything so easy for him, haven't you? And me as well. I mean, you're always there for the pair of us. Well, of course I am. I'm a mother, and I... When Grant quit the gym, never let him lie for a minute, did you? Never let him see if he could actually stand on his own two feet for a change. And before you say anything, I'm trying to pay you a compliment there, believe it or not. Well, it doesn't sound like that to me. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose it does. Mum, Grant's not turning his back on you. He's just trying to do something on his own for a change. And you've got to give him a chance to have a go. All I'm saying is Dan's OK. Well, he's going to be all sweetness and like with you, isn't he? He's just trying to please Mum. I'm telling you, B, he's just an ordinary bloke like me. I thought you said he was OK. Ricky liked him. When did Ricky meet him? This morning in the cab. So why didn't he come and tell me? Don't be in such a rush. You've met the easy ones so far. Sonia can be a right little madam. And Bianca... Well, she's just Bianca. Yeah, but I thought you said she was coming around to the idea of me and you. Well, yeah, she's starting to, but... Bianca needs more time. You sure it ain't you that needs more time? You know this isn't an easy situation. Yeah, but Robbie had no problem with it. No. And, and not in Ricky. So, like I said, maybe it's you who's got the real problems. Yeah, well, I've just split from my husband, haven't I? Carol, that was nothing to do with me. Yeah, I know, and I want them to take that on board before I start showing you around. Otherwise, they're going to start blaming you for things that weren't even your fault. Yeah, but don't you understand? The longer I keep away, the more it's going to look like I did have something to do with it all. I know how difficult my kids can be. You know, there is another explanation for this. Which is? Well, maybe in your mind it's ain't such a big deal after all. What? Yeah, the, the, the more I come to think about it, maybe it ain't really worth bothering the kids with. Because I'm telling you, to me, you just don't seem serious about us. You know that's not true. I hope not, Carol. Or both of us are wasting their time. Yeah. I think it looked really nice on you. You shouldn't get away with something like this. Why not? It's not a bit young. You're not 103, are you? I'm no spring chicken, either. So what's the special occasion? Terry's taking me out for dinner. Oh, oh. really nice. I don't even care if it's fish and chips from the back of a van. Terry's taking me out, that's enough. Yeah, it's sweet when they do things like that, isn't it? Not spare of the moment stuff. <laughs> Just what your mum said earlier on. Yeah, not that I'd know. Can't remember the last time Ricky did anything spontaneous. There he is now. What? Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? Well, that you'd met Dan, according to Robbie. You and him got on like an ass on fire. He's all right. So you've joined the fan club as well, then, have you? I'm just telling you what happened. I heard he brought my mum some flowers. So? Bit of a creep, then, is he? Well, it could be he's just thoughtful, of course. So why didn't you come and get me so I could make my own mind up about him? Well, I did ask you, Mum. And? And she said, no, not yet. Why not? Well, I don't know. Maybe she thought you'd scare him off or something. Look, he might be still over the cafe if you fancy checking him out yourself. If my mum wants me to meet her new boyfriend, she can ask me herself. I got this for Courtney. 
you know, I've been worried sick since that social worker came round. I meant to give it to you earlier, but we sort of got off track. Well, I've just had a call, and they're not taking any further action over called it. Well, that's a relief. Cup of tea to celebrate. Yeah, well, I can't stay long. I've left Frank in charge of the Vic. Grant, these plans of yours, you know, all this with the club, it's not just your way of getting back at Steve, is it? No, of course not. Because there's easier ways of doing it than getting into debt. What, like a dark alley late at night, that sort of thing? No, I don't mean that. Mum, it's something that I want to do. And it's not because I'm unhappy at the Vic. Well, Phil reckons I make things too easy for you. And we've both let things slip over the last year or so. You do know Phil's going to take action to gain access to Ben, didn't you? No, I didn't. He should have told me that. Yeah, well, maybe if you'd given him a chance to get a word in edgeways this morning. Oh, yeah, fair point. You know, you must be borrowing a lot of money to buy into this gym. I am. Well, how come I don't help you out a bit? Mum, I'm supposed to be Look, standing on my own two feet, aren't I? I'm giving you that money. What I mean is, why didn't you borrow it from me? I mean, there's no point in you paying interest to the bank when you can borrow it from me now, is there? Oh, yeah. I'm doing it again, and I? OK, then. Hmm? Mm, no, no. I like these ones better. <laughs> Can't believe I've gone to this much trouble. Yeah. Silly, really. Yeah, it was good to see Happy again. I thought romantic meals with Terry were a thing of the past. Yeah. Still don't know why he arranged it. Yeah, well, maybe he just felt guilty. You know, after the karaoke business and all that. <laughs> so he should do. He's never encouraged me. Said I was any good. Look, Mum, I haven't always been his biggest fan. <gasps> but maybe you should give him another chance. He has changed, you know. Oh, well, maybe, with his drinking and his gambling. But sometimes I wonder whether he ever really listens to me. If he cares. Truth is, I don't know if I made a mistake in marrying Terry. Oh, you don't say that. No. Look, you just go out and enjoy your meal tonight and forget about the karaoke and the shop and me. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you. Come here. <laughs> mm. oh. Where's Jamie? Oh, he's gone. Already? Oh, well, I dragged him in early this morning. Why? Just for the sake of it. Sorry. Look, am I looking after this place? You're managing it. Good. So how long have you been gone then? Ian. I'm not interfering. I, I just don't like you being here on your own, that's all. Yeah, well, at least I don't have to deal with you. Fair enough. I didn't mean that. But this is exactly what I've been going on about. Ian, I mean, you've got to let go. Let someone else take the strain for a while. It's become a way of life, that's all. Yeah, well, there are different ways of living your life. Now, I always thought that if, if I wanted to make something of myself, then I had to do it on my own. But I couldn't rely on anyone. Well, you can count on me. Just give me a chance to prove it. No, it's not personal. It's... I don't know. It's, it's become a habit not relaxing. Close the doors and pull down the blinds. What? I'm going to do something to relax you. What well, now? Management decision. We are closing early. I've just found that missing persons online. And? Well, I've given them a description. Now we just have to be patient. Patient? I don't start all that. Look, I said I was sorry about earlier on. I don't think it's me you should be apologising to. Yours OK? Oh, perfect. You left a bit. Mm. Do you mind? Mm. I really appreciate this, Terry. What's the point of working for yourself if you can't have the old treat now and again? Mm. Would you recognise that? It's a song from the karaoke the other night. I'm not saying a word. Oh, well, you don't need to. I probably wouldn't have been any good anyway. You'd have been had up under the trade's descriptions, Act. You eating that roll? What happens now? How does that feel? I don't know. Was it relaxing? Oh, sort of. Yeah, it was quite nice, actually. Keep your eyes closed. Mm. It'll help. Yeah, it is quite relaxing. Sexy, too. Stop it. I'm quite good at this. I had a good teacher. Mm. So someone taught you to do this? Certainly did. Mm. Good 
capital powers of deduction amaze me here. So you used to do this for him, did you? Once he showed me how. Mm. He's tensing up again. So when was this, then? Ow! That hurt! Yeah, it was meant to. I thought it was supposed to be relaxing. Yeah, that wasn't part of the massage. That's my way of telling you to stop being such an idiot. Okay. It was a long time ago. Okay, okay. So what was his name, then? And thanks for talking to Mum for us. Softened her up a bit, didn't it? Look at him. The gym's still open and he's off out on a date. That's something else that's going to have to change. You're really up for this, aren't you? Definitely. This isn't about getting even with Steve-O, and I must admit, he's a bit of a bonus. Yeah, well, be careful. He said to Ed now, bruv, he ain't going to last five minutes. I was a bit worried about wearing this. Wasn't really sure if it's my colour. Well, I don't know. You match the napkins. Thank you. Where's that main course, eh? You still don't realise what I've been trying to say to you the past few days, do you? Irene, please. I don't care about the karaoke. Mm, not this again. I know I'm not going to be the next Celine Dion, but you don't seem to think I could do anything. I was just trying to give you a bit of friendly advice. It didn't seem too friendly to me. I don't want to see you making a fool of yourself. You see? Everything I try, you put me down. I, know, I thought this wasn't going to turn into a row. Nicky! jealous because it made it look really skilly. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Hasn't seemed real up till now. Yeah, I know. I always believed she'd come back. What do you mean? Dealing with the police when I was in Scotland with you, coping with my dad. She was just missing. Making mistakes, didn't you? Yeah, possibly, but you know, they tend to be right about this sort of thing. When I see that bracelet, if it is Saskia's, then I'll know she's never coming home. I was only trying to talk to you. I have a go at me, I mean. It's not my fault if you don't like listening to a few home truths. This is doing wonders for my digestion. Three courses of nag. Where are you going? Rosa, not the bill. No dessert? No. Everything all right? No. Something wrong with the main course? No. Right. He's gone back to sleep again. Listen, I don't understand why you're giving Dan such a hard time. It's not Dan, it's my mum I'm worried about. She seems happy enough. She always does. Come on, Ricky, she makes one disastrous choice after another. Falls headlong for the wrong blow. Yeah, but Dan might be the right one. And each time it falls apart, it chips away at her. I've seen it again and again, and I don't want to see it anymore. So what should she do? Become a nun? No, do what I do. Choose who you're going to be with for the rest of your life and stick with it. Even if it ain't the most exciting bloke in the world. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You recognise this bracelet as belonging to your sister, Saskia Duncan? Yes. Yes, it's her. Hey. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. Sorry, I've got to get out of here. Do you want me to come with you? Let me alone, sir. 
They often get upset. So, did you know the deceased well? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I tell you, we see all manner of things in here, sir. Some of it will make your hair curl. Irene, how about coffee before you go? I didn't know I was going. Oh, it's just that Terry asked for the bill. Oh, did he indeed? He obviously be upset. Oh, he's been telling you that as well, has he? What? Right, that's it. Irene! Irene! When you look at me, what do you see? What are you talking about? Do you care about me? Did you ever care? Irene, I don't know what to say to you anymore. <laughs> exactly. For heaven's sake, Irene, if you would... I can't go on like this. What do you mean? Terry, I don't think I can live with you anymore. Well, that's fine by me. Where did you go? I was worried. I needed some time on my own. So, uh, are you feeling any better now? Hardly. They wouldn't let me have Saskia's bracelet. Said if there's a trial, then they're going to need it as evidence. That bracelet is the only thing I've got to remember her by, and they've got to hang on to it. Well, I suppose it makes sense, you know. If they ever catch you did this. If? Don't mean when. Steve. However long it takes, we are not going to stop, and whoever did this is behind bars for the rest of their life, are we? And more from the square tomorrow night at 8 o'clock here on BBC One. Next this afternoon, any old port in a storm, a feature-length investigation for Columbo.